Welcome to breakfast stream. Uh, we're going to be eating breakfast. Um... <laughs> Waffles two days in a row. Well... Found a channel, gamozo.org. Yeah, that's me. But I just ate dinner. Peanut butter waffle? Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. Does this still count as round? Yeah. <laughs> Sucks to be me today. My e bike was stolen? What? What? Holy shit. Where at? Like outside of outside your house? Welcome to London. Nah, it's another shithole city. <laughs> Are you sure you have to find O days in Windows NT 4.0? Or do the O days come flying at you? I don't know. It it might be hard. It might be hard to find bugs. There might not be any bugs in NT. We have we have no reason to believe that there are bugs. There's no CVEs in Windows NT. It was cabled up to an iron fence outside the store I was in. Damn. Oh, that's brutal. Does NT have any exploit mitigations? No. I don't think it would even have stack cookies, to be honest. Damn, that really sucks. <clears throat> E-bikes are really getting popular here. They, they like, actually look pretty fun. Not this version of NT. Yeah, stack cookies might be no. Yeah, we're... Were there stack cookies in VC98? This is before VC98, but I don't even think VC98 had stuck cookies. NX wasn't a thing. Yeah, NX wasn't a thing until, I think, 2003 is when OpenBSD did NX uh, fully in software. They did it with uh, TLB caching. OpenBSD was way ahead of its uh, of stuff. Do you think Seattle is a good place to live for a software engineer? I mean, I live way outside Seattle, so I can't really speak to that. Um, I personally just don't really like cities. <clears throat> you should handicap yourself and artificially impose stuff like SMAP and SMEP onto yourself. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to pretend that the entire thing... Well, you know what? I'm just... Yeah, I'm just going to have to break out a of KVM or a KMU. My first PC was uh, NT 4.0. Got it at the age of four. Couldn't even read a single word. So does that mean if you got NT 4 at four, does that mean you got Windows 11 when you turned 11? <laughs> How does stack cookies work? Uh, basically, the compiler will, if there is a... If there's like an array on the stack, I mean, it can be like if literally on every stack, if you can figure it. But typically, if there's an array on the stack, um, what it will do is it will put all the arrays towards the front of this. Well, at the end of the stack before the return address, and then they will put a uh, stack cookie like this magic number, this basically a random number on the stack before the return address and before calling return, before returning from the function, it will check to make sure that the cookie has not been tampered with, such that if you overflow one of those buffers, you would have to overflow it with the correct cookie, otherwise it will not return. Pretty important. Um, sorry, I haven't been around for a while. Gotta ask, are they form-fitting earbuds? These ones aren't, but I did order some. Uh, I literally have to go to an audiologist to have them uh, like, they inject, like, foam into your ear, and then they take a mold of your ear. Um, I just haven't done that yet. I ordered them, like, a month ago, and I still haven't done that. I mean, they can't start making them until I've done that. But, yeah, I got some, like, fancy, uh, fancy custom-molded, uh, ear mon- in-ear monitors. 
because I'm playing myself through through this right now, so I can kind of hear my audio quality in real time, which is nice. Can we have a stream about Yuffie and how to use it in OS? I I've used you. I I've done plenty of Yuffie streams. We've done a we've done a couple different uh, a couple different OSs that were Yuffie. We even did like an ARM sixty four OS that was Yuffie. You wouldn't really use it in an OS, though. I mean, you, you'd typically use it just in the bootloader. In the conventional terminology. Um, you know, it, it kind of it kind of depends on your views. Oh, all right. How's everyone doing today? Everyone being responsible? Everyone excited to to do some Windows NT four development? I just took a fat bong rip. Oh hell yeah, dude! Wake and bake, baby. Let's go. <laughs> We just went into lockdown again? Uh, what, what country or city? I'm eating some fajitas. Building an audio uh, library for a mobile app. Ooh. Flutter? Flutter? I saw Flutter and Rust uh, got some love recently. Some of the, like, FFI between the two. Of course. <laughs> I had to make sure. Um, Netherlands, the Netherlands, hmm, Flutter is underrated, yeah, contact me when you have some time, uh, I got an idea, I gotta run past you, oh, okay, sounds good to me, people rely on JavaScript too much, question mark, Flutter is awesome, oh no, oh no, we got, we got a Flutter advocate here, we got Dev Angels, the number one, the world's biggest Flutter ad advocate. <laughs> Flutter for life. <laughs> Man, Dev Angels. <laughs> um, building a student application with Rust. What, what kind of, like a, a student project or an application to build a student or an application to like grade students? Is it for students or by students? I'm learning Flutter now. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, hey, quick question. Uh, I'm learning C++. Uh, recently, I read your panels. Would you discourage learning C or C++ um, and go for Rust instead? I mean, ultimately, there's no problem learning C and C++, but uh, they are ideally dying languages but they're probably not dying languages unfortunately after 50 years of writing in them uh i think it's apparent that they're never going to be secure languages so we we just can't we can't stop writing bugs in them so it's time to move on now whether or not people are going to move on uh it's kind of up in the air but we kind of have to um what are we on? C plus plus twenty one. C plus plus twenty. Yeah. <laughs> Learn C plus plus. Be employed for life. Yeah. Yeah. Tons of benefits for learning C plus plus. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. When are we doing a Flutter stream? Ah, uh, but Rust. But Rust is the best language. <laughs> <laughs> um go is kind of nice yeah yeah goes not goes not terrible you know it, it it's it's python it's python for people who want a little bit more perf um 
We're going on a ROP attack on a Cortex M bootloader. Ooh. Ooh. Doing some ROPage? You're telling me you have a bootloader that has enough mitigations that you actually have to ROP? I don't think I've ever had a bootloader where I had to ROP. <laughs> it's just like everything's RWX. Go is at least typed Python. Why should C++ be dying? Because it is a language that is continuously pumping out security issues and bugs and being a problem for basically the entire software engineering world. It consistently is a complete mess. And there's really nothing we can do about it. You can add all of the safe ab abstractions you want, but that's not going to change the ecosystem and the way that people do development in C++. You can add all the safe features and all the auto pointers and all of the, you know, magical stuff that you want. Um, but you can't really enforce those things super well because you have to have backwards compatibility with 60s and 70s style programming, which was shit. Um... It's unfortunate. Like, C++ isn't a terrible language conceptually. It's just a terrible language in its, like, ecosystem and its safety. A good compiler can fix and detect most of those? Nope, absolutely not. These are, these are impossible to solve problems. You literally cannot solve these problems. <laughs> Weird pancake you're eating. Oh, are we are we a pancake or a waffle chat? C++ template hell is also a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you hear that Binge is getting official Rust bindings? I've been using their Rust bindings for a while, but um, I didn't know they were uh, making them official yet. Waffles are better than pancakes. Yeah. Yeah. Waffles are literally pancakes with um pockets for your for your uh for your condiments. Are you actively doing any research or mainly focusing on education? Um, I mean, I've, I've got contracts that I'm working, um, but I've got some, I've got some research plans. But yeah, right now I've been more educational. <clears throat> Let's see. Do waffles have more surface area for toppings? Yeah, absolutely. They have more texture than pancakes as well. Yep. 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 No hat today? Yeah, I guess I forgot my hat, didn't I? When you say contracts, is it you uh, contracting alone? Yeah. Did you start your book yet? Not yet. I haven't really... I haven't really gone through the process of officially con confirming that. Are you an LLC? Yeah, I am. The stack is actually execute never. Um... They start to get uh, security in there. Mine? Oh, no. That's no good. I don't like that. I don't like hearing about bootloaders with NX. Um, Rust kernels are also have unsafe blocks? Yeah, absolutely. The hat was a phase confirmed. Maybe I'm just lame, uh, but I'll take the simple pancake or the fancy waffle with all of its features. <gasps> Heathen. Uh, what time is it in your local time? I don't know. Uh, like, like, uh, almost noon, maybe? Something like that? Yeah, 11.30. Taking the simple pancake. Ugh. 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 Lay sigh. <laughs> <laughs> Debating pancakes and versus waffles when French toast exists. Ooh, French toast is good, but I don't think I would. I don't think it's a substitute for pancakes or waffles. Are you a coiner? No. 
No. I'm I'm not a uh, not a fan of investing in things that literally only have value because other people hope that they have value so they get rich. Um I started dabbling with security bugs in Solidity. It's quite interesting. Interesting. What have you found so far? What what's your uh, what's your learnings? Are you considering doing some browser fuzzing? I did a lot of browser fuzzing in the past. It's not really my cup of tea. I don't know. Never been a huge browser fan. Are you a dirty right clicker? Uh, I don't know. Isn't that like every investment? No, uh, most investments are backed by companies that have assets and products. You're hoping that the company makes good decisions so that the company brings in more money. Uh, you're not hoping that there's just a, a massive, uh, um, a massive speculative wave that causes you to make money. You're not relying on speculation to make money. You're relying on a company having good ideas to make money. So what you're saying is that NFTs are the way to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, this is now an NFT stream. Um, I get your point. Heavily invested in the stocks too. Not saying it's it's wrong to like go for crypto because there's definitely a lot of money in crypto, but ultimately, I'm not super convinced. I don't like having all my money on the line of something with almost no intrinsic value or use. Um, it's not wrong, but it is gambling. Yeah, absolutely. But stocks actually have no value except for dividends. Well, arguably, you have some percentage of ownership in the company, and depending on the P.E. ratio of the company, uh, or whatever metric you like to go with, um, you at least have some value in the company, in the raw assets of the company. Um, do you think there are more Spectre and Meltdown bugs out there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll be... Will we be employing Snapchat fuzzing at all for this project? Yeah, probably. Yeah, but the speculation of the price going up is the same. So, uh, there's... There's a there's a big difference. There's So, when I say that, like, crypto is relying on speculation, I don't mean that you are speculating on the price. I'm saying that you are speculating on the speculation of the price to make your money, right? Bitcoin... I, I had Bitcoin way back in 2011, 2012, and Bitcoin was about as usable then as an actual currency as it is today. It just hasn't really gotten that much better. Of course, it's gotten better, but it's not gotten a thousand X better. It hasn't even gotten like five X better in spendability and usable usability as a currency. So what you're hoping is that other people speculate on it so that your speculation makes money. Right? It's basically a pyramid scheme. You're hoping that you're like, you're hoping that you got in sooner than the other suckers. <laughs> That's kind of it, right? Of course, that exists in stocks as well. I mean, high PE ratio stocks are largely being traded on speculation and you're speculating on speculation. But if you're talking low PE stocks, the price is pretty much just determined by the revenue of the company. <laughs> Like, it just kind of is. Like, yeah, like a Tesla, yeah, they're trading on speculation of speculation of speculation. But like a fucking IBM, they're basically directly correlated with the price of the dollar and the the last revenue. <laughs> like... <laughs> um, when, like, Dogecoin takes off because it's funny, um, it's pretty hard to make informed trades on those things because <laughs> you're you're literally hoping that people treat it as a meme and then it turns into a thing it's just like uh, like other than bitcoin and ethereum most cryptocurrencies are literally made by people who are mad that they missed out on bitcoin it's not people who genuinely are interested in making their coin useful or better or different of course 
there are some people out there who are trying to do that. But most people, it's like, holy shit, I missed out on Bitcoin in 2012. I regret that. So I want to find a new coin that hopefully will be a Bitcoin. Not really my cup of tea, man. I, I, I really don't like the modern investing style. I mean, personally, I've gone on these rants before on stream that I don't think people should be investing. I think investing in other companies is stupid when you, you should be investing in yourself. You should be investing in education, those sorts of things. Like, talking tea, are you still drinking it the British way? I've been doing green tea recently, mainly because that's what my roommate does. I haven't had a black tea in a long time, and, and I, don't, I don't do milk and green tea. I don't think anyone does, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I'm investing in education. Yeah, absolutely. Merger hat, young Miles. I do, need to, I do need to grab my hat. Watching a dude eating a waffle. No, milk and, milk and green tea is yuck. Yeah, I, I agree. Green tea and honey? That's interesting. Silly question, chat. Do you, you guys think there uh, is a certain point in life where you are too old to get into coding? Absolutely not. Nah. I mean, here, here's the thing. Um, you know what? Strike it up actually hit that pretty well. Um, Strike it up actually hit hit the nail on the head. I don't think the issue is largely with people who are older being able to learn these things in terms of like being able to learn these things. I think the problem is that when you're in your late teens and early 20s, when you're learning something that you're really passionate in, the amount of time you invest in that is often like 40, 60 hours a week because you are obsessed. You have nothing else going on in your life. You probably don't even care about relationships. So you're literally just like, you are like addicted to the thing that you enjoy. And I think as people age, they rightly realize that there's a lot more to life than one specific hobby that they get really good at. And it's worth like having a diverse portfolio of being a good host, you know, having good friends, going out to things, maybe learning an instrument, learning a, a, a hobby with your hands, whether it's painting things or building things or woodworking or something like that, or learning something that's different or appreciating the smaller things like waking up and having a two hour morning where you slowly wake up and have some coffee or some tea or make some nice breakfast or make more meals instead of having hungry mans and microwaving all your meals. Like all of these things, I think people realize are more, more of a key to happiness than just like getting really good at something or investing in something. And I think it's very difficult to learn something when you've realized that putting all of your effort into something is not necessarily how you get the best reward, right? I care about relationships. I'm a database engineer. <laughs> investing bad, investing yourself, but what if you have some money to spare and a house um, and the way you can improve can't be done in the university? Yeah, I mean, at that point, you're not really who I'm trying to inform, right? When you're at, When you're at the point where you have a house and all of the things that you've wanted to purchase and then you have extra money, well, then at that point, like, you you can do whatever the fuck you want. But, like, when you're a 22-year-old in your third year of college and you're trying to figure out if you should take the $2,000 that you somehow have in your bank account that, that specific, like, quarter or year, if you should take that and throw it all into Bitcoin and hope that it turns into 20 grand... Or you should take that two grand and like, I don't know, fucking repair your car that hasn't worked in six months, right? Maybe repair your car. <laughs> like, TLDR. Um, TLDR. Okay. What are your views on PhD in computer science? Um, I mean... I kind of think that computer science is not the most academic field. 
And I don't know if that's all fields, and it's just because I know computer science pretty well. But, like, the papers that I read in CS <laughs> just don't really seem that interesting. <laughs> like, it just doesn't feel like a really academic field. I mean... This is also seen by other fields who shit on computer science and, and don't believe it's actual research and stuff like that. Like, there's there's all the debates and stuff there. But it's... Students having 2K insane in my country? Yeah, like, you know, sometimes sometimes you got 2K when you're like, grandpa dies or something and gives you the money. <laughs> I feel like more innovation takes place outside academia and CS than academia. Yeah, um... Academia, I feel like, carries the torch for a lot. Okay. Um. I gotta blow my nose. Bear it back. Okay, here's the thing, and this is, um, th this is tough because I'm, I'm not going to be talking about the actual value of things, I'm going to be talking about the perception of value of things, right? And the perception of value of things is what actually matters in society, not the actual value of things. So it doesn't necessarily matter if you think it's right or wrong, it's just kind of like how it is. Society pretty much doesn't give a fuck about scientific advancements in pretty much all fields. Like, they, they just don't give a shit. Uh, they benefit massively from them, but, like, when, when CERN goes after the Higgs, the first thing they get asked by anyone who isn't a scientist is, like, how the fuck is this worth doing? How are we going to make money off of this? How, how is this worth investing in? And it's like, well... You might find some shit that changes the way that we get energy, and it's it's a massive thing. Like that, most science is treated like that. Computer science isn't. Computer science isn't like that, and I think this is why you see a large discrepancy between academia and industry, because academia basically has no money. Now, there are a couple couple academic things like massive large like physics projects and and chemistry and physical science projects that that typically are like spearheading whatever their industry is. Um, but in reality, computer science is this really fucking weird thing where like the average project probably has like what five or ten grand of funding for a paper, and that's like for a big company, for a, a big company invested in tech, that's literally like noise. Like they would just give an intern five grand to like investigate something. Like it, it's the, the amount of like money that is being used in computer science research in academia is an absolute joke compared to the timelines and money and team sizes of companies. And the only reason this really matters is because companies see a value in computer science, right? So ultimately, and this is, this is why I think the, like, I think this is why the companies are typically way ahead of academia is that Unlike most things in academia, where academics kind of get a step ahead because industry is not interested in these things, right? It's pretty easy to be better than industry when industry literally doesn't give a shit, <laughs> right? When industry is not researching the thing you're researching, it's pretty easy to be ahead of them, <laughs> right? Um, but computer science is not like that. Uh, it, it's also... You can also think about it in profitability. Uh, the profitability of computer science is really, really, really uh, up there, right? 
Um, have to disagree because academia is driven by curiosity versus industry is mostly driven by uh, profit. Uh, yeah, I think academia should be driven by curiosity, but it definitely isn't. <laughs> like, it just definitely isn't. Like, yeah, I, I, I wish that were the case. And I hope that is the case. That would be great. But I also kind of know that isn't the case. Um, yeah, I mean, like, look at, look at, like, chemical science, right? Like, people doing chemical science or physical science and stuff like that. They're not, they're not doing research on things that they think are the most interesting fucking chemicals with the most interesting properties. They're doing research on things that they hope will turn into a patent and turn them into fucking DuPont. Like, it just, <laughs> it, it's, uh, academia is driven by sharing stuff you find. I'd argue that academia is driven by putting your name on as many things as possible so that you get the most funding so that you hopefully after 20 years of being in academia can actually do things based on curiosity, right? Right? Academia is driven by grants. Yeah. See, here's the thing. Yeah, you're, you're going to meet professors and you're going to meet people who have become so fucking established in their fields that they're genuinely doing research that they're passionate and interested about. But like, for the first 10 or 20 years, you're probably trying to get your name on as many papers such that you become such a big name that people give you enough space to do what you want to do. Right? You're, you're literally, you're, you're playing the game, which is chasing funding to chase for easy living because you're, you're in academics, so you're, you have no fucking money. So you're trying to get as much funding as you possibly can, such that hopefully at some point, your name has enough recognition that you're just intrinsically worth money for your name, or you hope that you do something that gets bought out or makes you enough money that then you can actually focus on research that you care about. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wish that weren't the case, right? I hate that. I, I wish academia was like super, super, super focused on just learning and exploring things, but it's absolutely about appealing to the standard release cycles of conferences, right? How many people rush, rush and button up their, their research when they're not happy or satisfied with it because it's the only way that they're going to apply to the conference they want to apply to or because they have an artificial limitation of their funding is running out or they have an artificial limitation because they have friends who they've commit to working on a paper with after this paper was done in October and now it's November. Like, it, it's just... <sighs> I don't want that to be the case, man. Like, I, like that's one of the reasons why I don't like academia, because I, I don't view it as genuine. I don't view it as genuine, right? I, I think a lot of it is talk. A lot of it is interest in, in research in these things, but it's not... I, I've talked with a lot of academics, and a lot of them just don't actually seem interested in the work. They seem interested in, like, changing the world. But that's the thing, and, th and that's the thing that, like, is really interesting to me about my research of, like, I'm not, ex I'm not excited about finishing things. So that's why you see me, like, never finish projects, because I don't give a shit. Like, once I see the path, once it's obvious that, like, with an extra couple hundred hours of work, it just works because I've solved all the hard problems, I just don't really give a shit anymore. I'm not trying to, like, revolutionize or change the world. I'm just, like interested in the process and the challenges <laughs> i can't say i really give a shit about the end results <laughs> uh <laughs> let's shit on the industry after that too i i think i think my favorite way to shit on the industry is that the difference between people making like 100k and the people making 500k is whether or not they have confidence <laughs> And the companies have no way of actually valuing these people. <laughs> like, they just have no fucking idea. <laughs> like, you know how many big tech companies would be happy to have, like, 
and a starting engineer making like 250k who has never touched like binary security in a binary security role and then on the flip side there's like people who have been doing ctfs for four years who are getting like 80k offers out of school <laughs> because the big companies literally have no idea what the fuck they're doing so it's literally just confidence <laughs> like the the employer is hoping that you actually can teach them what they should pay you. <laughs> You're telling me making them do 500 leak codes didn't estimate their value? Oh, well, what? what? Crazy. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Ain't binary security the wrong term? Uh, binary security is a data type. How are you going to secure that? <laughs> yeah, when are we getting some octal security and some decimal security and some hexadecimal security? Why did you leave Mike, uh, Microsoft, if you don't mind me asking? I'm interviewing them for an L65 IC security role uh, and was wondering if it's the right move. Right? Um... I really liked Microsoft. Microsoft was one of my favorite, favorite jobs. It was, there is so much interesting shit to do at Microsoft and they have, um, Microsoft has one of the few security teams that actually, uh, does binary security. Like a, a lot of people who are, who, a lot of companies that are doing application security don't actually know what like application security, I guess I don't know if you're doing application security or not, but like, a lot of companies doing application security think application security means, like, the Node.js running on the back end. And, like, I guess chat will probably disagree with me because I think the terminology of application security has changed enough where that probably is the case. But when I see application security, I think, okay, I'm working with native code that was probably compiled. Um, but nowadays, people just, like, put application security in things because I think the recruiters literally don't know what it means. <laughs> so, anyways, Microsoft is one of the few places that, like, genuinely knows what they're doing. They, they, uh, you have a billion different products you have to secure. You have one of the, one of the largest cloud providers in the world. You have one of the, you definitely have the largest operating systems provider. One of the largest, like, hypervisors out there being Hyper-V. So you have, like, all of this different surface. And then also, uh, don't forget things like Xbox, which, um, Xbox is traditionally one of, like, the harder consoles consoles to hack into and break and there's a lot of investment that goes on there right um so i really like the work at microsoft uh there are a couple things that are that are strange which is mainly their like their uh stock vesting schedule kind of kind of pushes you to leave after four years and that's mainly where i was at right um and that's what most companies have like most companies after four years, you're probably making less than you were in your first year, even though you maybe got a promo. Uh, and it's really stupid. It's kind of what all big tech companies do. And and recently, recently, I've been thinking that that might be that might be intentional by the companies to like force turn to just get burnt burnt out people out. Um, but anyways, uh, Microsoft's cliff is is traditionally quite a bit worse than than other companies right like it's it's pretty feasible that you you get like you know like at a 65 roll like 200 to 500k in stock over four so basically let's let's say you're getting like 75 to 100k a year you're probably refreshing that at a rate of like 30 to 40k a year right so uh whereas at other companies like someone brought up that facebook is the same and i know for a fact this is just not the case right facebook definitely does have a cliff and they they have like a weird thing where you kind of stack for the first four years and then you cliff pretty hard um but ultimately like facebook is gonna refresh you probably at two or 2.5x the rate of a microsoft so the the cliffs are brutal at at microsoft and it's unfortunate i brought this up at the company right this is not like this is not some secret juicy drama I have. It's it's a genuine problem that I think is preventing people from being there for more than four years. And it's very hard to have a long-term investment in something if the people keep turning uh, at that rate. Um, 
Is it intentional to cause rotation? That's genuinely... I, I never thought about that until a couple days ago, and, and, and I think that's the case. I think it's the case. I think it's the case to either A, cause people who are burnt out to leave and just go chase more money, and also cause people who are just willing to just take the pay cut or, like, whatever... To stay. Like, there are people who just stay because they're like, well, this is just where I am. I don't want to physically move. I don't want to change school districts for my kids. I'm just going to stay. And now you're paying half the price for someone that you would pay a shit ton more for, right? It's it's kind of tough. Let's discuss the Amazon pay structure. Are you talking about their, like, 5 5 40, 40 uh, vesting schedule? <laughs> Citadel Security paying 600k for new grads. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> um So recognize the manager's uh refresh and what are the meanings about that? I don't quite understand what you're asking there. You're pressured to leave in two years, and you get no money if so? At Amazon? Interesting. I've heard that Amazon is a relatively toxic place. I found that it's often pretty hard to figure out what my experience would be at a company, because um, security teams are just usually a little bit more Wild Westy. Um, and a lot of people who review companies and you'd see shitting on companies on like blind are typically people who are software engineers and software engineers sometimes just get fucked over with like ridiculous deadlines, shitty managers. Se security traditionally is a little bit more researchy. Um, and due to that, you typically have a little bit more leeway and you typically don't really have like hard deadlines on stuff. Um, so yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I, I've heard that, uh, uh, oh, camera's out of focus. You're out of focus, BTW. Oh, got him. <laughs> oh. All right, any more rants that we have to do? Um, what's going on with the FBI's email? What's going on with that? What's, what's, what's this? <laughs> what is this? Um, can you rant about LVM and MIPS on Windows support? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Have you looked at CA uh, leak docs on gateway process? I don't think so. Are those recent? Are those like new things? Thank you for your insight uh, into Microsoft. They seem like a solid company who takes security seriously. Stock versus other side. Yeah. They, they're, they're like the pioneers in... Uh, they're the pioneers in implementing uh, mitigations, right? You can say that a lot of other places experiment with these things. And GRSEC had it first. There's a big fucking difference between making this, the security mitigation and rolling it out to billions of devices as defaults. Um... The fact that they do that is pretty fucking awesome, right? There's there's so many aspects of Microsoft security that's interesting. You have the the raw bug finding. I wrote a, a snapshot fuzzer there, which so people are doing snapshot fuzzing at Microsoft. They're fuzzing, you know, super low level network services. They're fuzzing kernels. They're fuzzing hypervisors. Um, 
they've they've got a mitigation team that's working on crazy new mitigations for who who knows what um yeah uh the refreshers are really the only problem there in terms of the work and the things to do there it's pretty good um yep yeah. so the nt kernel is good what makes it good uh, a lot of the design uh I think the main things, well, first of all, the documentation and the commenting is phenomenal. Uh, unlike Linux, you'll probably never find a file that doesn't have comments. Uh, like Linux, you can go into like some of the most core, fundamental, important parts of the system, and you won't find a single fucking comment. Uh, but like Windows stuff, you're going to see so many comments that people almost don't like it. Because like each function will have a comment about why the function exists, all of the parameters, the return results, the ways it can fail, the the different levels that you can call that function from. It's phenomenal. Isn't the same kernel in Windows 11 and 10? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Let me just jump to null. LVM on MIPS PEs. Yeah, it's kind of tragic. Let's rant about Windows 11 and how ugly it is. How the how the start menu how worse the start menu got. I actually haven't run Windows 11 yet. I did just download a Windows 11 ISO that I was going to use for IDA. But <laughs> I was like, fuck it. I'll get Windows 11 for this install. I'll try it. What are your thoughts on formal verification? Uh, VCC with Hyper-V. It's not quite fuzzing and security related, uh, but it's adjacent to your work. Um, get IDA 7.5. Is that the backdoored one? Um, Ghidra rules! Ghidra rules! Ida drools! Um, what are your thoughts on formal verification? I don't know, I just don't really know enough about it. Ultimately, I don't think formal verification is going to be the solution to our problems. Um, I've talked about this a little bit before. Ultimately, formal verification, um... Ultimately, formal verification requires a higher level of skill and knowledge to use than what programmers have and i would say it's probably like maybe the top five percent or top one percent of programmers could reasonably write their code in a way that could be formal verified aka with all the annotations and understand the coercion that needs to happen there for good verification to occur because you there are limitations of verifying stuff and you have to understand those limitations to kind of mold your program in the right shape such that it is simple enough for it to verify, right? And we simply just can't sustain the world on 1% or 5% of the developers that we have. Kind of sucks. Um, like, that, that's, that's the main problem is... Now, you could argue that we're producing way more code than we need to produce, but... Uh, isn't that the same argument against Rust that writing code satisfies borrow check requires a higher level of developers? Eh. Uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Pretty much every single language other than C, C++, and Rust wrap everything in Arc mutexes. Like every fucking variable in your like C sharp or your JavaScript or whatever is probably essentially wrapped in an arc mutex. And if you wrap everything in an RC, or wrap everything in a ref cell, or wrap everything in, a, in an arc mutex, you don't have lifetimes. So ultimately, with the way people already care about performance and code, just fucking wrap everything in an arc ref cell or arc mutex, and it's already better performance than what you're probably already producing in whatever language you're writing. And congratulations, you don't have to worry about borrow checker anymore. Like, eh, like, yeah, for for really good Rust, really high performance Rust, where you want to do everything copyless, you want to do everything by reference, sure. But like, fucking C plus plus makes copies of strings when you pass them to functions. Like, people don't even know that shit is going on, right? Just wrap wrap your shit in and. Fucking RC ref cells. I'm going to make fun of it because it looks like shit and the performance is terrible. But RC ref cells are basically free. Um, uncontended arc mutexes are pretty close to free. Uh, you basically paid like 12 cycles instead of 4 cycles, right? But then why bother using Rust? Because it's a safe language. Um... 
Let's see. And for real world stuff, formal verification doesn't scale at all. Yep. Yep. Code is written by humans to read, uh, and only incidentally for computers to execute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. And you get the benefit of familiar code that uh, isn't doing your criminal RC ref cell. Yeah. Like, look, I, I don't condone RC ref cell. I, I think it's a, I think it's a, a cheese way out of problems. Um. But let's be honest, Rust written with RC ref cells is probably faster than what most people produce when they're writing C++, right? C C maybe not C, but definitely C++. C++ is so fucking copy heavy, like, under the hood. It's so copy heavy. Just moving strings around. Like, I don't think people understand how many times they're copying a fucking standard string when they're writing C++. I know this because I've looked at, like, any C++ project, like, the fucking 10, 20% of the CPU time is in, like, string functions. <laughs> like, literally, m string copy and, like, string duplication. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think the move by default is really the biggest thing for, for most developers in, in Rustland. Um, you kind of, you kind of have to, f like, when you run an RC ref, so you feel bad. You feel a little dirty about it. So, you, so you know. And let's be honest, 99% of borrow check shit is when people are trying to do stuff that's way more advanced than they, than they would understand. Like, like, in C and C++, here, here, here's the thing. And, and here's the real argument against borrow check. Don't get me wrong. Borrow check is an approximation of, uh, or it, it is basically borrow check is failed closed. And since it, since we haven't solved P equals NP, borrow check is going to yell at you for some things that are actually safe. In reality, 99% of the time where people run into borrow check, it's actually unsafe. <laughs> Like, it's not actually some weird edge case where they're doing something that happens to be okay with the way that they've designed it and run it, and it's a complex data structure, and it just happens to work. No, it's probably legitimately wrong. <laughs> like, if they were to write that code in C, it's what they would have written, and that C code would have had bugs. <laughs> like, like, I am really skeptical that people are really running into borrow check because of things that aren't actual race conditions safety concerns right does that make sense <laughs> like if you run into borrow check because you're doing something unsafely uh, that doesn't necessarily mean rust is holding you back um doesn't async borrow check suck ass? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, like, I'm still not, I'm, not, I'm still not super convinced on async yet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm just not super convinced. I think async is a really bloaty way of expressing things that, like, I, I think the, the standard, like, KQ poll style give a list of registered FDs and wait for events and get an index and handle it is like it's much lower overhead and I guess it it's not as convenient and nice but uh, yeah um still have no idea what pin future took async async yeah standard async and stuff is do you like threading more? No, I I like I like uh, like select an epoll right, which is you have you have a thread and you basically process events, right? You re you register your FDs that you want event notifications on, and you get event notifications and you you handle them. Um, unfortunately, every single time I do something with async, the performance is just so fucking bad. Did you try IO Uring yet? No, I mean, I know exactly what it does. I've used IO Uring like things in the past. I think uh, before IO Uring was a thing, there was a, 
there were like a couple third party ones that I used, and then also Windows has something like that as well. Um, uh, what is it called? Uh, bu- 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 uh, Rio, uh, registered IO, which is pretty nice. Um, are there things like async, uh, built on top of the select and epoll things? Yeah, I mean, yeah, all of those things are built on top of those. Um, hidden from the user is not free, though, right? Like, hiding things from the user is, is not free. I think the best implementation of async and await that I've used has been in C Sharp. Yeah, you're just, you're just objectively right there. Async and await in C Sharp is phenomenal. Uh, you should de design async your way as an educational stream. Uh, here, here's the problem with async. Async requires that you save and restore more state than is typically necessary because you end up having to duplicate state in your tasks, right? Your tasks are doing relatively similar things and you have to duplicate the state between them. And you're basically doing a context switch in user land, right? You're, you're emulating a thread switch in user land, which is often unnecessary, right? When you're doing like KQ and ePoll, you're only using the things that you really need to use for whatever case that you go down. You're not restoring the state of everything because everything is already the active state. Your whole stack and heap or whatever contains all of the things that you care about. You don't have to like completely switch to a new state and discard the old, not discard, but set aside the old state to replace it with a new state. You just handle things, right? Because you just aren't swapping states in and out. B basically, async requires that you swap states in and out. It just, it, you just have to. And swapping states in and out, in 99.9% .9 of cases, isn't actually what you would be doing if you wrote them in like a, a big loop, right? In, in reality, you would just keep all of those states active and you would just like, based on the FD that triggered, you would then use the variables that matter for which one. You wouldn't keep switching between them. Um, uh, that being said, Rust also has the hardest time with async and await, right? Rust is one of the first languages that actually has perf that's trying to do async and await. Like, C Sharp and Go have a lot easier time doing their code routines and their async and await and stuff like that because they're just slower languages. <laughs> like, when your language is like 50% slower, it turns out that your abstractions that make things 10 or 20% slower no longer really are the problem. <laughs> Like, that's kind of hard. <laughs> like, when you're trying to make something with C and C++ performance that has async and await, it's going to be fucking hard. <laughs> it's just going to be fucking hard. Anyone have profiler recommendations? Yeah, I recommend that you don't use profilers. I think profilers are really misleading. Like, I understand compilers and assembly and performance and optimization really well. And the amount of times I've gotten meaningful information out of profilers is like fucking almost never. Profilers just suck, man. <laughs> I'm just not convinced. I'm really not convinced. Like, ultimately, here's, here's the problem with, with profilers. Profilers tell you where your time is being spent, not if that time should be spent, right? So if you look at a profiler and you're smooth brain because you're Twitch chat and you're like, and you see like, oh, it looks like 40% of my time is spent in my rendering thread. That, sound, that sounds reasonable. Well, what if you should have like 0.1% of your time in your rendering thread? The profiler isn't telling you that. <laughs> Like, that's, that's kind of the main problem with profilers is they don't really tell you if you've architected your stuff reasonably. Like, I, I don't know. And even then, just with, just with inlining and stuff, profilers often don't even tell you where things are actually using time. Like, they're just, they either aren't sampling enough such that your N is so low that you can't actually see where things are being used, 
or it's limitations of the architecture where you're trying to look at what instructions are slowing you down, but due to the way the architecture works, you're actually highlighting like a couple of instructions off of where the problem is, or you're trying to figure out why something is slow, but it's actually slow because of a branch mis misprediction, which makes it look like it's due to like a, a random conditional compare, and the conditional compare is not related to the branch. The, the reason the conditional compare is the slow part of your code is because that's where the processor just happens to be coincidentally aborting and resetting the CPU state back to the branch, uh, mispredicted branch, right? Because the, the, your CPU, your CPU is running like 50 to 150 instructions past where it fucked up. So if your, if your CPU predicted a branch is taken some way or predicted a memory access is went another way, it's going to be like 50 or 100 instructions ahead of where you were. And that's where it's going to show up that your hotspot is, which is just going to be like in the middle of fucking nowhere, right? <laughs> it's just like... Okay. <laughs> I think your dislike for profilers is due to your very specific approach to writing software. If you come up to a large project and ask where the fuck does it spend 50% of the CPU, then it's a good tool. That's probably true. Like, when you're looking at the assembly level, profilers suck. They just suck because they're not really showing you where you're actually slow, and they're also probably not sampling well. And then there's also, like, interrupt window biases. Like, your processor is more prone to issue an interrupt during certain stages of pipeline execution, which is then going to cause you to, like, get interrupts on certain boundaries, so you're not necessarily going to see, like, where your, your costs are. Um, and then due to inlining, I would even expand that to, like, the small function level, like, functions that are, like, 30 to 50 lines of code or, like, few loops or few if statements, things that will get easily inlined. Um... You just kind of don't really know where anything is in your code. Um, to be honest, let's raise our hands, chat. Okay, let's raise our hands. All right, so everyone with their hands raised has agreed that it is ridiculous that debug information doesn't contain enough information about inlining that debuggers are fucking usable on code that has been optimized. Like, how far, how hard is that? Like, during your optimization passes, update your debug info based on what's fucking inlined. <laughs> like, come on. Windows tries to do this in PDBs. I thought we solved that by now, yeah. Yeah, you know how you know how Linux solved that, or you know how like the entire Unix ecosystem solved that, is they invented the dash OG optimization pass, which is like optimize everything except for homing things on the stack and inlining because that that hurts readability. <laughs> Windows went the other way, and they're like, we're gonna try and add enough information so we can tell you where things are inlined, and it kind of works, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> like inline stuff gets moved around a lot though yeah but you can track that <laughs> you can still track that what's the solution in the end uh write your compilers about five times slower and just have a little bit more attention to detail of keeping those things uh updated <laughs> In reality, it's just how development goes. You got a little bit too rushed, you got a little bit ahead of things, and then before you know it, uh, you're like, fuck, we're not gonna implement that feature because at this point there's too much code cruft there and it'd be really hard to do. How is the Windows compiler versus GCC versus Clang? Uh, GCC is fast and loose. Uh, Clang is uh, compiler exceptions. Uh, when I say compiler exceptions, I mean that anything you build with Clang is probably going to cause Clang to crash. And, uh, Visual Studio is just mediocre. Not great features, not great modern C++ support, not great optimizations, but it kind of just works. PDBs, however? PDBs are, are much better than Dwarf. 
like... Clang plus LDB properly show inline functions on their args? I haven't used LDB in like two years, and two years ago it didn't work. Have you seen Perret? Uh, high order typed functional choreographies? Uh, yeah, this looks, this, looks, this looks above my pay grade. But, uh, wait, uh, have I seen this? No, I don't think so. No, I haven't seen this. This is, this is some... Uh, it immediately just has some squiggly lines and math and uh, set theory. Uh, I can't. You think, you think I know that shit? Yesterday I couldn't subtract two numbers that were two digits. I wish they would put dwarf outside the executables like PDBs. You can do that. You can do that. Uh, strip dash uh, strip debug or whatever. Or like separate debug or whatever. You can totally do that. That's what like every operating system in the world does. Every distro. Um, you can totally do that. Um, however, uh, the support by tools that consume those is, uh, usually pretty shit. <laughs> A squiggly lines gamosis, one weakness. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty fair. I'm working on ant profiler. Oh, God. Ugh. And chat, did I tell you that the reason I started the stream an hour late is because I was up way too late last night? Time to do actual work? Yeah, I think we're getting there. I think I'm getting there. I still have like a couple sorenesses that I really want to get out. Look, my shoulders are pretty, pretty fucked up. Ah, ah. Why were you up so late? What crazy drugs did you do? What? What? What do you mean? What do you mean? Yoga stream? Oh, I had a good friend in World of Warcraft that that I met, and she was trying to get me into yoga-ing stuff. So we'd do like yoga and shit between like dungeons. Hot tub time? Ooh, yeah. It's actually hot tubs. I gotta replace the water in my hot tub. Um, it's uh. I haven't replaced it in like three months. Wow, yoga. I pet detective, thank you so much for the three months of support. Hell yeah. Actually, what you're referring to as gamozo is actually GNU slash zo, or as I like to call it, gamo plus zo. <sighs> yeah, that was a good shit post, wasn't it? Uh, today, we're getting a good development environment set up for uh, b -b 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 housing windows NT. Um, we're mainly focusing on QOL such that tomorrow when we do education, I'm supposing that we don't waste all of our time doing stupid shit like the last week. XD, lol, 1, 2, 3, 4, 20. Okay. All right. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. okay. All right. Chat, raise your hand if you're ready to party. Lower your hand if you're EU. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's because EU people can't party. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Got him. Oh, I gotta make my EU trip soon, ish. You you know what? You know what's really unfortunate is I took like three months off of work and my plan was to like travel and shit. And I, I did a little bit of travel in the U.S., but still borders are kind of fucked. I tried to visit Moose Mounted Mage and fucked him over. Uh, he drove like 50 hours to meet us and then uh, and then we just couldn't get into Canada. Um, uh, come visit XEU. Oh yeah, this bit is XEU. Woo. Yeah, Sag. Sag. <laughs> I owe Dev Angels like 5,000 beers. Uh... 
<laughs> Although I don't know if I want to go to the UK in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> I owe Dev Angel some Dr. Pepper and some PG tips and dark themes for Windows XP. <laughs> UK has seasons? <laughs> yeah, cold and rainy and slightly less cold and rainy. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly. Emphasis on the slightly. <laughs> Gray and rain and two weeks of sun. Ah, <laughs> oh, cold and miserable, cold and okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. So uh, today we're gonna we're gonna do some reading, and by reading we're not really gonna do reading. I'm gonna get you brushed up to date on some cool shit. Okay. Okay, chat. Um, is everybody ready? Is everybody ready to get naked? Because we're going to talk about naked functions. All right. <laughs> Finally, seatbelt fastened. Let's go. Yep. Yep, there's a, yeah, there's a different cam camera angle on the OnlyFans. Um, <laughs> frick. <laughs> okay, frick is so good. I just fucking love frick. Every every time I read frick, I see um Milton T. Pike uh, had like a GTA Five roleplay character that was like the embodiment, the like stereotypical nerd. And he'd be like, frick! And he'd like challenge you to like D20 rolls to like fight you. Like if he got in a fight, he's like, take this D20. <laughs> oh, Milton C. Pike is phenomenal. Okay. Anyways. Um have you ever seen Microsoft source code without being at Microsoft? N no no. No. <laughs> now there was uh what was it? Uh NT4 leak and a Windows 2000 leak that were public, right? And those go way back to like 2005, I think. <laughs> also XP leaked, really? Maybe that's the one. Maybe it was XP and not 2000. I I thought it was 2000. I can't fucking remember. Your lawyer is telling you to stop talking? Uh, 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 yeah, uh, the, mm, the weather's great. <laughs> XP not that long ago. Really? Like, what do you mean not that, like, in the past couple of years? To be honest, I probably saw it and didn't pay attention because at that point I had Microsoft source code at Microsoft. I don't know. It was leaked last year. What? MS DOS. Oh my god, what? Why are we not fuzzing MS DOS? Uh, are you looking for which type of bug? Yes. Yes. Um, okay. So naked functions in Rust are going through some improvements. And the improvements that uh, naked functions are... Okay, uh, bah, 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 bah. Let's, bah, let's... I mean, today is not an educational day, but, uh, you know, fuck you. Uh, you're gonna get educated. Holy moly, MS-DOS is 100% ASM, so it should be super fast. <sighs> that's not how assembly works. That's not, that's not how assembly works. I hate, I hate to say it, that's just not how assembly works. I, I've seen... Uh, I've seen Dev Angel's assembly, and uh, it definitely didn't help his perf. Oh! Whoa! Whoa! God, got him. Okay. Um. 
Kurt has a beautiful startup graphic. Ah, oh, I see. I see. Nikert Nikov is a uh, is a fellow furry there. All right. All right, chat. Uh, raise your hand if you're not a furry, but you kind of like furry art. <laughs> <laughs> like just the art styles. <laughs> Absolute degenerates. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Command only fans. <laughs> Draw me like one of your furry friends. Okay. So in languages, you have these concept of naked functions. And naked functions uh, basically have the goal of being used for common things like interrupt handlers. Um, handlers. And let's just say exotic uh, function calls. So, naked functions are often important where you need to know specifically the uh, state of input registers is unchanged. So, basically, you need to make sure that the compiler isn't, like, emitting a stack cookie or a frame setup or homing something to the stack. You want to make sure that you have kind of full control of everything. Naked functions, the best way to think of naked functions is if, you, if you've if you written some assembly, naked functions ideally, uh, functions should really, at the end of the day, basically just be assembly labels. It's for code, right? Basically, the, the ideal thing for naked functions is that basically you're just assigning an exported label or a symbol to code. And other than that, like, it's not like a normal function. And then inside of here, you have assembly that you fully control and you know that this is the first instruction that ran. Um, and... <laughs> Did you do one fuzz? No, I didn't do one fuzz. I do know the person who did one fuzz, uh, and my tool got integrated into one fuzz, but I, I, it's just not really my cup of of tea. I'm not really uh, I'm not really a CI fuzzer. Um, you'll see you'll see that sometimes I I maybe maybe make fun of CI fuzzing. Um. Okay. Um. All right. So the problem with naked functions is uh functions is they kind of originate in c and c plus plus right c and c plus plus are kind of the pioneers of naked functions and and do you know what that means do you do you know what it means when c and c plus plus are pioneers of something what what does what does this mean what does what does this mean what does this mean it means that they are extremely undefined. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you'll find that basically nobody who does OS dev actually uses naked functions because they they just like don't actually mean anything. The the naked functions is usually like it's a little less overhead than a function, but like I don't know how much less it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then then we have a language called Rust, right? And Rust, and what 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 does what does Rust do, chat? What does Rust do? What does Rust do? Uh, let's go in. Uh, meh, meh. Um, what does Rust do? Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, and, and what does Rust do? So Rust defines things. 
Rust is defined and not stupid. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I think he likes Rust, but that's just my guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. R Rust. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, Rust has started going through this process that actually is like almost going through. And uh, let's go through. He would be a great teacher. It's a UI designer stream? <laughs> Wrong stream, I guess. Mm. Yeah, Rust. Mm, Rust. Mm, Rust. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, this document attempts to increase the utility of naked functions by constraining their use and increasing their defined invariance. Motivation. Naked functions have long been a feature of compilers. These functions are typically defined as normal functions in every regard, except the compiler does not omit the function prologue and epilogue. Rust's early attempts to support this feature, RFC 1201, mostly copied the existing compiler behaviors. However, naked functions are often avoided in practice because their behavior is not well defined. The root cause of this problem is that naked functions are defined by negation. They are functions which lack a prologue and epilogue. Unfortunately, functions that lack a prologue and epilogue present a number of complicated problems that the compiler needs to solve and developers need to work around. And there is a long history of compilers and developers getting this wrong. This document seeks to define naked functions in a much more constrained, positivistic way. In doing so, naked functions can become more useful. Oh yeah, let me let me let me porn let me porn up this mic a bit. Um test test okay. Mm. Test 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 check one two uh okay. Check 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 okay. Uh, naked function definition. A naked function has a defined calling convention and a body which contains only assembly code which can rely upon the detailed calling convention. Today on NPR News, we're going to be talking about all of the perfect places for programmatic functions and uses of naked functions. A naked function is defined by the naked attribute and one should specify a calling convention besides extern rust. Number two, should define only FFI safe arguments and return <laughs> types. Number three, must not specify the inline or inline star attribute. And four, must have a body which contains a single assembly statement, which one, may be wrapped in an unsafe block, Two, must not contain any operands except for a const and sim. Three, must contain the no return option. Four, must not contain any other options except at and syntax, the wrong syntax. And five, must ensure that the calling convention is followed or the function is unsafe. MT Taggart. Thank you so much for the raid. Hell yeah. How was your stream? Taggart raid. Hell yeah. Naked function already liking the stream. Yup. <laughs> Please tell me more about naked function bodies. Okay. Anyways, these constraints are really cool. Basically, they're saying that naked function should just directly give you assembly code execution, right? Uh, and that's fantastic. In exchange for the above constraints, the compiler commits to producing a clear error if any of the above requirements is violated, produce a clear warning if any of the above suggestions are not heeded, disable the unused arguments lint for the function, um, never inline the function, omit no additional instructions to the function body before the asm, uh, asm statement. So this is really cool. Basically, they are saying that these new constrained naked functions in Rust can only contain an assembly block, and this means that you immediately, immediately get execution in your assembly. 
the first instruction that executes in the function is your first instruction in the assembly statement, which thus means that you have perfect control of everything. Further, it is no return. And since it's no return, that means you have to return from your inline assembly yourself. So when you compound that all together, it means that you control every single line of assembly in the function, which is really, really, really cool. Um, yeah, yeah, that's fucking awesome. Uh, as a weaker corollary to the last compiler commitment, the initial state of all registers in the assembly statement conform to the specified calling convention. Um, uh, someone was asking some something, why can't you inline? The reason you can't inline is that if this is the case, if you can't access any of the parameters to the function, then you have to know where the parameters are, which means that there has to be an ABI, which means that the function has to have been called. If it gets inline, that ABI can be violated, right? So it is critical that the function actually gets called such that it respects the ABI fully. Late to the party, hell yeah. <laughs> Is this for perf uh, or like, where do we want to use this? We want to use this for our syscall funks. We want to use this where basically we want to ensure the state of registers matches exactly what we need them to be for when we call into the kernel. Um, this basically should replace all of the uses of global assembly. You should no longer ever have to use global assembly because this is basically a labeled assembly block. That's just it. Um, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, you can do stuff like this, where basically this is the first line of code. You know that this is the function that gets, gets emit, and it's really cool. But basically, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, and they're also talking about adding uh, extern custom calling convention, where you can, like, define arbitrary custom uh, calling conventions. Which would be really cool. Really fucking cool. Because then you could do extern custom and say that the syscall argument goes in the syscall register and then your your function is just syscall. Um, can we please have some background noise? Nah. Nah, it's too hard to it's too hard to do that, unfortunately. 18T syntax is the backwards one? Yeah, 18T syntax is definitely the backwards one. Uh, have you tried? Have you seen the ABI stable crate? Uh, probably not, because it's a crate. Probably, probably dumb. Uh, ABI stable. C and C plus plus boot by compiler. Hell yeah! What is this? How to for Rust to Rust FFI? Yeah, yeah. This doesn't look. This doesn't look important. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna use a a crate. This. Come on. Come on. Crates mean bad perf. Assembly is on track to be stabilized. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And Rust assembly is the best assembly. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off the day. Uh, we're going to start off the day with booting our VM. Okay. Is everyone ready? So I'm ready to boot our VM. So we're gonna go into NT and then Kimu, and then hopefully run.sh. All right. Okay, we're getting in there. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna write a way that we can uh, have basically a remote shell, so we don't have to interact with Windows. Um, and I think the best way for us to do that is probably to open a port and listen for connections and then spawn processes. This EU has to sleep. Uh, I'll take it you'll be still here in 10 hours. Probably not. Probably not. 10 hours, that's a, that's a long stream. We, we've, that's just not what we would do here. We just don't stream that long. Um, uh, HW and then hello world.c. Okay. Is there a SAC serial console on NT 4.0? <laughs> no. I don't even think ACPI existed yet. Um. 
All right. So, uh, so this is going to, this is going to connect out. And I think what I want to do is also have a connect in. Not EU friendly stream. It's fucked up that the world isn't flat. Well, fuck the EU. Yeah. Fuck the EU. <laughs> Damn communists. With things like workers' rights, healthcare. Yeah. Gross. Was the EU ever done for us? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, let's be let's be honest. The EU, the the EU makes for a fantastic place to have wars not on your soil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I need to figure out how to port forward in Kimu. Does anyone know? The syntax is disgusting, if I remember correctly. Kimu user net nick nick. Don't forget selling weapons to both sides. Number one. Yeah, I mean, what did we do for, like, the first three years of World War II? Uh, everyone else was spending money and dying, and we were just selling everyone guns! <laughs> well, the U.S. was just chilling there until until Pearl Harbor, where it was just like, Yeah, we don't want to get involved. We'll just... Yeah, yeah, yeah just, just buy our guns, man. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> uh, yep, I can confirm that polling hosting hosting best the worst. Holy shit. Faces. This is so dark, but kind of true. Uh... <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Uh, this. Simplest way to forward specific host port to guest port 22. Okay. So, yep. Okay, so we're going to do this. Um, we had Germany one side of the mountain and British on another mining. <laughs> oh, World War II. What a, what a, what a time to be alive. Uh, a short time to be alive. <laughs> if you're 18. Woo! Woo! Uh, woo! Fighting for people we don't give a shit about. Woo! Woo! <laughs> uh, net dev user. Ah, <laughs> 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 <sighs> NTQ. Okay. Um. Wow. Was it okay with that? Okay, what port? What port do we want to run? Chat, vote for the port. Vote for the port. Vote for the port. Um, boop, 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 69. Can't can't use 69, can you? That's DNS, DCP. Um 8086 is Windows going to support 42069 or is it going to get mad cuz that's an ephemeral port?
Okay, so theoretically, Windows will get mad 100%. 1776! Woo! Whoop! All right, chat, what is the first thing that we need to do? What is the very first thing we need to do if we want to compile code on Windows NT? Um, and let, let's get some slappers going. What are we going to listen to today? Fix the date. Yup, set the clock. Yup. <laughs> oh, play a slapper. Hmm. I did the T-Swift album yesterday, the new one, Taylor's, Taylor's version of Red. Oh, what a fantastic one. Mariah Carey? Honestly, Mariah Carey is fantastic. 32 minutes of soothing, relaxing, meditating World War II sounds? Uh, is this real? Is this fucking real? If this is fucking real... Oh my god, please be real. Please be real. <laughs> okay, it's real! Hear this! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my fucking god, this is fantastic! <laughs> These relaxing sounds will convince your grampy is back in the war. <laughs> Fuzzing at a front line. World War II ASMR. All right, ASMR actually works on me. I found that out in middle school when I had a crush that would whisper in my ear. Oh my fucking, oh. <laughs> oh wow, it really, oh, it really got, it really got going. Oh, those are just, those are just straight up automatic gunshots. Oh God. <laughs> Map? No. <laughs> yeah, the shit exploding. Yeah, it started off very soothing. Now it's it's not very soothing. <laughs> there's, there's constant machine guns. Mortars going off. <laughs> Oh my god, this is not relaxing or soothing. <laughs> it's really... This does not sound very relaxed. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go into... Uh, what are we gonna name this project? <laughs> Nuts.txt Uh... Hmm... We're going to call this project uh, Nikito97. Okay. So this project is not going to work. Um, That's okay. Uh, we're setting ourselves up for a nice failure. Nikito97. Uh, 97.c. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, yeah, that sounds good. That uh let's put on some Christian rock. Fuck yeah. Oh oh I weaponized so many bugs to this album. 
Oh my god. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there are some unironically good Christian rock bands. They're kind of all good. Christian rock is fucking phenomenal. But what band? Uh, this is Fireflight, the Healing of Harms album. It's got a really cool album art too. What uh, what, what music player? NC Spot, because it's written in Rust and it's the only language that's worth using. You know how there's like GNU, it, the, or the GPL license, the the cancer's GPL license that forces everything to be GPL. I'm gonna write the RPL license, the Rust public license, and basically it will pollute all code bases and require that they're written in Rust. <laughs> Let's do that now. Uh, yeah, I intro introducing... Introducing RGP uh, RPL two, uh, my new uh, programming license. It is just like GPL, but in instead of forcing open source, it forces uh, use of Rust. All projects, uh, all source included, included. And added must be Rust. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, here we go. I came back and we're using VC4. I don't remember this shitty thing. Look at that syntax highlighting or loss of. What? We got, we got highlighting of keywords. We got highlighting of, of comments. What more can you want? <laughs> VC, this is, uh, I'm sorry, this is actually VC 4.1. This seems like syntax highlighting most editors have by default. Eh. Pistol sounds zero when you're typing. <laughs> IR arm workbench is not better. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, the the embedded IDE world is really bad. The world that people like the play people doing embedded development Holy shit, those tools are so bad. <laughs> Name a VS Code theme. This is, uh... Uh... Gotta download the Texas Instruments ID. This has no IntelliSense. Yeah, but this has, this has debug. Look at all these, look at all these features. You have this. You have this drop down up here so you can select Wait, what wait, what is this? Oh, is this the search for documentation? Oh, this is actually really nice. I didn't know that. I Um, not device IO control. Uh let's just look for create file. Okay, that's not great. Um uh, okay, so if I click on this text box and then hit Control A, uh, it highlights all of the <laughs> it highlights the source file. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. VS 2025 is out. Yeah, this is the future right here. <laughs> what happens if you hit delete now? Hmm. Oh my god! Wait! What? Okay. 
Control A, delete. What? Wait, what? How did it? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Still better than VS 2019. I think the worst Visual Studio was like, uh, was it 2015? Was it 2015 that had like a two hour install process? And then they released 2019 or 2018 or 2017, and they had a feature of that the they sped up the install, and now instead of two hours, it took like fucking 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, now one hour faster. Oh, sick. <laughs> oh, super valuable. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I can't use my scroll wheel. So developing in this environment sucks. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to bind to 42069. Um, and then we're going to bind to ZZZZ. At least VS 2022 is 60. Ooh, really? It's 64 bit. Yay. Now it can leak memory even more. <laughs> 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 now instead of leaking up to three gigs it can leak up to all of your gigs Woo! <laughs> okay um so let's see here all we want to do is <laughs> pog <laughs> <laughs> Why settle for three? Uh, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go down here. I used VS 2022 on a large project and it's shockingly working pretty well. Oh! Oh! Have they ported it all to Electron yet? So it's shit? Um, okay. Now we're gonna do a listen, sock, I don't know, five? Uh, if this... Napalm, do you remember how many people, uh, like, you taught how to basically use the Berkeley Sockets API? Because I'm pretty sure that was, like, 99% of the programming questions that would come up is, like, how to socket? How do you connect? <laughs> um... Hmm. <laughs> and let's uh let's tile these. Let's go horizontally. Okay. What does this do? Is this a socket error? Yeah, this is socket error. Okay, if this is equal to socket. Error, then uh, fprintf standard error, listen, error, percent %d, wsa get last error, return negative one. Okay, this should have a new line. Spawn a command and pipe uh, standard in and out to the socket. Job done. <sighs> yeah. Uh, See, I want to integrate this into my Rust build system. <laughs> okay, I think I just need sock WSA data and socketer. And here's what I'm going to do. Uh, this is going to listen for connections. So hopefully this is like already roughly what we want. Um, uh, Ito97. Um, b -b 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 notepad make file. No, I don't want to make makefile.txt. I want to make make file, you fucking. <sighs> okay, CL, uh, nickito97.c. Okay. Make file. There we go. Okay. And make. That's not what I told you to do! 
Ah. <sighs> oh my god. Uh I spelt it wrong. <laughs> okay, first try. What? When I control S, it saves it as a different file, doesn't it? What? Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Rightly, fuck off. <laughs> We've never tried 1982. Let's see if 1982 works. Yeah, 1982 is just fine. Okay, uh, wstock32.lib? Oh, I can't use... Oh, fuck. Oh, no. This VM's gone. Um, uh, shit. Can I alt tab inside of here? Shift tab, control tab, shift alt tab. Oh, how do I, how do I? I think I saved the file. I think I saved the file so we can at least build this. Yes. Okay, and now we have to reboot. <laughs> Why reboot? Because the mouse doesn't work. It just does that sometimes. Let me see if I can put the camera on like face prio or some shit. Let me let me let me try and let me try and solve this camera. I don't see anything. Well, it's a Microsoft product. Sometimes it breaks. What are you talking about? Why did changing the date work? Uh... Okay, I, th I think I think it's uh, I think it's written everything to disk. If it hasn't written everything to disk, then we completely corrupted this. Ba 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 do do bow. This is a long shutdown. You're a long shutdown. Okay. Uh, I put the mic a little further away. Hopefully, this is fine. Okay. Why am I getting D colon? What VM are you running this on? Uh, uh, Kimu. <laughs> uh okay and then all files and then make file okay do you think there's support for wall do you think there's wall support god fuck your name nikito What do you think the highest level of W is? <sighs> okay. Uh, pragma push. Pragma warning push zero. Pragma warning pop. I think it, I think that's, I think that's right. 
bitch. Pragma. Hmm. Pragma balls. <laughs> uh, let's see. Don't issue specified warnings. Um, oh, this, ah, I see. Okay, I just don't think that pragma exists yet. I th think that might just not exist. Okay, we're just gonna, we're just gonna not use warnings. Oh, we lost the mouse again. Son of a bitch. Can we recover it? We've never recovered from this. I found it. Uh, virtual assistant. What is this? Gives mouse scrolling. Unfortunately, 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 oh, wait, I got my mouse back. Unfortunately, it's not going to work for us, Dev Angels. I've got really bad news for you. I got really bad news. <laughs> Mips, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we basically have to write all of our software <laughs> for ourselves. <laughs> okay, uh... For... Uh, socket client is equal to accept sock... Null, null. I don't know. So it's been a hot minute since I've written this shit. Um. Yeah, null, null. Printf got client new line. Piece of shit. Oh, oh, there goes the mouse. Shit. Remember you don't have C99? That's fine, because I'm in a new scope. Oh, come on! How do I... Hmm... Full screen, control, alt, F. Okay, that didn't do it either. God damn it. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I, I think all of the windows are in the right shapes. So we can, we can do this. Oh, no. We need to be able to get to that window. How do we how do we switch windows in here? Oh, we can do like Alt W. Uh, let's just do this. Oh, is it like Alt One Two? Okay, W Two, W Three. Okay, okay, okay. We we got this. We got this. We recovered. We recovered. Um. Oh god. Uh uh
Wh why is there a connect? When did I add a connect? Why is there a connect in here? We want listen and accept. Um... Is that because it's an ephemeral port or, or did we not do it right? Let's try 420. Oh, I didn't bind. That's what it was. Yeah, I haven't done bind yet. Uh, bind, um, sock. Uh, alt W. Alt W. Three, yeah. Okay. Um. Bam. Okay, that's actually exactly what I expected it was gonna be. Alt one, uh, this. Bind, sock adder, um, size of sock adder. If this is equal to socket error, okay, apparently escape closes the window that I'm not on. Okay, that's good, cool, nice, okay. Um, <laughs> yay, okay, uh, and then, um, this, we'll just say, uh, struck socketer, we'll say construct socketer to be really nice. I hope NT doesn't have a firewall. It does. It's just not on by default. Okay, so we are now listening. Oh, and we can probably put it to 42069 again. 42069, let's go, let's go. Masterpiece. Uh... Hey! Woo! Woo! Okay. Um, got client, and then we can do a uh, close client. Is it close or is it close socket? Tile vertical, yeah. Uh, I can't, I can't tile vertical because it's, I think it's going to be too narrow with this font size. Ah, yeah, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little squishy. Uh, I really want to close make file, but hitting escape just closes a random window, apparently. And I think alt F4 will close everything, is my guess. I'm guessing alt F4 will close everything. <laughs> Control F4? Oh, thank you. You're right. Um, control F4. All right. Nice. Okay. So now we can do this. Now we can do H search close. Because there is a close socket, but there's also a close. I don't know which one they recommend. Probably close socket. 
That's one of the things that's different about the Windows API is you use closed socket instead. Um, yep, that looks good. And that returns socket error. Um, I think close would also work here, but I want to close socket because we need to actually close that handle. Um, and now we shouldn't worry about leaks or anything. We should be able to run this basically indefinitely. Got clients, and honestly, I think we're going to do a shutdown as well. Oh, Jesus. Um... K H K shut down and then how how if how is zero if how is one a fin will be sent. Setting how to two. I like how there aren't constants. <laughs> there aren't constants. <laughs> wow. Two disables both sends and receives as described previously. Free DP, they're accepted and queued. Um, in no case will an ICMP error packet be generated. Two is both sends and receives. I don't know how my control or shift or something is stuck. Uh, I can't get out of this. I am stuck. I am stuck. Hey, there we go. <laughs> okay. 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 It was a mouse button was like stuck down. You have constants, they're defined in another header. Okay, that's not Oh, did I I built it. What? And let me turn off hmm Shouldn't that be finning me? Shouldn't that be killing the connection? Shouldn't that be closing it? Uh, let me, I'll read the docs. Um. Whoops, that's not what I want. Um. I thought two was sends and receives as described previously. For TCP sockets, fin will be sent. So I'd imagine that for a two, a fin will also be sent. Oh, I wonder if it's Kimu. I wonder if it's Kimu doing this. Well, we'll try one, because a one explicitly says fin is sent. And I would expect fin to be sent with a closed socket anyways. Well, let's try it. Yeah. <sighs> Is it Kimu then? A. A. Uh, I guess it's Kimu. <laughs> well, we probably don't need shutdown then, to be honest. Yeah, we'll just do shutdown. We'll do it anyways. Fuck it. I ain't scared. 
Do you need to flush? Shutdown does not close the socket or resources attached. Hmm. I think closed socket should have fit anyways. Uh, if SO linger is set with a non-zero timeout, it blocks until the remaining data is sent or timeout expires. It's a graceful disconnect. Oh. Don't linger is graceful. Wait for close. No. Yeah, I, uh, do I have to set that? Hmm. SO linger and SO don't linger. Is don't linger default or do I have to set that? Set sock ops. We'll, we'll try it. Windows timeouts are massive. Yes, they are. We'll try um. Uh, client link uh level is uh at soul sockets. So linger. Do you have to let it linger? Do you have to? Do you have to let it linger? Um, pointer to the buffer, okay, and then let's see what these are. If it's linger, we have a struct linger. Controls action taken when unsent data is queued on a socket and closed socket is performed. The application sets the desired behavior by creating a linger structure with the following elements. On off to enable it. It should set on off to a non-zero value and set L linger to zero or the desired timeout. I'm guessing zero is um to enable don't linger. That should be all uh set to zero and that should be called. By default, a socket cannot be bound to an address in use. Yeah, that's reuse. Okay, we, we can try it. We can try it. Um, L on on off is one. Linger dot L linger is equal to, I'm guessing zero is an infinite timeout. Right? Uh, missing a print too. I'm not trying to get a reverse shell. I'm just trying to get uh, a better environment. Yeah, it's not. I, I don't think that's it. I think it's supposed to be closing it, and I think Keem was keeping it open. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we need this. Okay, so then what we're going to do is a create process. Um, okay. It's been a while since I've called create process. Application name. Command line string. Um, 
and then a bunch of nulls. So we're gonna do um, d colon slash uh, hw hello world dot exe hello world dot exe. I can't remember if uh, command line needs to include that. Null, null, inherit handles, false, uh, creation flags, we'll figure those out. Don't care about environments, don't care about current directory, don't care about startup info, don't care about process info. Okay, that looks good, that looks good. Okay, uh, flags. Let's see what we want here, oops. Uh, application name command line, null terminated, uh, that specifies the command line to execute. It can be null. In that case, it uses the string. Okay, sweet. So that can be null. Um, to bloop. Inherent handles. Set that to false. Create new console. I think we might actually want to create a new console. Debug. Detach process. The new process doesn't have access to the console of the parent process. Uh, I can call alloc console. Okay. Um, we'll just do... Uh, I think create new console. That sounds good. I think that should be sufficient. Ah. What do you mean? What do you mean different from int? Oh, W. Ah. Okay. So then, so then hopefully this will spawn. Okay, so one of these can't be null. Okay, good to know, good to know. Um, application name. We, yep, we gave it that. Okay, and then, um command line if it's null yep that's fine security attributes that can be null uh thread attributes that can be null inherit handles that's false create new console that's fine um environment if it's null it uses the current environment current directory if it's null current drive startup info oh do i need startup info <sighs> and process information? Do I really need those? That's dumb. Startup info is an out. I don't think it is. Process info is out, but startup info is not. <sighs> Does system not exist? I, I don't wanna I don't wanna do system. I wanna make a new process. Uh there's a big difference. Big diff. Um okay, so we'll do uh SI startup info and then we'll do uh PI process info. Okay, um startup info SI and then process Information, PI. Yeah, I, I don't think this is gonna work. It'd be cool if it did, but it, it shouldn't. Oh, that worked. Sick, okay. So basically we can knock on this. We can knock on this port to execute our, our program, right? So that means that then we can run our, uh, what's our program called? Uh, mm, uh, MIPS test. 
Um, da, ba, ba, felf serve. Uh, one, two, three, four. Is it out dot? Is it one, two, three, four? Did I use one, two, three, four? Yes, I did. Okay, there we go. So now we can run a program, uh, which means we can then turn, uh, we can then send Kimu to a place we don't care about because we don't care about it anymore. Um, and then we have this. Um, can I have this just close right away? What's a good way to do that? Quit after Q0? Nope. Um, timeout after zero packets? Ah, uh, rip. Uh, Hmm. 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 Timeout zero. Hey! Hey! Perfect. Okay. Nice. Can we get a nice in chat, chat? Can we get a nice in chat? Okay. Uh. So we have felf serve, which is our output. Uh, we'll send it over here. We'll edit this like this and this. Okay, and then uh, we can go like this. And then up here, I can go into MIPS test. And then I have a make file. And then this make file will do an NC uh what was it uh nc uh uh w0127001555 okay so now if we run make this should build and run the program okay so now i can go down here and i can say uh now i can say now i can say moose Okay, um, okay, and then, uh, fill serve, blah, 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 serving bytes to this, um, we'll put a couple new new lines in here, maybe one of these bad boys, I love, I love using those bad boys, those are, those are some good boys. Uh, just uh, just a way of telling basically where the uh, where the screen is. Uh, cargo install path dot. Okay, MIPS test. Felf serve. There we go. So now we got felf going. Okay, uh, then we run make, and there we go. Is it necessary to have two TCP connections? Yes, because I can because with this setup I can do this. Um I can do this. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. And then I can do this again. <laughs> right? <laughs> that would be a bit of a problem if it was the same process. <laughs> Although I don't know if that was crashing. Uh, I think that is crashing. Yeah, it's definitely crashing. All right, there we go. That's great. That's great. Okay. Um, cargo watch. Make. Okay. Uh, 
What's changing? Oh, I have to exclude out.filth. I think. Hmm. Where does it... Does it get it? Does it parse git ignore? Looks like it does. Okay, so now I can say moose 2, save. Built, ran. There you go. This is now a proper dev environment. <laughs> this is sick. Cargo watch source. It looks like it respects git ignore. It it it's definitely respecting git ignore. Because if I remove that, it loops forever. <clears throat> but if I add it, it, it respects it. Or or cargo does or whatever. So that's the correct way to do it, anyways. Fuck yeah! <laughs> that's so cool! <laughs> Okay, so now we have, can, if we just save the file, we literally, saving the file literally, it just does everything. This is, this is pretty dank. This is pretty dank. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a look at our source tree. Let's see if everything's good. So we got syscall, we got mips, and then, uh, uh, this is not good. So, um... Now we have a better dev than VS. Yup. My music stopped. Um. Hmm. There's so many things to listen to. Uh, hmm. There's already a better dev imp than modern VS on the NTVO. Yikes, yikes. Using CMUs? No. No, I'm using NC spot. Uh, yeah, let's listen to this. Okay. T Swift Fearless? Let's be honest, Fearless is just objectively worse than uh, the best album, which is Speak Now. Beep, boop, beep. Speak Now is a masterpiece. Okay, let's convert these to naked functions. Let's get naked, chat. Um This way we're not relying on undefined behavior. Mm -hmm. Chat moving so fast no one will see that I'm an ASP.net dev that uses VS. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. What does naked do? It basically ensures that nothing in the function exists except for the, um... It makes sure that nothing in the function exists except for the assembly. You have full control of everything. So, the way that we have to do this now... Uh... $2 is the ID. Let's go and find MIPS. NT 4.0 calling convention. Paramore Riot album is a hundred percent bangerville. Yeah, Riot is fantastic. Honestly, even Eponymous and Brand New Eyes are also really good. Nothing figured out. NC NC spot NC N N NC spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
much better until you need to get into container deep. Who uses containers? What are you, some fucking basic bitch? Remember that right to 30 a.m. saying a lot of I had. I ran out crying and you followed me out into the streets. Oh, T Swift, my bae. <laughs> For goodbyes, all I ever know. Basic bitches unite, let's go! Um. Mips NT, uh, Mips NT, uh, old new thing. Yeah, okay. So there's this fantastic blog on, uh, Mips R4K support. Look at this shit. Hold on, day. Hold on, never turn back. The stack is always aligned on an 8-byte boundary, and there is no red zone. Register is marked. Yes, in the preserved columns. Must be preserved across the call. And let's see if this... Uh, let's see if SP and S8 registers use for their stated purpose throughout the entire function. Uh, so SP and S8. Okay, so they use a stack and a frame pointer. This blog is great, yeah. Yeah, Raymond Chen's, uh, uh, one of, one of the few, like, top computer programmers in the world. Like, literally, probably, like, top 20. <laughs> like, it's insane. I keep forgetting how good your compressor is! Okay, that peaked. Sorry. <laughs> Fuck! I had I had my gain up because the microphone was away. Sorry, now it's okay. <laughs> right? Test. It shouldn't be clipping. Hello? Ah, <laughs> uh, it's still clipping. Fuck. I I I think I have the settings turned up a bit more than they used to be. It's mo it's still clipping. I don't know if I'm clipping on the. I think I'm clipping on the mic. Fuck! <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah, I think I had the mic gain up way higher than I usually have it. Fixed. Yep. <sighs> okay, so I can talk like... I should be able to talk pretty quiet, right? Talking pretty quiet. Pretty talk it. And then surprise... Fuck! Yeah? Yeah, was that fine? Was that fine? Was that fine? Also good. Okay, yeah, I had the gain up too high. Sorry. Sorry about that. Compressed as frick! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> yeah, compressors are pretty nice, aren't they? <laughs> okay, uh, Mips calling convention. My roommate's probably like, what? Um... MIPS 3 manual. Jangles, you don't need an adult. You are... Oh, I was... Uh, you're not an adult. Ha ha! Ah! Ha! Ha ha ha! 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 There we go. The MIPS R4K. This is literally what Windows was designed for, is the R4K. MIPS technologies. <laughs> 4K. Yeah, this is what we have open right now. Basically, what I'm trying to do is confirm that the generic R4000 calling convention should match the one that Windows is using. Okay, MMU. Oh, oh. Oh, the R4K. Oh, it's so good. 
instructions, memory management, exceptions, FPU, signals, clock interface. Wow, even the clocks are defined. Caches, system interface. Wow, this is a beautiful manual. What a beautiful manual. I like this guy's style of talking. Hell yeah, I like my style of talking too, until my voice hurts. Um, do 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 do. Hmm, okay, so. Let's see. Optimizing compilers. Ooh. Benefits of risk design. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Let's get in there. Mm, gimme it. Gimme. 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 Some benefits that result from the risk design techniques are not directly attributable to the drive to increase performance, but are the result of a basic reduction in complexity. A simpler design allows both chip area resources and human resources to be applied to features that enhance performance. Some of these benefits are described below. <laughs> Poggers, hell yeah, thank you so much for the four month fluffy poga. Hell yeah. <laughs> Risk one, one love. <laughs> Back to me. This is me swallowing my pride, standing in front of you, saying I'm sorry for that night. <laughs> Hello! Oh my, oh yeah, oh, give me those PLLs. I'm not seeing calling convention. Uh, how does one become a top 20 uh, programmer? Uh, yeah, listen to Taylor Swift. Fishy poos! Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Blub, blub, motherfucker! <laughs> what is this PDF? This is this PDF. Bam! Wow, they go... They have 11 of these? Summer of a beautiful night. Realize I love you. Okay, um. Okay, that's just a spam. It's a fake thing. Sick. Okay. Um. Five gifted subs from, from Cross 24! Holy shit! Oh, it's because of the T-Swift singing. Red Dragon X1. <laughs> Dodged like a pro. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you so much, Cross24X. Woot, woot. <laughs> Nim? Is that... Is that a Nim reference? There's also a Python emoji? There's a Python emoji? Oh, come on! Who is... <sighs> who... Who does that? Who does a Python emoji? <laughs> I made him mad. No, no. I, re I respect him. It's not... It's not terrible. The first time... Wow! He has... There, there's a Super H one, too? Oh my god. Windows CE for SH3? Oh shit, that's so cool. James <laughs> on your door. I don't do it. Uh MIPS Pro 64 bit compiler. Number of argument registers, eight? Ooh, shit. 
to December. Turns out freedom ain't nothing but missing you. If Raymond is in the top 20, who's your top three? You can't. All, all the people in like the top 50 are basically the same. So you can't you can't really judge them. Um <laughs> Terry Davis, hell yeah. So are they using O32? ILP32. Nips, 16 FP regs, four argument regs. And that kind of matches what we're seeing, right? So we it's documented here. We know we know for a fact that there are three arguments or four arguments passed. And then um I think this covers homing as well. Uh, it should be really I I know he covers the um hmm home hmm ips mips are four thousand home. How do I become top zero by being by being noob? Didn't this cover homing on one of these? Which part? Search engines work great in 2021. They actually are kind of worse than they used to be, isn't it? MIPS 3. Uh, 32, double word. Won't see it because we're focusing on a 32-bit mode. Has 32 GPRs, blah, blah, blah. Requires that SPNS8. 32-bit code doesn't have this. Stack is always aligned, and there's no red zone. Uh, right to be green. Like the pageant queen. Ah. Hmm. Atomics, LLSC, yep. Trampolines and stubs? No. Calling convention. <laughs> okay. Uh, calling convention for NT is similar to other major MIPS calling conventions, but they're like snowflakes. Despite being made of the same underlying materials, no two are completely alike. The short version of the parameter passing is that the first four parameters are passed in A0 through A3. The remaining parameters go on the stack after a 16-byte gap which is the home space for the regular regu uh, register parameters. Um, oh, I got a hype train emote. Raymond is a hero. Yeah, Raymond Chen is fucking phenomenal. Uh, things get weird when you mix 64-bit values or floating point. Uh, okay, we're going to ignore those. You load 16 bytes into A0 through A3, and the rest go onto the stack. Uh, however, if a parameter would normally be passed in A0 through A3 turns out to be a non-variadic uh, floating point value, then it's stored in F12, F13 for the first floating point value, or F14, F15 for the 16th, uh, second, and the corresponding integer register is left unused. Okay, so they gap them. Interesting. A0, A1, A2, A3, and then 10SP, and then F1, A1, double. Okay, that makes sense. Interesting. Okay. Shut up back door. Okay. Um. Didn't he just describe a red zone? A red zone is is not is not the same as a, a homing area. Um. Okay. So that's a pretty simple calling convention. Um. I think this only differs. So hmm. Let's uh let's get Rust to output its calling convention. 
Thrust C, C. Uh, uh. Uh, print, target, spec JSON, target, nips, LE, unknown, none, Z, unstable options. Okay. Mad, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta not spam. You, uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta maybe not spam. I don't know what this is. I don't, I don't know what this is for. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I don't understand what this is for. <laughs> uh, Mipsel, yep, you're right. Um... Data layout. I really need to learn how to read this. I really want to learn how to read this. This is something I need to I need to know how to learn. Um. So here's what I want to do. Uh, LVM data layout string. Uh, well, anything in Doxygen is useless because anything in Doxygen is useless. Um. Okay, here we go. Hyphen separate portions of the string. Okay. Okay. Okay, and uppercase E indicates big endian. Lowercase E means little endian. Okay, so this is a little endian system. Then we have another portion. Uh, so little endian. And what's uh, what's an M? What's an M mean? Sick. Sick. Uh M is undefined. So P is followed by por pointer information. Okay, so this is pointer. ABI alignment, uh size. So this is a pointer. It's a 32-bit pointer and it's 32-bit alignment. I8 is an 8-bit value, 32-bit uh, alignment. 16 is 16, 32-bit alignment. 64 is 64. N32 is probably the calling convention. And S64. Yeah, it'd be really nice to see what, what data layout is. Night and shade. Oh, I love Doxygen. It's so useful. Oh, look at all this extremely useful information. Oh, so fucking useful. Wow, cool. Thanks, Doxygen, for being fucking useless. Um... Oh, and that's useless, too. Okay, nice! Expect, sorry. Data layout string. Yeah, here we go. 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 Relax. Relax. Okay. Target. Data layout. Data layout spec specification. E, E, little endian. Okay. So we got little endian. We got an M to M. M to M. M to M. Mangling. M, nips mangling. Private symbols get a dollar prefix. Oh, so you, oh, you can pick your mangling. Okay. Well, that doesn't matter because we're building everything, but whatever. So that, you can define your mangling type. And then P, P, 
This is uh, the size of pointers. And then the ABI. The size of a pointer and its ABI. Pref is optional and defaults to ABI. What's ABI? Is that not the alignment? What? Average buy-in? ABI is the alignment? A, a blindment? Okay. Okay, I at eight. Those are all uh, self-explanatory. Yep, the integer of a given bit size, 8, 16, 64. Um, okay, and then N32. Um, N32, N32. Uh, specifies a set of native integer widths for the target CPU. So N32, uh, okay, so that's basically defining the U size, I think. Right? I think that's defining U size. Um, N32 colon 64 for 64. Okay, and then S64. And this is probably the maximum size. Oh, natural alignment of the stack. Nice. So that's the stack alignment. Okay. Specifies the natural alignment of the stack in bits. Um, sweet. Sweet. Okay. So that is awesome. So we know that uh, we know that the calling convention for MIPS. Uh, is, um, we know that it's 64-bit aligned, right? Okay, that's pretty cool. And then, what calling convention is this using? Address space. Address space of alloc A. P. I. V. F alignment for an aggregate type alignment for function pointers yeah so 32 bit aligned for all of these which is kind of interesting Um, default specs are this. Okay, so here's all the default specs. Okay, cool. Target triple. Environment. How do I define the ABI? How do I define the calling convention? Um, matches the target C calling conventions. Yeah, but how do I know what that is? How do I know what that is? When you wrote your first OS, were you pretty confident in what needed to be done, or did you struggle? I definitely struggled for a, a hot minute. But Dev Angels just told me what to do, so it was fine. It was easy. Um, arguments are on the stack. I mean, we don't know that for sure. I mean, we 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 observe that, but we don't know if that's the case. Um, um yeah. How the fuck do I know what calling convention it's using?
Um. Calling conventions? Yeah, there's a bunch of different ones. And I'm guessing it's... It's really hard to say which one it's using, right? O32 is the most commonly used? Okay. So we can just guess that that's that. It is strictly sack based for A0 through A3 to pass arguments. Space on the stack is reserved in case the callee needs to save its arguments. Um, oh, space on the stack is reserved in case the callee needs to save its arguments, but the registers are not stored there by the caller. The return value is in V0, second return may be V1. Um, okay, so I'm guessing that's probably what it uses. Resembles N32 more. This is a 95 conference. Okay, so it, it, it's, yeah, uh, um... Yeah, and I think that matches what they use. It differs, I think, for floating points. Um, I think basically the only difference between these conventions is the... Um, so there's homing space. And the homing space is reserved in case the colleague needs to save its arguments. Now the question is, does it home... Does it make home space for all of them? Because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, uh, Raymond Chen, uh, home. Home. The remaining parameters go after a 16 byte gap. It's the home space. Um, even if it accepts fewer than four parameters, you still must provide 16 bytes of home space. Yeah, and I don't... I don't know if 032. So let's look at system uh, V ABL. Let's try and find the true source of this. This shit's, like, pretty important. Um... Default C calling convention, 032. Stack goes down. Subtract from SP to allocate local storage. Restore SP by adding. Stack must be 8 byte aligned. Modify SP only in multiples of 8. Function parameters. Every parameter smaller than 32 bits is promoted to 32 bits. First four parameters are pushed through A0 through A3. 64 are pay, uh, put through pairs. Uh, little Indian mode or big Indian mode. Okay. Every subsequent parameter is passed on the stack. First 16 bytes on the stack are not used. Assuming SP, I still don't, it's still not clear enough to me. First 16 bytes are not used. I still need to guarantee that. Um. MIPS 032. Uh, the caller reserves 16 bytes at the end of its stack frame for the callee to store its arguments, even if it takes fewer. Okay, so it is the same convention. All right, we're good. We're good. So we have the exact same calling convention for syscalls as we have. Okay, so all we have to do is we have to move the syscall parameter into uh, V0. So V0 uh, is going to get the syscall ID, and that's going to be uh, V0, or A0, A1, A2. So this is A2, okay? Okay. Okay, chat. We, this time for sure. Go. Oh. Uh, so you have to mark naked functions, no return. And then... We're moving into V0 from A2. So V0 gets A2 because 0, 1, this is A2. So parameter A2 is the syscall ID, so we pass that in. Okay. All right, this time we're going to actually get this right. See this libo. Do you need to return in the assembly? Technically not for MIPS. 
Okay, one argument syscall. Okay, let's do this. Okay, this is A1. Let's make uh, zero argument syscall. We're just gonna go through the list, make all of them. We cannot use macros to define these, unfortunately. Okay, A0. Then we have a three argument syscall. Um, and this is a three now. And then four argument syscall. Uh, and these, we don't have to define the args. We'll just say this. ID this. This. Extern C is implied by extern. Um... So that's this call two, this is this call three. One, two, three U sizes. And then this is A3, so A0, A1, A2, A3. Okay, and then at this point, they're, um, I now have to start getting that from the stack. So this is a four argument syscall. This is four, blah, U size. But have we met? And then this will be at SP10, or sorry. X10 SP. Um, load word. Syscall two redefined. Okay, I have two twos. Zero, zero. One, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, four, ten SP. Right? And that should be correct. So uh, 10SP should be, yeah, that should be where that is. Okay. There's not a sparkling, don't you let it go. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And then this is now at 14. And we keep going through. We need up to nine at least. Windows has some really long syscalls, unfortunately, so we're just gonna go up to nine. Uh, this is now 18. So these ones we actually could macro. We can't macro the register ones, but we can macro the memory access ones. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, eight, eight, blah, U size. This is now 20. And then we have a nine argument syscall. Syscall nine. No, we don't fit. Okay. Uh, 24. Uh, load word. Unknown instruction, move. Oh, move with an E. Okay. Thirty uh, six invalid operand. What? Oh, do I need dollars for all of these? I don't know if I need it for the SPs inside. Okay, we're going to try it. Hey! Okay. So now we have 0, 0, 0, A0. 1, 1, 1. Uh, A1, 2, 2, 2. 3, 3, 3. 4, 4, 4. Uh, 4 in this case being uh, 10 SP. 5, 5, 14. 6, 6, 18. 7, 7, 1, C. 8, 8, 20. 
9924. Okay, that looks correct. So let's see what happens. This should still run and work. Okay, good. We didn't break anything. And now this is definitely correct. Now we know that unlike before when we were relying on undefined behavior, we know for sure that these are actually correctly running. And yes, um, these the syscall actually returns to LR, and LR is the um is is the function. Um, I think this unused thing is changing. I'm gonna do a rust up update. I think naked, um, I think naked is supposed to imply, um, allow unused. But I know that this stuff is, like, really actively being developed right now, so let's see if that's the case. This looks confusing. It's a little confusing. We're writing some assembly right now. Gotta run to the town over. Catch you either in a bit or on the VOD. See you around, Xenoblino. Thanks. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, we're rebuilding it. And if this doesn't go away, we'll just put allow unused. Oh, interesting. Oh, there's some development changes going on. Oh, wait, is Asm stable? Is Asm stable now? Is that why it's yelling at me for that? Do I not need Asm? Oh, no, you still need that. Okay. Okay. Um, allow unused. So we're just going to put allow unused everywhere. Bam! Okay, that looks good. So now, um, now everything should be pretty good here. So these take syscalls, uh, move v0a0, syscall, move v0a1, syscall, v0a2, syscall, 333, three. everything's no return. And then this way we know that everything is fully controlled. So if we did a make obj dump, you'll be able to see, um, Somewhere we should have our, okay, I'm just going to do this, syscall. So there's syscall exit, and then that's going to call syscall2. And syscall2 is literally what we emit. Now there's a break instruction after, but it actually returns to LR. And since that jumps to LR, um, these are actually great. These are really nice thunks. So it's just move the... Uh, move the syscall ID into the correct syscall ID register, perform the syscall, and then syscall will return back. This will never execute. It will jump back to LR, the caller. And since these are naked functions, they have to be called. So we don't have to worry about, uh, we don't have to worry about these getting inlined. These are explicitly never inline. Um, and so you, if you factor all that stuff together, everything's good now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, four, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Beautiful. Hey, I hope you're having a great stream so far. Hell yeah, I am. Print something after moose. Well, let's double check. This file looks pretty good now. So we'll say this is uh, MIPS um, NT syscall conventions uh and the convention is um um ref uh very similar to mips 032 convention uh with interleaved uh interleaved floats and skipped integer registers for uh, uh, when floats are used. Okay. Okay, and then source. What else do we have in source? We have source syscall. And then this is um, uh, generic syscalls for uh, Windows. Yep, so this handles Windows syscalls such that we can do Windows-y syscalls here. Uh, exit the current process, pubfn. 
A bang, unreachable, unchecked. That looks good. Uh, okay. Pub mod MIPS, pub use MIPS star. So that's going to use everything out of there if it's MIPS. Um, okay, so this just works. This just works. So this looks good. Generic syscalls for Windows. MIPS. Exit. Uh, that exits with an exit code. This exits the current process. It calls into terminate process, process, and then it's unreachable unchecked, which is pretty good. So should we handle exit codes from exit? Um, so NT terminate process. Technically, all NT syscalls, I think, should return NT status. NT status, um, if it succeeds... Never use assembly personally in my role as a dev. Uh, not that I can remember. Yeah, it's it's pretty rare unless you're doing pretty low-level stuff. Okay, um, so basically what we've done is uh, we've implemented all of the low-level syscalls. So basically these functions can be used. They're all marked unsafe. They're all marked extern. Um, and basically, these allow me to perform arbitrary syscalls with Windows NT. So basically, I pass in these arguments, and then these arguments go directly to the syscall. So then it's up to me to make safe wrappers that actually do the right things around them. So for example, exit calls NT terminate process. An NT terminate process takes a process handle and an exit status, right? And that's what we do. We pass in a process handle where all Fs is your current process, code is the code we want to exit the process with, and then we call anti-terminate processes the syscall. And then we've made a nice wrapper that's safe that's around that, right? And then we've also annotated this and said that this never returns, which is not necessarily always true. Um, so I think what we want to do... Um, I think what we want to do is maybe like a, a U-size here. Um... Actually, I'm going to do this. Uh, struct NT status uh, U32. These are um, NT status codes. Okay, so we're going to strongly type this. We'll also make this pub. And now that we're strongly typing this, we're going to have a little bit better APIs. Uh, derive. We're going to give this clone and copy just so it can be uh, moved around pretty cheaply. And then this is an NT status. And then here we'll say syscall to NT status, this as U32. And now that is the result. Okay. Okay, so now start uh, can potentially, uh, we want to make sure start never returns. So we're gonna do a loop after that now. Uh, same with moose which seems to be our panic handler. So panic handler, uh, syscall exit loop. Okay. And now technically we can, uh, we can get the status code from that exit, right? So if I do a print line of X of uh, syscall exit, um, oh, and let's add uh, debug. Okay, here we go. So this will give us the NT status code. And exit zero succeeds. And then let's break this. Let's just have a bad handle here. Let's just, that is our handle. And there you go. You can see that this failed with invalid parameter, right? Um, or invalid handle. So uh, now we can actually get error codes from that because technically exit can fail. <laughs> exit can fail. Um... And then here, we're going to say, uh, yeah, let's do this. And, and I think, um, hmm, yeah, I don't like having the loop afterwards, so I think I might put the loop in here. What do you do when the exit fails? That's kind of fair. 
Um. Yeah, I might do just for this one. It, it's really tough to decide this convention because technically you are losing information here. Um, but uh, core, we can just go back to what we had basically. Unreachable, unchecked. Okay, there we go. We got our moose. Uh, exit the current process uh, with code as the exit status. Okay, so now we can exit with a given exit status. We can perform any syscall up to nine arguments. All right. All right. That's pretty damn good. That's pretty damn good, chat. All right, IO status block. Okay, so let's start implementing some of these bad boys. Let's start moving these into some good spots. Okay, we're just gonna start stuffing some Windows generic things in here. Um, IO status block, so this is uh, IO status block. Um, okay. Um, status code from the command, and then, uh, request dependent value, uh, about the status, okay? About the, um, request. And then this is an empty status. So we'll do this again. Pub struct empty status, uh, pub u32, uh, derive clone, copy, debug, uh, nt status. Okay. And then information is a u size. This is technically muxed with a, a pointer. Um, so this is actually a union, which is kind of tough. I think NT status is specifically, um, I think it is a D word. I think it is a U32. Yeah, it's 32 bit. Okay, um, NT status, U32, which means that this is technically wrong unless I have this be a union. Um,. How do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? Uh, 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 mm. I mean, this will get aligned to a U size. <laughs> so technically, this is fine. These will both be U sizes and start. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Um. Uh. Yeah, default. We can derive default. Okay, so now that we have default for that. IO status block. Nice. Then we can say pub on this. Pub on these fields. We're making some nice FFI for Windows. IO status block, okay, and now we're gonna move our write syscall into here as well. Okay. Um, write to a file, uh, pub fn write fd, um, let's just figure this out. This is gonna return a anti status code. Egos, thank you so much for the subscription. How's your day going? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for the two months of support. Hell yeah. Uh, self.0, that is, uh, that should be a handle. Uh, let's also do that. Uh, pub struct uh, handle u size. Okay, so this is a uh, handle. Once again, strongly typing all of these things because that is correct. Strong typing is good typing. Okay, so then this is an fd.0. Okay, um, and then let's add some uh, comments here just because this is a little gross. 
Uh, syscall returning, not to the instruction after the syscall is weird. Yeah, it jumps to LR. It jumps to the return, uh, it, it jumps to the, uh, value in the, the linked register. So, since we have naked functions that are not inlineable, LR is actually set to the return for the syscall 8 function itself, which means syscall will directly return out of this. Doesn't make any sense? I agree. We spent, like, what, 15 minutes figuring that one out? And being pretty confused? Uh... <laughs> so, you have to set LR if you want to do two syscalls in a row? Yeah, or you have to use a wrapper function, which is what most people do. Never thought we'd at last. Dude, why is this album so fucking good? T Swift, man. Like this. Do 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 do. Wish I could hear it. Yeah, I, I do too, but I think that's that's one of the ones that's a pretty pretty fast ban. Okay. Um which one? Uh this is speak now. Okay, uh file handle event optional, so zero. APC routine, zero. APC context, zero. Um, which are null pointers, basically. Uh, iOS status block is uh, mute IOSB. Oh, um, there's, a, uh, there's a new thing that I've started to use. Um, that... Uh, check this out. Um, so this is just a, a nicer way of kind of writing what, what I had written there. Um, right, so that's going to make it into a raw pointer, which is really, really cool. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Um, like, uh, yeah. Okay, iOS B, not found in the scope. Um, uh, 53, offset. Oh, yeah, those were in here. Okay. Um... It's not working like that. Adarov is a, a raw address, but I think you can cast raw addresses. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure uh, raw references. Um, I'm pretty sure raw references can be cast directly. Um, adder of X is, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a reference to X and I want to reference the iOS B. This is the address of the iOS B and this should be the address of the offset, right? Um, 62, um, fifty S not found in the scope. Okay. Uh. Uh, bytes is impl asref u8. Yeah, we're using generics now, baby. 
Um, so now I can do bytes.asref dot as pointer. Ah, now he can do strings. Fuck yeah. Uh, bytes dot as ref dot len. How fucking cool is that? NT status. Okay. Just wrap that shit as a U32 as an NT status. Okay. Okay. Let's get some claps in chat. Uh, pub struct uh, result. Um, T is equal to, uh, oh, I haven't noticed that IOSB is a value, not a ref. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, core results, results, T. Well, I'm, I'm glad that chat, uh, claps on demand. The British rain claps on its own? Okay, and then this will be NT status. And this is, um, attempted... A syscall which failed with uh, NT status, uh, which may have failed with NT status, okay? So now we have like a, a result wrapper on NT status. And that means that these now, this will actually return a result of U size. And then IO status block information is the number of bytes written. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Information is number of bytes actually written. So then, this, let status is NT status, uh, or let status is equal to NT status of this syscall. So we perform the syscall, uh, that as U32. Okay, and then we can say, um, if status dot, and how do you tell if something NT success, what's the, um, what's the magic for that? You check like the bottom three bits or the top two bits. You yeah, Matt, uh, you check, you, I forget what it is. Um, uh, success. S status success is just zero. We know that, but success, um, status wait. Is it greater than or equal to zero? Um, I'm just gonna do this. If status dot zero is not equal to zero, uh, error. Status. Else, okay. Uh, iosb dot information. So that will give me the night number of bytes read. So if it's zero, we're just gonna be really strict. Um, if success, uh, and we'll do if status success. If success, uh, return number of bytes written. Otherwise, return error. Okay, so then we can impl nt status. nt success evaluates to true if the return value specified by status is a type of zero to that or an informational type that to that. So yeah, I guess it is, it is greater than or equal to zero, isn't it? Huh, okay, cool. Uh, pub fn success, uh, bool. Uh, returns true if the, uh, status was successful. Okay, and then here we're gonna say self.0 as i32. If this is greater than or equal to zero, then it was successful. Right? Okay. Um... Uh, type. Okay. So we try a write file, and then we get the result, and then if it is successful, then we return the number of bytes written. So what we should be able to do now is we should now be able to call write. Um, 
And this is a handle. Okay. Um, and then this will create one. Uh, we want the macro to create it. Yeah. Print. Print line, paint a candler, print line, boop, boop. Um, writer, which is a, uh, handle this. Okay, 12. Um, use syscall handle. Where did Moose go? Uh, we're not printing right now. We laugh about the vacant stands, but right now. I'm actually gonna say syscall handle. Okay, uh, this is gonna be self.0, which is the handle. Um, and then the bytes, which is S. And that's it. Um, okay, there we go. Nice. So what we should be able to do is, uh, do we have debug? Uh, this love is ice. Okay. I'm just going to throw this in here right now. I'm just going to see if this works. Uh, and then we won't do e print line. No print LN. Do I have to export these for them to show up? Stringify. That makes sense. Um, oh yeah, there should be none of these. This should be a uh, core stringify. Actually, stringify might just be in here. Okay, um, yep. Yeah. Uh, yes. It turns out if you debug print in your print, uh, y you get that. Okay, um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, so I should be able to now, uh, like, debug, uh, debug 5 plus 5. Can I do that? Yeah, look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Isn't that fucking cool? I'll just delete the comments. Fuck comments. Uh, set text width to 79, actually. We'll go... Uh, eprint ln. Do you snide and mock my father about your tattoos? Be ignored. Mm. Create file line. I think I just want to do file on line here. Isn't that fucking sweet? So I can like print socket and, sh and shit? God, that's so fucking cool! This is MIPS! This is MIPS on NT! It's fucking phenomenal. What's up? Mm -hmm. What is rough? This love is us. SP search print dot rs. Boom. Uh, print and debug routines. Okay. Um. Socket for external uh prints. Communication. Okay. Uh, writer structure that simply implements, uh, core format write such that we can use, uh, write format. 
in our uh, syscall, in our uh, print. Okay, panic. Uh, SP search panic.rs. Um, panic handler. Then here, we're going to say uh, panic handler. Okay, so now we can do uh, mod prints, mod panic. Okay. Okay, uh, and then here we're going to do unsafe fn register socket, socket use size, and this is uh, register the... Uh, initial socket. Oh, and let's go to uh, this. Um, Repper um, transparent. Okay. Um, now, what we're going to do is this is going to be a, a syscall handle. And then we'll register this socket. And the way that we'll register this is this unsafe uh, pub super unsafe. So this is only public to the super. Um, and then we'll do socket dot write uh, dot store socket dot zero ordering relaxed. Okay. Um, we'll actually say, uh, um, release, right? Let me make sure release is correct, but I, I'm pretty sure it is. This function is actually not unsafe. I'm explicitly using unsafe to increase the gating. Release when coupled with a store. Yeah. So release that. So that's going to cause everything to be pushed behind that, which is good. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll do a uh, print register socket. We'll even say this is unsafe. Fuck it. Uh, register socket. Um, socket. Register the socket with the print handler so that we can print. Save the socket, debug, blah, blah, blah. Uh, exit the program, and then here we'll do main. Okay. SP source. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Entry.rs. Um, main program entry point. Uh, entry point. Uh, this is like the exported uh, entry point. Okay. And that's just going to call main. Invoke main. Uh, create, bam, mod entry. Okay, and now we should be able to FN main. Now this is rust and safe. Okay. So this will be uh, create, syscall handle, and then we're going to have some uh, syscall exit. Uh, use create syscall. You know what? Handle, exit, and handle. Now that we're really tucking this away, I'm okay with this. And this will be crate print. Um, handle, handle not found on a scope. Forever. Uh, clear cargo check. I know it's like kind of hard to see some of the some of the things here. Why aren't you using the result from right? What am I gonna do with it? Um. Uh. Entry. Oh. Uh, 
Pub unsafe extern FN. What component are you gonna fuzz? No idea. Print LN. Uh Pub mod this. Um that should get me those. I think. Yeah. Uh okay. I'm trying to figure out why I have so many warnings and errors. I know this is covered by my face, but that's okay. Panic handler. Uh Okay. Socket not found in the print scope? Yes. Um Shit. How are we going to do that? Do we have to make this pub then? Do I have to make that pub? Um, okay, so... Hmm. So this will be create print writer. These have to be fully qualified paths, and that's why I this is a little bit weird. Private tuple struct constructor. Uh, okay, ordering. Um, here we can do this, I guess up here and then here we can say use core uh here i'll just do a fqdn as well fully qualified domain name um and then this has to be create syscall handle or no yeah Actually, here I can just say handle, and we can pull in syscall handle. Uh, use create syscall handle. Okay. 59. Yep, this is create syscall, right? Uh, 11, create syscall. Oh, that's just handle now. Okay. Oh, that one still has to be full path. Yeah, that one does. Um, 11 socket. This has to be create print socket. Uh, 11. Yeah, and I have to make this public, which sucks. It sucks. It's kind of dumb. Kind of don't like that. I don't think there's a really good way around this. Obviously, I could wrap this in something. Whatever. Whatever. We'll just do this. Um, okay. Handle is not FFI safe. Is that because I say it's transparent? So we'll just say it's ripper C. Oh. Um, yeah, I need to do that for handle. Bam. Bam. Okay. Uh, watch. Bam. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Now, this is main. Print, hello world. Okay, so now this shit is kind of hidden away from us. So that's going to register the socket so we can print. This is kind of like our kernel entry point. Register the socket, invoke main, exit the program. And then we can just return and exit and do all those things from here. So if we want to do results... Um... How is this implemented for Rust? 
Uh, how do they implement main? Okay, so that's good. And then, um, is it just assert, um, okay? Oh, if, yeah. If let error x equals this, panic x. Is that literally what they do? Um. Okay. This match types 10. Um, implicitly returns parens as a body, uh, as its body as no tail. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then if I do error, and then, uh, struct moose, and this should fail if I say moose, because that doesn't implement debug. Yeah. Okay, uh, and then we can see, uh, and we can say, uh, main exited with, uh, error. Huh? 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 Or do I not panic? Do I just do this? Um... Uh, main exited with error like that instead instead of having it be like an actual panic thoughts thoughts Eh. You want to panic? Desu wants a panic. Desu wants a fucking panic. There it is. Main exited with error. Moose. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, how is this? How is this dev environment now? Let me check what Rust does actually. Yeah. Um. Uh, isn't this fucking cool? <laughs> All right. All right. Uh Okay. Rust uses termination. Yeah, so I can't use that. Um So panic should be exiting. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now we can do whatever we want to do. <laughs> uh, let's get uh, let's get Clippy in here. Um, what's the cargo Clippy uh uh disallow unused uh Clippy un uh where is it? Give me the punishment. Fuck yeah. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. That's what I want.
clippy cargo bill uh cargo clippy yeah let's go make clippy all right tell me what i'm not documenting moose yep it's fair i haven't documented moose uh okay what else do we got Missing documentation and macros and print. Okay. Uh, 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 classic, uh, debug macro, classic print LN macro. I don't need to really explain these. Classic print macro. Okay. Uh, missing documentation for crate. Um, okay. Uh, main program entry points. Uh, for Rust. Hey, we passed Clippy. Uh, all variants have the same prefix, NT. Hmm, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Um. Uh. I don't know, what do I want to do? Do I want to allow this? Or do I want to do this? Um. Where the fuck is this? There we go. Clippy being an asshole. Fucking Clippy, dude. I think Clippy is actually right. Because we're making rust bindings. We're not making... We're not making... Uh, just direct C bindings. And then here we can say um, allow unused. Or do I have to do allow dead code? What What's the what's the most strict way to say allow variant never constructed? Is dead code the best way, do you think? Allow dead code's a little bit aggressive, but I, I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Okay, there we go. We pass. Everything is documented. Get status. <laughs> get ad source. Get status. Get get commit am um, passes clippy basic dev environments. Okay, get status okay now we got to go get the uh um now we got to go get the shit from the vm so let's get this shit in here clippy is satisfied <laughs> um Um, okay. So, uh, what we're gonna do is inside of here, we want to package all this stuff up in a nice way, right? So think about packaging up uh, this code like Desu, and then don't, because we don't want to package it up like Desu, because that wouldn't be nice. Okay, so let's see, uh, new folder. What are we going to call this? Um, uh, uh, I don't know, like shell, uh, shell code exec, shell code executor, Nikito97, uh, shell code executor, shell code host, shell code client, shell code server, shell, shell code client. Paste. Remember when we fell thin by the water. Okay, uh, F. Rename. We're gonna rename this as, uh, client.c. Um, and then this is gonna be, uh, spawner.c. Executor dot C or like listener. 
Uh, new, uh, rename listener server. Fine. Uh, okay. New text document, make file. Okay, open that in MS Dev. Okay. Okay. What? I just want to open it. Um, all. Uh, CL. Server dot C. Winsock32 dot lib. And CL client dot C. Dosock32 dot lib. Okay. Uh, shell code client and make. So it should build both. Front of you saying I'm not no logo. Nice. Nice. Okay. So now we should have a server.exe. Shit, we could, let's let's make this really fancy. Uh server.exe, server.c, uh client.exe, client.c. There's make and nt. There's there's been make ever forever. It, it's still the best way to to do these things. Server.exe and client.exe. Okay, server, 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 client, client, client. Boom. Okay. Make their source. Uh, Armadur SQ source. Make their sources. Uh, move star.c sources. Der arm star.ob star.exe. Del star.ob star.exe. Der. Okay. Um, sources. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, del star dot ob star dot exe. Okay, let's keep going. Um. Stop. 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 Uh, objects, 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 uh, make their objects. Is that gonna be a problem? I think that make their is gonna fail. Okay, nice. Uh, server.exe, client.exe, okay, and then this is going to fo obj server.object. Uh, I can't remember if that's the executable output or the object output. Uh, clean. Armadur sq obj. Minus. Okay, and that's fine. That allows failures. In fact, we can even go and to null. Ah! Ah! Okay, um... CL. Oh, there is MIPS for support. Uh, output files. F O, name object file. F E, name executable file. 
Okay. Um. Okay. Probably should make a client. Um. Yeah, but why? <laughs> why is it? Ah, oh, you piece of shit. Um, I might just manually link. Ah. <sighs> Oh, I didn't delete the old ones? You're right. This is very difficult. Thank you. Uh, and make clean. And make. Ah! 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 Look at that! And make doesn't do anything. Fuck yeah. All right. Yeah, that's some Giga Chad shit right there. If I've ever seen it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I can't. Oh, there we go. Um, VSC. Is it VSC? Uh, what's the, what's the, what's, What's the program called? Devenv? MS Dev. Let's get a round of applause for Big Fox 99 today. Coming in with some of the biggest, the biggest Biggest ideas. <laughs> uh, TY for lifetime VIP. I don't know what to say since the twist update when it all broke down. And the story of us will unlock tragedy now. Okay. So. Uh... Mm, Malik, good, receive, read everything. That handles the felf, the alfalfa sprout. Uh, that looks great. This is great. Okay. And I liked it better when you were on my... Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, whatever. Um. Oh, well, we should be able to see that client will build now. Client and server and make. Okay, I'm gonna save client. Yeah, and just client should build. Hey! Ending soon. Now I'm sitting alone in a crowded room. Ah, oh, T Swift. So good. Okay, and then this is gonna be client.exe. Old T Swift, best T Swift, yeah. Okay, so none of these should have hard coded paths anymore, except spawn. Okay, so this is like literally uh, wait for um, wait for a client. Um, upon getting a TCP connection, just start a start a separate uh, client's process. Uh, this way the clients can crash and burn and this server uh, stays running just fine. Okay, and then this is uh, uh, We don't even transfer data. We just care about uh, the uh, The connection start uh, kicking off a client Okay, is this code good?
So we initialize WSA, we check for errors, we initialize a socket, we bind to 42069, we listen for connections, we wait for a client, we do all this shit, and everything's great. Okay, that looks really good. Uh, then in this one, we create a socket, check for errors, we connect out on port 1234 to a uh, fixed, fixed address. Um, we read the payload, uh, we read everything, so we keep reading until we've read everything. Once we've read everything, we check the felf header. Uh, if the felf header is good, then we, uh, get the entry point. We make sure that it's not a 64-bit address. We then try to allocate at that location. We make sure that it allocates at exactly where we expected it to. Um, and then we mem copy the code directly into that base, and then we jump into the code and we pass in the socket that we originally had, and that looks pretty good. So if this builds and runs, we should be done. We'll do a clean all just to make sure everything's good, but I'm pretty sure we did everything perfectly because, uh, yeah, we don't make mistakes. Okay, um, so now all I have to do is do a little watch and just do a uh, write. Oh, I probably should launch the server. Um, Server.exe. Okay, so server's running. Okay, and now write. And yeah, sure enough, there it is. There it is. Okay, and that's running through the new uh, the new server. Okay, so that is really, really, really high quality code. Um, that is now basically the, the best code that we've ever written. Um, and how the fuck am I going to zip this? How am I going to exfil this file? Briefcase it? Screenshot the VOD. Sometimes it blows my mind how useless chat is. <laughs> D colon. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, shit, how do we do this? Fucking piece of... Ah! How is Clippy failing when we don't have main documented? Because it's not pub? If this is pub? What? Oh, is it just because it's main? If I said floop... Does this have to be documented? Is it? Yeah, it's a special case for main. Okay, interesting. Interesting. That's good because uh, otherwise I just put the slash 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 uh, main entry point of program and it's uh, worth worthless. Okay, so now and then NCW that fails pretty fast. That's nice. Okay. Uh, use SMV version one. Trust me, no Trojan friends are inside that protocol. What? What? What do you what do you what do you mean? Okay, so uh Kimu Kimu mount. Uh okay, so then we'll go to uh MIPS test. Uh make der Kimu CD Kimu copy dot dot slash dot dot slash uh Kimu uh NT Kimu and then run to here Vim run uh, ISO is this, okay. Um, okay, so I'm just, I'm just having this in here so you can see exactly what the environment is. Uh, NT4, QCOW2. I'm gonna copy NT Mipsel. Okay, Mipsel BIOS. NVRAM will get created by Kimu. 
Um, okay, so now there's a run.sh in here. Get status. Get add, uh, get add Kimu. Get status. Okay, so now all of those things are in here. So everything you need to basically replicate my exact environment uh, is in here, except for the ISOs. Just go find those on the internet. Um, and this will allow people to kind of play along and try these things out. Obviously, you have to you have to make a hard drive, but that's that's easy. You should know how to do that. Um, okay, so now uh, what I'm gonna do is is the replay. It's not public yet. <laughs> uh, NT Kimu, Kimu. Can we get some? Can we get some Kimus in chat? Some Kim Kimus. Um. Mm, it's probably like a P. I'm guessing like a P five. Yeah, I'm brilliant. Okay, uh, copy from Mount Mount to Kimu. <laughs> you fucking degenerates. Shell code client to here. Get status. CD shell code client. Make clean. Mm, okay. Um, arm null. Um, client and server, uh, make file, uh, make file should also rmdir, uh, client.exe, server.exe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, ls slasher, just make sure, uh, shishmod, uh, make file and sources star.c, ls slasher, okay, that's looking a lot better. Those look like fixed up things. Everything's good. Everything's copied. Get status. Get add. Shellcode client. Get status. Get commit. And added Kimu instructions and shellcode uh, clients. Get status. Okay, that's looking really good now. Now then, the final thing that we need is, uh, I guess... Um, uh, um, so the make file here will ship it out. So that will build it and then ship it. Clippy will check. Object dump will do object dump things. Um, and then we want to, uh, uh, bup, 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 bup. We also need the self serve. Uh, CD self serve, L slash, armor of git, git ignore, uh, git just git, um, uh, cargo clean, LSL, then source. It's just a literally a self server. Uh, git status. Uh, get add felf serve, get status, get commit m added felf serve, get status. Okay, I think we're there. I think I think we're there. Uh, new uh new repo. This is gonna be called uh uh Rust MIPS NT4. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, MIPS 60, uh, MIPS, uh, Rust Development Environment for MIPS on NT4. Okay. Uh, boop, beep. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, readme.md. Okay, uh, summary. 
Uh, this is a project which allows us to run uh, Rust sh uh, shell code in a uh, MIPS environment. Uh, environment uh, on NT 4.0. Um, uh, Toolchain. Uh, to use this, you need to uh, copy copy the shell code uh, client uh, into uh, into a MIPS guest and run it, um, and build and run server uh, included uh, without any backdoors. Kappa one two three. Um, yeah, we're just going to include that because that might be kind of annoying for people to build. So we're going to take the, uh, star.exe and put them in shellcode clients. LSL, uh, get status, get add shellcode clients, star.exe and read me, get status. Okay. Um, the server binds to 0000. zero, zero, zero 42069 and waits for a connection, a TCP connection. Um, upon a TCP connection, the server inside the guest will launch client.exe in the same directory, um, which will then connect to the host via uh, 127.192.168.1.2. Uh, 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 is it 1.2? Yeah, but 1.2, uh, which will connect to the host via that colon. Uh, one, two, three, four. Um, uh, to download the payload. Uh, we'll launch client.exe in the same directory in a new process. Set text width is 79. Okay. Um... Okay, to download the payload, uh, the reason we have uh, clients.exe in a sep separate process is so that we can crash it without uh, problems uh, on the server. This provides a seamless debugging, uh, a seamless development experience when you use something like cargo, watch, make, which will uh, automatically use NC to tickle the uh, server, causing the client to connect uh, to the hosted uh, felf serve, which then causes the uh, 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 payload to execute in the guest. Um, the comms from the guest are sent um, to the felf, serve over the socket that was used to download the shell code. Um, felf serve. Uh, felf serve is a server for uh, felf files. You can find the felf uh, converter at um at here um how do you do this like here like that um you can find a filth converter at this i can't remember if you need parens or anything or whatever just yeah for, i forget uh you can find the filth converter at this uh you need to install this to your path um cat make file as the make file invokes uh, elf loader uh, to to convert the mips uh, elf into a mips shellcode in the felf file format. Uh, felf serve um, uh, simply takes in uh, how do we invoke this felf. Felf serve simply uh, runs like uh, felf serve 0001234 uh, out dot felf. It, um, it will listen to connections 
um, on a one, two, three, four. It'll listen to connections on the uh, uh, IP and port you specified, and when connected to, will serve up a uh, serve up the specified uh, felf um, specified felf um, uh, over a very basic protocol. This is what the uh, clients.exe in the guest communicates communicates with to download the uh, Rust shellcode. Okay, I think, uh, does that explain the whole process? I think it does. Git status, git commits, and info, git push. <sighs> okay, that, um, uh, 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 uh. Mm, git commit am uh, link, git push. Yeah, we'll just try it and prod. Yep, it's it's not that. I think it's this way. <laughs> I think it's then this way. <sighs> yes, it is, and the syntax highlighting makes that pretty fucking obvious. Uh, link, push. There we go. Thanks, chat. You fucked up. Uh, there you go. You just committed the exes. Yeah, that was the plan. That was the plan, because they're a pain in the ass to build. <laughs> You'll have to literally install Visual Studio and then, like, import that shit and then, like, fucking build them. Now you'll need to set up 192.168.1.2, but, uh, go fuck yourself. Um, okay. Have you ever had to fight some crazy lifetime stuff in Rust? Nah. Nah. Rust lifetimes are easy. Uh, sudo umount mount mount 2, sudo... Humu NBD disconnect dev NBD zero. Okay, I think I think that did it. Yeah, yeah. Felf serve great success. Okay, okay. There we go. Um, there we go. So now we have a, a Rust uh, development environment. Lifetimes in Rust are easy. Maybe after being two years younger than Composa, understanding shit of them. Yeah, they're not actually that easy. I'm just trying to flex. I'm trying to dab on the haters. Um, okay. Chat, raise your hand. Raise your hand. He doesn't see it? What? 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 Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um all right. Do I have good dates? I think I do. Yeah, I've got good dates. Sweet. Uh clear. Okay. Uh let's go. Uh felf serve. Uh, okay, and let's do, uh, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Uh, uh, TLDR. Uh, install, uh, NT 4.0 MIPS in Kimu using the command you see in, uh, Kimu run.sh. Uh, change the ISO path or remove it as needed. Um, you'll have to configure some, uh, bootloader stuff in ARC, uh, IDK, read a guide. Okay, let's go read a guide quick. Uh, ARC, MIPS, Kimu. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. TLDR. Mm, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, uh, run.sh. Okay. 
Uh, okay, and then um, go through a uh, setup menu. Let's go find out what that setup menu looks like. What's that, Wes? Uh, this, okay. Okay, uh, run setup. Uh, run setup, initialize uh, system. Um, set default configuration. Uh, 1024 by 768. Actually, we're using 1280. Uh, choose your res. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, floppy 3.5. Um, uh, second floppy no. Scuzzy host ID seven. Okay, any key that'll reset it. Default environments. Uh, that shit doesn't matter. Environment variables. Uh, Ethernet address. Uh, um, set Ethernet address. Um, to get access to CD colon slash. Uh, syntax. Okay, blah blah blah. Um, no, okay, and then set Ethernet address, so that is run setup, initialize system, um, okay, uh, set Ethernet address, uh, pick an address, uh, must be, must be, uh, a unicast MAC address or Windows gets mad. Okay, um, I used, uh, I used, uh, this one. BE2D0834563, uh, with great success. Okay, uh, is there anything else we had to do? Great success. Okay, uh, now you can uh, uh, reboot. Okay, now you can reboot. And then um, uh, create the boot partition. Um, uh, blah, 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 to get access to this. Bop, 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 bop. Bop, bop, bop. Bop, bop, bop. Now you can create the boot partition. Uh, let's do this because this is a uh, this is boot partition. Okay, this is uh, set up system so you can access CD. Um, set up Ethernet address so networking works in Windows. Uh, create uh, create. Disk and uh, run system. Um, boot partition. Uh, you must configure a small boot partition for the bootloader. Uh, uh, go to run program and then run this. Uh, a five megabyte partition will do. Okay, and then this is install Windows, blah, 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 setup loader. Okay, uh, you should be good now. Um, okay, and then, and then we can, and then we can say this, uh, configure time. Um, yeah, fuck it. Uh, configure her time. Uh, the time in Windows doesn't persist. Uh, set it inside Windows to something reasonable. Otherwise, you'll get weird errors, and a cl.exe will not work, so you won't be able to compile anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good. TLDR, do that. Um, we're gonna say, uh, 
set up in T. Blop, 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 blop. Okay, and then uh, now you can use the tool uh, deploy um, uh, server.exe and client.exe to the system. Then um, run server.exe inside uh, Kimu. Then, um, then, uh, um, uh, fell serve. Okay, uh, uh, install fell serve. To your path, uh, cd felf serve and cargo install path dot. Okay, um, run felf serve, uh, supplies code to guest over network and, uh, standard out prints from, uh, Rust running in guest. Okay, um, so that. Okay, and then this, is, and then uh, once we do that, then we uh, uh, run make or uh, to build and deploy, deploy um, to sir uh, to, to 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 MIPS. Um, optionally, run this cargo watch make. Uh, to get your code to redeploy and run every time you change uh, the Rust project. Okay, get status, get add read, uh, get commit, am updated readme, and get push. Okay, how's that? How does that read, chat? Anything that uh, is confusing there? Run setup. Get on program, blah, 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 install Windows, that, configure time, use the tool, deploy server and client to the system, run server inside Kimu, install FelfServe to your path, um, run FelfServe, okay, uh, pop, okay, and then run server inside Kimu, install FelfServe to your path, uh, run FelfServe supplies uh, code to guess over the network and standard printouts. FelfServe that. Run make and deploy to MIPS. Okay, let's double check that. So uh, let's make sure everything works. So we're going to boot Windows. Everything's fine. People should be able to figure out how to install Windows. Did you want to do the MoveZ thingy? Uh, no, we didn't actually have to do that because we picked a we picked a processor that supported MoveZ. We picked a MIPS4 processor, um, and it's fine because Windows NT is compatible with that, and we're good. So then we go into shell code. We run server.exe. So we're just running that. Okay. Now we're going to run FelfServe, as as mentioned, and then we're going to run Cargo Watch Make. As mentioned, and it's working. It's literally just working out of the box. So those are all of the things that we actually need running on the system, and everything should be good. Okay. 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 So other people should be able to reproduce this now. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, all right. Sweet. So. This was a moment. Yeah. There you go. Now we can start playing the game. Um, so uh, we can close that. Uh, let's just close everything. So this is our main program. Pretty good. Pretty good looking thing. Just just works. Um, okay. Uh, who wants a shout out? Who wants a shout out? Raise your hand if you want a shout out. Let's see who's going to be first. Who's going to be first? Who's going to be first? Uh, Manatee Appreciator. Okay, there we go. There you go. Hello world. Manatee appreciator. There you go. On MIPS right there. Is it not possible to use the host local time by setting some option in Kimu to avoid the issue in Windows NT? Yeah, you could configure like NTP and it'd be fine. But uh, NTP on Windows is like pretty spotty, honestly. 
Okay. 172 bytes. Why is it 172 bytes? That's so big. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess exit and syscall and that and jump in link to MIP syscall 2. Hmm. Why is that so big? Manatee, appreciate it. Thank you so much for the sub. Hell yeah. So all of this is the header. Uh, we've got some like data e stuff in here. We could probably minimize it. We don't really give a shit how big this is. Um, Felf serve. I just don't know why that's so massive already. 172 bytes. What? What would be in there? Okay. Target release, uh, target, MIPS release, MIPS test. Um, oh, I, I want to document something quick. Uh, okay, um, these wrappers use Rust naked functions. And the fact that the uh, Rust uh, and the O32 uh, Rust emit C ABI matches the uh, Windows kernel ABI. Um, this allows us to simply move the move the last parameter into um, last parameter syscall number in our Rust bindings into the correct. Uh, syscall ID register, uh, which is VZ. Um, and pass through all existing, uh, pass through all existing parameters. Uh, this decreases the, uh, amount of, of overhead and means we don't have to worry about things like register homing and stack alignments as those are handled for us. Um, uh, set text width to 79. Um, it also may be a bit confusing why we don't uh, ret from the uh, syscall. This is because uh, syscall uh, MIPS actually returns to the user provided LR, meaning the, um, meaning the, uh, is that tr fucking true? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not, what is it gonna do? Return to some fucked area? So it's not really a big deal. Uh, user provided LR, meaning the LR is set from the call to the naked function, thus the syscall directly returns back to the caller of the syscall uh syscall star wrapper function rather than to the instruction following the syscall okay i think that's some good clarification you understand like how this shit works thank you so much h3 ssto for the tier one submarino hell yeah um Okay, uh, and then we'll do, uh, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. necesito, uh, add our el commando para, uh, add command, uh, uh, para, uh, MIPS NT, uh, está bien, uh, porque, uh, uh, todos los, uh, viewers necess necesitas uh, necesita un way para uh, 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 fuck. read I know read I should know read um uh correr para correr uh <laughs> si <laughs> <laughs> ah, layer, 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 layer is is to 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 view to 
para correrse, uh, leer. Correr is run. Yeah, correr is run. Yeah, yeah. Para run. Read is leer. That, yeah, there we go. Woof! <laughs> Está bien! <laughs> Yeah, because it's been a it's been a hot minute. If it's if it's not obvious, it's been a hot minute. Uh okay. So now what we can do is some fun stuff. Chat, raise your hand if you're ready for fun stuff. Syscall, syscall.rs. Generic syscalls for Windows. Uh everything in here should be architecture agnostic. Okay. Career say is to touch yourself. Eh, stop being. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, exit. Uh, terminate process un, uh, unreachable unchecked. Okay. Um, muy bien. Muy bien. Okay, so we have this empty status. Empty status. This returns the number of bytes written. We could make a wrapper around that. Uh, but first, here's what we're gonna do, chat. You ready? You ready t to go from zero to hero really, really, really fucking fast? The answer is yes. Chat, you're supposed to say, Yes, I would love to do that. That sounds fantastic. Uh, okay. Uh... Hmm, <laughs> we don't want MIPS test. We want kernel32.bindb? Or do we want ntdll.bindb? Okay, uh, let's go and we want ntallocate virtual memory. And this is... Yeah, even these ones don't have rets, right? It's not just us, chat. A. 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 Carrer say your ding dong. <laughs> Sick. I don't know why that's funny. That shouldn't be funny. That's terrible. <laughs> uh, NT allocate virtual memory. This is uh, this is M map. Um, this is M map. And the way that we write mmap is we have an A. Okay, and then we and then we go down here. Uh, uh, yep, because that's OS specific. And then we'll go down here and we'll do uh, allocate virtual memory pub fn mmap. Uh, process handle. Uh, yeah, in the current process. Okay, um, so we have an address, uh, U-size. We have uh, b b zero bits. Number of high order address bits that must be zero in the base address of section view, used only when the operating system determines where to allocate the region, as when base address is null. Note that zero bits is larger, uh, when zero bits is larger than 32, it becomes a bit mask. Number of higher bits that must be zero, it doesn't matter. Uh, size, and U8. I think this should be sufficient. Um, yeah, this should be fine. Um, uh, unsafe. Okay, and now we're gonna do uh, status is anti status, blah, 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 blah. Uh, anti this, 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 uh, result, 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 uh, result, this, and good, and good, and good, uh, let's just, let's just start with this, let's, let's not get too crazy here, let's just do, uh, syscall six, okay, okay, bink, 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 bink. Uh, okay, bink, 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 bink. Process handle, uh, not zero. Okay, done. 
base address. Uh, let's mute address. And then this will be uh, adder of uh, mute adder uh, as you size. Okay. This is the zero bits. Doesn't matter. We don't care about the number of zero bits. This is the region size. Um, does that have to be aligned in bytes? It is rounded up to the next host page size boundary. Cannot be zero on input. That's fine. That will just return an error. Uh, allocation type. Uh, we want uh, commit reserve. Um, we want commit or reserve. Okay. And then down here, we want the page read write. Uh huh. Honestly, not too bad. Not too bad. And then this is the syscall ID. Uh, and this is syscall uh, allocate virtual memory. Okay, we're pretty close. Uh, let status is equal to NT status of this as you size blah. Okay, print uh, status. Kind of amazed that there isn't a reversing tool made by Gamozo and Rust. You could call it Claff. Sick, sick. Okay, um, print uh, if let error error is equal to status. No. If la da 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 return allocation. Otherwise return status. And it's not ISB in this case. This is actually going to be adder at this point. So this will be adder. Adder. If it's success, then we have adder as mute U8. Okay. Adder of mute. All right. There we go. Bink. Wow. This is going to be good, chat. This is going to be good. Oh, this is an in out. Uh, that's a P size T. Adder of mute size. Uh, okay. So that's mute size. Bam. And I bet if that's not mutable, that's going to fail. Um... Or does this not care? Okay, it doesn't seem to care. So we're going to make sure that both of those are marked mutable. So we have a, an address and a size. Okay, adder of mute as you size. Adder of mute size as you size. Okay, so those are the in and outs. Those are ins. That's an in. That's an in. That's an in. And then we just need these flags. Oh, me pizzora. Yeah, it's not British. This is Italian for some reason. Meepazor wants a, a British accent. Okay, so we're gonna go and uh, we're gonna go explore inside of here. We're gonna go for a small little exploration. We're gonna go uh, start CMD. CMD is gonna tell us exactly what we want to do here. So we're gonna go into, um, let's check out uh, Hello World because that's, uh, we should just be able to open this. Hello World.c. And uh, we should have a uh, make file. Uh, we do have a make file here, but it's fucking useless. So uh, we'll include windows.h. Once we got windows.h in here, uh, we should be able to go down and uh, print out some of these constants. So we're going to do a printf, percent %d, and a percent %d. Actually, we'll do hex. Uh, another one, uh, mem, commit, mem, reserve. And uh, page read write. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Now we're going to here. CL hello world dot C. Uh, oh, got to set the time. Got to go and set the time, chat. <laughs> Whoops, we fucked that one up, didn't we? Ah, oh, classic Windows. Oh, time's too far off. Okay, bottle of water. <laughs> Hello, world.exe. Okay, we got a 1000 hex. 
we've got a 2000 hex. So that's commit, reserve, and then page read write. Okay, so let's go establish these constants. Um, yeah, let's go say const mem commit is a uh, u32. I will say, yeah, we'll say it's a u32. 1000. 2000. <laughs> a minute is over. <laughs> I get fucked. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what people wanted. That's what people wanted. That's what the people wanted. Const page read write u32 is uh, it was f f it was four. Is it four? Mm, thousand two thousand and four. Okay. So uh, commit memory. Uh, reserve memory range, uh, readable and writable memory. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah, shit. This bread spent too much time in the Irish pub. Mozak, like, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Ah, shit. <laughs> uh, mismatch types. You know what? I'm just going to keep trying variables until it works. Okay. So this should, this should invoke this. This should invoke this. <laughs> yeah, yikes, yikes. Man, that's what keyboard to use. It's a uh, DOS keyboard. It's a uh, Cherry MX Blues. Blues Clues. Sys call MMAP 0 1024. Is this gonna work, chat? Is this gonna work? Can you debug print pointers? <gasps> <laughs> oh, we can even <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Chad, it's about to get fucking crazy. Oh, we're about to do some crazy things here. Oh, welcome to the, welcome to the Mega Dome. Today, we're going to be adding some, we're going to be adding some ability to do some allocations to our system. And yeah, that was fucking first try, wasn't it? Come on, brother. We're going to go in here. We got monster trucks. We've got allocators. We've got everything that you could possibly want. We're going to do a little extern crate alloc, and that's going to pull in an allocator. Then we're going to have to implement and allocator here, and that's not, that's not gonna work out of the box. We can do a default error handler. We'll just get one of those going right now. If you call now, you'll be able to get all these features and all your code anytime you need. I'm Doug Dimmodome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmodome. <laughs> ha! Woo! Woo! Okay, uh, memory. Uh, manager, okay, the global allocator, uh, uh, static, uh, global allocator, allocator is a global allocator, uh, which is a global allocator. Yeah, this is a global allocator. Okay, and then we're going to say global allocator. Uh, we're just going to say struct. Uh, uh, all right implementation of the global allocator okay uh global allocator um the object okay and then we'll impl okay that's like probably close um mod and man first time i've been here and i i'd like what you did <laughs> oh yeah i still have it base boosted sorry sorry for the base that voice acting was good. I think he's still high on those Krispy Kremes. Honestly, it took two days to come down from the Krispy Kremes. It's pretty fucking bad. Uh, okay, so impl, 
Impel global alloc for a global allocator. Okay, and then we'll do FN alloc. Ah, this takes a layout, which is a layout. This yields a mute U8. Uh, standard point, uh, core pointer null mute. Core pointer null mute, and then uh, this will take a. This is a D alloc. Uh, adder mute U8, something like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, and that. Mm hmm. Okay, and then we'll do uh, use alloc, alloc uh, layout, and global alloc. Okay, so there we have, we have those traits. Uh, it requires an unsafe impl. And we're probably pretty much there. Uh, both these take selfs. Okay, they both take a self. And then uh, unsafe fn. Okay. All right, so then we should be able to do uh, syscall mmap. Uh, zero layout dot size dot unwrap or core pointer null mute. Okay, so that's going to attempt to do the uh, allocation, and if it fails, it will be null mute. And then dalloc will just not do anything for that. Okay, here we go. Uh, syscall. This is going to be create syscall mmap. All right, and then uh, I don't care about the address here, and we don't care about the layout here. Bam! All right, so now what we should be able to do is, uh, hmm. Can I macro use on a crate? No. Um, how do how do I get uh, let foo is vec ou 832 How do I how do I get this? How do I get this? Oh, I can macro use on that. Oh, okay. So that's what you're supposed to do. Um, do I have string new? Um, I don't have string. Okay, what's the um? Is there not a prelude for Alec? I think I looked at this yesterday, and I surprisingly didn't see a prelude for Alec. How to make your program fast? Don't ever call free. Yeah. Alec prelude. Uh, okay. Um, um, put this down here. And, uh, feature Alec prelude. Okay. Is this going to work? No. No. Is this not a thing? Um. Hmm. Alec Prelude. Let's see the current status on this. Uh, tracking issue. Oh my god, did this seriously remove to announce? Closed. Oh, remove Alec Prelude. Fuck. Um. So it looks like that's gone. They actually removed that like a couple days ago. Uh, Prelude module and Alec is auto imported. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, maybe we can't do that. Macro use, um, unused, do I just do this, allow, and then get rid of prelude, okay, uh, let foo equals format ASDF, right, so now I can print foo, and now I have an allocator. <laughs> Woo! Look at that shit. Let me foop is equal to vec oh, u 81024. Uh, we can allocate a meg. You want a meg? You wanna you wanna see what a meg looks like, chat? 
That, that's what a meg looks like. Foop. Right there. Uh, pointer. Uh, dot as pointer. There you go. That's what, uh, there you go. Now we have an allocator. Uh, and further, we could go and, uh, we could go and do some of this. You want to, like, see what's in that memory chat? Might take a while to print a meg. Uh, uh that might have been a mistake. Um, okay. So now we have an allocator and we can do whatever we want. So now we can go and implement NT free virtual memory. Um, okay. M map. Chat, you made me do this. You made me do this, chat. Uh, NT free virtual memory. Uh, ZW. Okay. Uh, 3A free virtual memory. OX 3A. Uh, NT free virtual memory. Pretty straightforward there. Oh, no! No! I keep rerunning it. What has that done to my VM? Oh boy. Mm, yep. Okay. Control C. Control C. Control C. Okay. Technically, we don't really need these things open right now. Uh, Control Alt G. Release grab. There we go. Close this. Close. 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 Okay. We're running just the server. All right. Um. Okay. Now everything's fixed. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, create syscall free. Um, I think mmap can be safe, but munmap probably shouldn't be safe. Uh, we'll just say adder here. Um. Okay. So we have the address, we'll pass the address in, the layout, um, we don't care about the layout, and then free, this syscall will actually make unsafe, we'll make it so you can map things in, but we're not going to make it safe to unmap things, right, pub unsafe, uh, deallocate, memory in the current process, uh, address and size, I don't know if we're going to need size, base address, okay, uh, basically the same thing as this. Okay. I mean, we're not really, uh, eh, we can return the code. We will. Um, okay. Bop, 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 bop. Uh, this is a result. Blah, blah, blah. And if success return, uh, return. If success, uh. Return error on error. Okay, if it's successful, then it's okay. Otherwise, that okay. NT status, and this one's this is a four. This is a four banger. We got a process handle. That's that. We got a base address and a region size. We don't have zero bits. Both of those are read writable, and then we have a free type. Um, and the free type is a decommit and release. Um, and uh, this is free virtual memory. Okay, so now what we need to do is region size. Um, pointer to a variable that will receive the actual size in bytes of the freed region of pages. Uh, the routine rounds the initial value up uh, to the next host page size. Blah blah blah. If the release flag in free type is set, region deref region size must be zero. So since we are doing a release. This actually has to be zero, and that's what I remember. Let mute um, size is equal to OU size, um, uh, region size, right? So that region size will be zero. It'll be a pointer to zero. It'll get filled in with the actual thing, but when you call release, you have to have that be zero. Uh, free virtual memory frees the entire region that was reserved in the initial allocation call. If the decommit flag is set in free type, 
Uh, it decommits all memory pages that contain one or more bytes in the range, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, decommits the entire thing. Uh, it decommits the entire region if the following conditions are met. Decommit is set. It is. Base address is the base address returned when it was given, and region size is zero. So this should be good. Right? This should be A-OK. -okay. All right, so mem decommit and mem release. We got to go grab those as well now. Uh, CMD, CD, HW, uh, hello world dot, a, uh, dot C. Okay, and then mem decommit and mem, uh, mem release. Mm hmm. CL hello world dot C. Okay, uh, 4,000 and 8,000. Uh, NT is such a beautiful OS. Yes, it is. It really is. I love it. Uh, 4,000 and 8,000. Um, so this is decommit. Let's make sure I have the ordering right. Uh, decommit and release. Release memory range. Uh, decommit memory. Release and decommit. Okay, free. Uh, yep, it's not called free. I called uh, monmap. And then that one is actually unsafe, and that makes sense. Um, sweet. Consider a semi. Here. Uh, expect failed to deallocate memory. Do I care? Do I really care? No, I don't care. Uh, I'll just let that shit leak. Let blah is equal to this. Okay, and then this is as you size. All right. This could actually, in this case, take a mute. Uh, U8. Ah, eh, I'm fine with the U size. I actually like U sizes for uh, addresses here. Um, unnecessary unsafe block. Uh, okay, where? Um, oh, here. Yeah, that's fair. Um, NT status is called four, which means this we can go. Boop. Okay, and then uh, this. That looks great. Okay, and this is uh, perform syscall. I'm going to add this to all these because I don't like the comments that I have right now. Perform syscall and perform syscall. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so what we should be able to do is we should be able to go to dialloc. We should comment this out, and um, we can we should be able to just do this. Uh, loop. Uh, loop. Let blah is vec ou 1024 by 1024. This should eventually fail and crash. Um. Oh. I see. Um, I see. Okay, so, ah, there we go. Yeah, allocation failed. Sweet. So then, if we put this in, we hopefully can now run this program, and allocations won't fail. This should just churn forever, and we shouldn't really be increasing our commit size. Um, JK lol. Um... Um, decommit and release. What is, what's going on there? Why is that growing? Why is that growing? What? Why? Hello? Failed. NT status that. Okay. Um. Uh, Python. Hex. This, this, this. COF2. CONT status codes. Let's go figure out what we're doing wrong here. You don't have to decommit in two different swoops, do you? F2. Invalid parameter 4. The fourth parameter was invalid. Okay, first of all, who the fuck uses invalid parameter 4? Nowadays, they just use invalid parameter. That's really interesting. Invalid parameter 4. Um, K 
can you not do both? Four thousand and eight thousand. Four thousand and eight thousand. Do you have to decommit and then release? I swore you could do both, but maybe not back then. Can you not do that back then in the thing? Probably only need the release. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll release it. The pages enter the free state. Uh, region size must be zero. Base address must point to that. If they're if they're committed, it decommits and then releases them. Okay. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. All right. Um. So that means we can get rid of uh decommit. Um. All right. So then these, we can kill these processes. And yeah, uh, we have 100% CPU usage when we do this, when we build this. That ships it off, and it's allocating. It's allocating over and over and over again, but it's not actually uh, using more memory, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we want. Uh, select columns. Let's get uh, memory usage. Um, virtual memory size, here we go. So we have the, um, is Mike and Cam desynced? I, I don't know, probably. Test. It's, it's hard for me to say. It's hard for me to say. <laughs> I don't know. Is it? Refresh, I think we had a small F. Okay. All right. It's desynced. Like one second. Yeah, I'm seeing that right now too. I don't know why that's so far behind. It's not, it's not when the program is running, is it? Test. Hmm, that's really weird. Test. 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 Yeah, it's still it's still off. Move. Yeah. What the fuck? What? How? 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 It. Most likely OBS is drunk. Yeah. Um, um, test. Nope. Test. Nope. Test. What the fuck? Where did it all go? It, it was fine. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. That's really strange. Um, that doesn't make sense, unfortunately, chat. Well, you're just going to have to deal with it for now, because I'm guessing it will fix itself when uh, when OBS restarts. <laughs> um, I could also check. Uh, I could do this. Check this out. Uh, uh, VLC dev video zero is it video zero is it not that um ff play dev video zero yeah it's fucking vlc or it's not vlc it's uh it's it's obs What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, let's see. Well, 
Well, that makes no fucking sense. You can force kill OBS and restart it without streaming going down? Really? Sounds risky. Old busted software. Huh. Now move this window in front of the cam. Hmm. That's really fucking weird. That's so fucking strange. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to change the resolution of it, and then I'm going to change the resolution again. Test. Test. Did that do it? Test. Yep. There we go. Just change the resolution. There you go. <laughs> that caused some Alex and Freeze in, in, the, right, in the right way. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at our, uh, our process. Um, are we not running it? Did we, did we close it? I think we closed it. Okay, let's, uh, let's control W or, or build. Okay, we built. Okay, that allocated. We've got 100% CPU usage here. Uh, memory usage, 1404. Oh, that's climbing. Oh, it's not. Okay, it's, it's pulsing. Nice. Okay, that looks good. It looks like that is correctly staying in bounds. It's not growing. Um, that's exactly what I want to see. So that is how we know that uh, that's working great. All right. All right. Nice. 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 Okay, so that means... Um... Yeah, so base address, region size, don't care about anything. If it was successful, uh, mun map, we do an unwrap. Uh, here we'll say expect uh, failed to deallocate memory. And fuck it, we can leave that panic in there. I'm, 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 not, I'm not a scaredy cat. I'm not a scaredy cat. So now this is failable because Alec, I think global Alec. Uh... Yeah, global Alec can return null and that's fine. Because we saw it fail, and when it did fail, uh, we got the panic. We got, like, an actual panic. Um, then D alloc, we actually make sure that that succeeds. So if we take this and we add one, this will probably fail. Yeah, that failed. Fantastic. Uh, okay. Nice. Nice. Okay, so now we can allocate things. Uh, all right, so this is beautiful. All right, let's see what Clippy has to say. Oh, we're nailing it. Uh, make Clippy. Oh, make Clippy. Oh, wow, even that. Holy shit. I can't believe it. Okay, uh, let format is equal to format moose this uh vecky dot as pointer okay mm, vecky okay uh p and then we print line this format okay so now that is uh there we go moose cb nice oh nice no slr yeah definitely not okay um git commit am Added allocation support. Get push. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so... Oh, we can do so many fucking things now, chat. Oh my god, we can do vex. We can, we can do literally anything in alloc, which is so much stuff. There's so much stuff in alloc. Like... Oh my god, look at, look at this shit, chat. Look at this. Look at all the things that we can do here. Um, I hate how the theme doesn't really do anything in Rust. In, 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 like, local documents, it just doesn't fucking work for some reason. You, like, every time you click on something, it, like, goes back. I, I don't, I don't know. Enjoy your eyes getting bleached. Um, so here's all the things that we can do. So format and vec, obviously, those are the macros. We can do, uh, these are the alloc, uh, alloc stuff. Borrow, so we have cow. We have access to cow now. We have access to boxes. Um, I just get fucked. Yeah, let me just put everything in light mode so it just stays uh we have collections so we have binary heaps we have b tree maps we have b tree sets we have linked lists we have vectex 
Uh, we have uh, format stuff, so extended formatting stuff that uh, we get here that requires allocations. Um, we have RCs, so we have ref cells now and weak, of course. We have um, uh, what are these? Slice. Are these extensions to slice chunks? Does chunks require allocation? I don't think so. What? Um, functions from mute from raw parts. I don't quite understand what slice is extending, what it, it, it's extending it by. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. Uh, sync, we got arc, of course. So now we have arc, uh, task, uh, wake, and vec. It's just Vec. Okay. So now we can do whatever the fuck we want. Now we, now we can do like... Ugh, isn't this so fucking cool? Check it. Check, check this out. Foop is equal to B tree map new. Uh, use alloc B tree map B tree map. Uh, foop dot insert five. And then we can do like an OU. Can I do a 128 bit integer? Um, collections. Do you think I can do 128-bit ints? Yes, I fucking can. Yeah, I get fucked. Uh, uh, foop. Okay. So, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Hundred twenty-eight bit integers. <laughs> Yeah, let's fucking go! Isn't that fucking cool? We have sets, we have nice prints, we have all this nice format stuff. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good, chat. Um... <laughs> do you have threads? Um... Yeah, I mean, I could do NT create thread. How hard is NT create thread? Um, honestly, threading will probably help with finding bugs. So I might actually want threading. Um, NT create thread. Um, let's see. Huh, is it not documented? Interesting. Interesting. Do you have to allocate a tab for it? Get context thread. Huh. Huh. Already I'm running into undocumented NT calls. Yeah. Um. All right. NT create thread. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, exactly. Yep. That's basically what we're gonna have to do. A thread handle. Uh, that gets one desired access. That would be like uh. Hmm. Hmm, object attributes, optional, so none. Uh, process handle, that's not zero. Client ID. Okay, uh, let's go and, let's try and bang this out quick. Um, unsafe, uh, b -b 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 syscall, uh, syscall, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight arguments. Syscall eight. Okay, uh, syscall. Uh, let's just implement it in here. Um, uh, okay, that's good. That's done. That's done. Uh, actually, we needed that file open. Uh, spawn a thread. Uh, pub fn spawn. Okay, and then we'll figure this out. Spawn uh, create thread. Nt create thread. Yep. Okay. SP source syscall mips. 
NT create thread is 24. Okay, create thread 24, NT create thread. Okay, that looks good. Um, so now all we have to do is actually make the syscall. Shouldn't be too terrible. Um, we have a thread handle. Uh, let me use handle is zero, U size. Uh, adder of mute handle as u size. Then we have desire to access, let's just say zero. Uh, attributes, let's just say zero. Process handle, not zero. Client ID, um, the fuck is that? The fucking client ID. Uh, I'm just going to assume it's that. <laughs> Adder of mutes, uh, client's ID as u size. Just say this is an OU size. Um, thread context, zero. Oh, whoa. Supplies the initial contents of the tab. Create suspended. Oh, boy. Those are really hard, I think. I think you have to actually... Oh, shit. Initial tab. Stack base, stack limit, commit, commit max, stack reserved. Hmm. Hmm. Um, thread context. P context is a bitch. P context is an absolute pain in the ass. Like, P context is gonna be brutal. Unfortunately. Um. Hmm. Grumble, 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 grumble. Uh, grumble, 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 grumble. Uh, I've done harder things in my life. So context, you're going to have to set. Uh, you're also going to have to set. Um, might be Windef. Might be WinBase, I'm not sure. Uh, it's probably like WinBase and WinDef. Oh no, these are all separate instances. Whoops. Uh... Oh, I pulled these down, didn't I? I pulled down the includes. Um, MIPS test, uh, NT, uh, MS Dev. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Um,. Okay, that's not terrible. Um, that's not really that bad, actually. Um, okay, so this is the initial context and initial tab. Do I have initial tab? Probably not. That's not the sort of thing that would be in here. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, context frame, several purposes, blah, blah, blah. Construct this. Call frame for exception. User level thread creation routines. Uh, pass thread state to debuggers. Because of this record, is used as a call frame. It must be exactly a multiple of 16 bytes in length. Two variations. Uh, this is the real one. Okay, that's great. Um, context full. So you can set these. So basically, you can... You can set like the specific control flags, but I think just one would probably be fine. Um, I don't know what context alpha is, but I could set that. Um, and then fill padding for 16 byte uh, stack frame alignment. Okay. Um, if it's used as an input parameter, then each portion of the context record controlled by a flag whose value is set, it is assumed that it is a valid context. Okay, let's fucking do this. Oh, and if it's being used to modify threads context, only that portion will be modified. If it's an in and out, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah
Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go, chat. Uh, let's just call. Okay, okay. This is the one, dude. This is the one. Everyone breathe in. Everyone breathe in. Everyone breathe in. Floats. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Good. Good job. Good job. Uh, we got 32 floats. These are Dwardlongs. What's a Dwardlong? D-Wordlong? Is that just a U-32? Yeah, that's a U-32 because... Oh, MIPS has the weirdest floating port architecture in the world. Um, oh my god. Yeah, MIPS, you you use floating point pairs when you want 64-bit. They're actually all 32-bit registers, and then you do pairs. Okay, um, then we have 32 of these. Uh, okay, then we have uh, FPCR. Uh, software extension to FPCR. Okay, and then we have the uh, FIR, uh, fault instruction continuation address. Uh, I should have got them apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur, processor status, uh, PSR U32. Okay, and then context uh, uh, flags. And then uh, fill U32 for four. Um, a filler to pad to 16 byte boundary. Um, and this is the context flags. Okay, uh, let's make sure everything adds up here. Uh, 32 plus 32 plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus four. Uh, that's 73. That doesn't make sense. 32 plus 32 is 64 plus one plus one. Plus one, plus one, plus one. That's 69. Nice. Uh, plus four. Plus four. Plus four. Hmm. That's not... Uh, floats. 32 floats. 32 ints. An FPCR, a software FPCR, a fur, a PSR, a context flag, and a fill. What is a Dwordlong? Is Dwordlong 64 bit? Do you think a Dwordlong is. Are those 64 bit? Uh, let's go find create thread. Um, let's take a look. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. CSR new thread. Uh, context, set thread context. Okay, uh, we're just gonna YOLO this. We're gonna assume that these are 64 bit. FPCR is a Druid long, soft FPCR is a Druid long, a fur is a Druid long, a PSR is not, context flags is not. Okay, so now we've got uh, 64 plus 64 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4 is 140. Uh, and is that evenly divisible by 4? Yes, it is. Okay, I think we did it. I think we did it. www.wedidit.com.co.uk. 
Uh, uh, this is the context structure. Okay. Woo! All right. Um, this looks good. This looks good. This looks good. This looks good. Dot com. Dot co. Dot uk. Dot nz. Dot mx. Dot. Dot whatever. Um. Okay. 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 Okay, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Uh, let mute context is context mm, default. Okay, um, consider importing this structure. Hmm. Uh, maybe if I made this pub, then we'd be fine. Last time I had to write uh long, short, long, long, long was for the gold source. Interesting. Yeah, Dword Long is just interesting because I've I've actually never seen Dword Long. I mean, I I know D word and Long and Long Long and all those sorts of things and how those are different, but uh, this one was uh, this one was a little bit of a bitch. Okay, so then we have NT create thread. So then we have a a thread context. Uh, so this is a address of context. As you size, that's probably an in only, and then an adder of uh, tab as you size, initial tab. Okay, and then uh, then we'll just we're just gonna debug this, and then uh, we'll call spawn, and then uh, we'll be good, and then we'll call let's just call spawn. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this is call. What's going on here? Uh, yeah, no. Uh, adder of. Yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Bam. Uh, teb. Not found in this scope. Okay. Uh, let mute teb is equal to o u eight. Uh, uh, that. 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 <laughs> oh my god. That's a that's a Q5 of null. Oh my god, is it just trusting an address I'm giving it? <laughs> wow. Wow! Well, that's a thing. <laughs> Remember when BSODs were useful? Yeah. Oh, we're getting check disked. <laughs> oh, we're gonna fucking destroy this VM. Five dollars that works on Windserver 2K3. Uh Okay, so I was I was about to make a joke and say, well, we can play around and like try things until it works. Uh but we might actually have to make sure we get this right a little bit better from the start, I guess. We might not just be able to do that. Uh adder of mute handle. Okay? 
Yeah, that's an output handle. That looks good. An access mask. All right, let's go take a look at an access mask. Um, process all access. That that's a good one. That's that's one of my favorite ones. Uh, let's set our date and time. Um. Okay, that's that might break it just as bad. Okay, uh, CM, CMD, uh, CD, hello world. Mm, der, hello world dot, hello world dot C. Okay, uh, let's see if we can just do a process all access. Actually, I don't think we need access to our own thing. Or not process all access, sorry, uh, thread all access. I don't think we need that. Um, hmm. Oh, fuck. I ran it. God damn it. Ah, son of a bitch. <sighs> fuck. <sighs> well, it repros. <laughs> <sighs> so it wasn't a fluke. Yeah, it's definitely not a fluke. I can, I can tell you from the feel of that bug, it's definitely not a fluke. It's just... Ah, uh, server. Brook the 190 proof. Everclear and cranberry juice? Every t oh my god. Every time we have to start NT. <laughs> Oof. Oh, I saved it, but luckily I closed the thing. Okay, address of handle. Yep. Thread all access. That shouldn't matter. Null. A process handle, which is our own. A client ID. The fuck is a client ID? Um... Returns the client ID of the new thread. Um, looks like it's a, a two handles, actually. Looks like it's like this, two. Looks like it's two handles, according to this. Uh, process and a thread handle. Yeah, yeah, I remember doing that. Yeah, I totally remember that. Client ID, yeah. Um, okay, so you have a client ID, then we have a, uh, then we have, um, a thread context, and I don't know if the tab matters. Initial tab, I think, is output. Maybe not. Hmm. Mmm, kind of scary, kind of scary. This one has Teb being uninitialized in one of these. Okay, so we can probably have Teb be uninitialized. Um, let's say OU64. Let's make sure that it's uh, 64 byte aligned or, or uh, yeah, OU64. Um, then, uh, we have a context, we have a teb, and then the context, let's actually set them some things in the context. So, let's set a stack. Um, context flags, we'll do context full, so let's go and figure out what that code is. Actually, we can probably just get that from over here. Uh, tag context full. Ooh, 32-bit context frame. Fuck. Oh no. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, mm. Hmm. 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 They can operate on the fields and valid declared as pointer. L let's see if this is defined. 
um portable 32-bit context let's uh, let's see what we got uh hello world.c uh percent d size of context Fuck you. Winnint dot h. Okay. Winnint. Oh, this is struct context. Yeah, I was about to say winnint shouldn't have to be included. Um. Yeah, that's pretty classic. That's just uh, just a bad date or time. It's pretty standard that that can happen. 568. Okay. Um, what is ours? What is ours? Uh, 32, 32, 32, 32, uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 8, 5, we have 560. And padding. I probably miscalc to padding. Um, ooh, that's, that's looking maybe juicy. Um, let's see. What's a telltale? What do we have for an oracle here? Um, honestly, if these exist. Uh... Struct context moose is zero, and then we're gonna printf moose dot whatever the fuck that was a uh, high float f zero. Okay, if this fucking builds, then we know. Hey, okay, and then further, uh, we can verify. Do we have another way? Uh, fill. Uh, we can also do size of fill, because fill is four on that one, and this one, it is two. So let's do one more. Oh, that's high fill. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's an oracle. Uh, another one. So, fill. Uh, size of moose.fill. Okay, so if this builds, we know that this exists. Okay, um, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Ooh. Is there a high fill? Is there a high fill? Did I typo the float and, and I... And this is gonna exist? No. No. What? What? But, but. <sighs> oh, how many fucking contexts are there? That's x86. This is. This is MIPS. What the fuck is this? Uh, fill three. Oh, that's x86. If not defined portable 32 bit context, I bet we have a portable 32 bit context. So it's going to be one of these next ones. It's this. It's going to be fucking this. Isn't it? 32-bit context is a union of a 32-bit and a 64-bit context. Hmm. Hmm. 
I told you this was gonna suck, chat. Fucking told you it was gonna suck. Um. Hmm. X int low. Let's see if this exists anywhere else in this file. No, X int low is an oracle. I think that's how you spell it. Oh, L O. It's that one. Mm. Oh, Mama Mia. Uh, always present and is used as an argument build area. Context records are zero mod eight aligned, starting in NT four point oh. Okay, so that is sixteen bytes. Weird. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, we got context. We got a 64 and a 32 bit context. So let's start with um, 64 bit, 31 floats, two fills. So uh, 32 uh, U64 floats, two fillers. Then we have an XFSR. which is the U32. Then we have an XFER, and we have an XPSR. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, XFSR, XFER, XPSR. Then we have an XContext flags. Okay, and then we have a... Uh, uh, integer registers, and we have 34 of them because the low and highs are included. Interesting. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that should be that structure. Um, 34 uh, U64s, D word longs. We have a context flag. We have XPSR. We have an XFER. We have an XFSR. And we have two fills, and that should be good. That is a uh, context 32. Now, uh, that's a context 64. Uh, floating point, yep, 32 of those. Okay, so now we have a context 32. Does Windows even have a public kernel debugger? Yes. It has forever, and it's better than any other kernel debugger for any other system in the world. It's unbelievably good. Uh, floating points, so these are 32 32s. Then we have 32 integer registers. Actually, that looks like 34 because we got low and high. Okay, then we have the FSR. We have the FSR, the FUR, the PSR, and the flags. FSR, FUR, PSR, and flags. Yep. And this is the 32-bit uh, context. So uh, this is the status register. Um, uh, what is fur again? I had names for these before. That were good. FSR, fur, and PSR. Uh, FSR, fur, and PSR. FSR, fur. I don't know what FSR is. Probably like fault status register. Fur. PSR, processor status. Okay. Um, this should be correct. FSR for um, these don't need to say X. That's just how they did it because they used anonymous uh, unions. Um, and then PSR, we can put here. 
Okay, so that's context 32, and then we can do uh, pubstruct context. And the whole context structure is a union of those two and a union of these. So we're going to do a union um, uh, pub union um, union uh, context align. And this is uh, argument uh, u32 for 4 and an alignment, which is a u64. Okay, so we should have a uh, align, context align. Okay, uh, cargo check. Um, that's pretty good. So we don't have defaults for those. That's okay. We'll just go and rip those out for a second. Uh, and we'll temporarily comment out all of this. And then we're making progress. Slowly but surely. Cargo check. Okay, that looks good. All right, those are passing. So this is uh, alignment structure. Um, alignment structure for uh, context. Uh, context. Okay, this is uh, argument. Uh, alignment. Okay, so U32 for four, and then we have a U64, and then we have another un uh, union, and the union's gonna be a pub union context bits. Uh, union of different uh, bitness uh, contexts. Okay, and this is gonna be a uh, bits32 context. 32 and bit 64 context 64 uh, 64 bit context and this is a 32 bit context Have you ever worked as a sysadmin? Nope. Um, and then we have the context and this is context bits uh, context Contexts, okay, and this is a uh, architecture or bitness Agnostic uh, context Okay, uh, untagged unions. Unions with non-copy fields other than manually drop are unstable. Okay, uh, derive clone and copy on this then. If you're going to be a bitch, then fuck you. All right, adder of. Good, good. Okay, so let's print the size of that quickly. Um, print this uh, core... Mem size of struct uh, size of uh, context and that context is going to be syscall mips context. Okay, uh, felf serve and then we can do this. Okay, five sixty eight. Is that what we had? I think it is. I think it is. Yeah, there's just no way that I got that wrong first try because I'm perfect. Um, and that's good. Oops, fuck my ass. Fuck. 568, here we go. Bam, there it is. Yay, we got it. Yay, what are the odds? So easy. Haha. <laughs> XD lol. Haha. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what the FSR is. We'll fill in these flags and stuff once uh, once we get this working. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to actually invoke this um and what we want to do is start off with this and then we'll say that this is a context and this is going to be a core mem zeroed uh just because we're lazy and we'll fix this later but we don't want to implement stuff on things that we know are not going to work and then we're gonna have to fix them anyways It's okay, the, the mouse is fucked or something. I, I don't know. The, the mouse is fucked, uh, so that, uh, so I didn't, um, uh, cause the, uh, uh, the your liver. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, shit. 
Um, what do we need? We need to like context all. Context full. Ah, honestly, just like one, two, four probably looks good enough to me. I don't know. Uh, context full. So we'll do context dot context thirty two. I mean, we have no idea if it's thirty two or sixty four to be honest. Uh, actually, context dot context dot bits thirty two. This is unsafe. Um, is equal to five. Uh, uh, bits, 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 32 dot flags is equal to, uh, context control, which is alpha that or one or two or four. Okay. So that is, uh, that's technically the flags. So then we'll say, uh, context dot context dot bits, 32 dot uh, uh, um, um, mm, uh, alignment argument, 32 bit context int. We have an RA FSR. Contains the flag. Uh, okay. The registers GP, SP, and RA are defined in the integer section, but are considered part of the control context rather than part of the integer context. FIR and PSR. Do you think fur is where I want to execute? And then PSR, I don't know, for full instruction continuation address, PSR processor status. <laughs> People want to lip vibrations. Okay, uh, create thread zero zero. Uh, we don't care about access because I don't need to access the new thread. I don't think so. Uh, create thread context and tab. Um. Maybe I need to set up the tab. Let's just initialize this to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's just put some A's in there and then let's just fucking ship it, chat. Let's just fucking ship it. Uh, context and pub and pub. Okay, CMD, CD shell code client. Uh, server dot, uh, explorer dot, uh, send to create shortcut to this, uh, properties, uh, shortcut target run in that. Okay. Fan-fucking-tastic. All right. And so then we can go to, uh, uh, startup. Um, uh, it's, uh, where is it? Win and T startup? Start system 32 startup? Where the fuck is startup? Oh, I bet I can do this. I bet I can do this because it's Windows. You think I can drag this into the start menu? No. 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 Where's startup? Do I need to create it? Does it not exist? Uh, system. Fuck. 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 Um. Oh, there's a um. Profiles. Who am I? Admin. Start menu. Programs. Startup. <laughs> 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 
Ah, son of a bitch. Do you have any four ones anywhere? No, don't see any four ones. Uh, oh, there's a PSR. There's a PSR, 2000 FFA1. I wonder if it's like switching the PSR or some shit. Um. Uh, is this going to work? Oh, uh, fuck. Do I have to log in? I don't like that. How do I turn on auto login? Please, please launch. Please launch. Even with this pop up, please launch. Gonna give it some time. <sighs> Shit. I mean, it's still it's still an improvement. It's just not great. Uh, client ID one two three four. Uh, handle one two three four. Uh, and this is just gonna be core mem. Shit, I shipped it. Um, okay, do we have any A's yet? No A's. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck, dude. It's gonna be a long night. Well, I mean, how are we supposed to know how this API works? It's so difficult. It's so, so difficult. Uh, I mean, we definitely don't need threading yet, but I mean, we've made progress by being at the thread. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do context is equal to, how do I initialize this to, uh, 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 let, uh, uh, unsafe, 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 unsafe. Uh, let me temp is equal to, uh, core, uh, slice from raw parts mute is equal to context as, uh, mute context, uh, mute context is mute context as mute u8, and then we'll do uh, 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 core mem size of val uh, context, and then we'll do temp dot iter mute dot for each uh, x is equal to 41. Oh, it is launched. <laughs> it's totally launched. Uh, okay. Cool. It's at least launched behind that dialog. Let's see if we even need to, uh, let's see if we even need to log in. So we got to do that. We go burp. Okay. And then let's see. I'm guessing it won't be started yet. That would make no sense. Yeah, it's not started yet. Uh, but if I do that, then, okay. Okay. So what? Okay, literally everything is filled with A's. Uh, thread context creates suspended boolean. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, whoa. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, uh. Okay, so um, I think it just derefs the pointer that you give it for one of these. Probably this one. Probably the context pointer. What? Is it the tab one? So this is what we had. Yeah, I literally had the arguments in the wrong order. Whoa, what's going on there? Oh, does it need to be a kernel address? Nope. Okay. What if these are both zero?
Okay, uh, something related to context, or more specifically, this is actually, uh, this is the third from the bottom. Okay. I saw a device error, but then it went away, so I think we're fine. Um... So, is it this? Okay, that doesn't crash if we do that, so... Maybe it's because that's not, like, aligned? Hmm... Your lifetime BSOD count pretty high. Okay. Anyways, um, we'll just go back to this. This is correct. Okay. Um, I don't know why that's succeeding somehow. Okay. So fur, uh, let's just say OU sixty four, and then this and these will just reset back to zeros, and the handle will just be zero. And let's see if we get a handle. Because if we get a handle, we probably succeeded. Yeah, we got a fucking handle. Okay, um, so that did something. Now, did that thread just crash immediately? Who fucking knows? Um, but that, okay, that's that's a good sign. So let's see if uh, extern fn moose uh, print moose. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to get moose to get hit. Okay, so we didn't get moosed. So I don't think it's fur. Um, I mean, we can set kind of all these things. PSR and FSR. But these are like status things. It, it's probably not even using these. Um, what about int... GPSPRA, maybe RA, which would be uh, int. I think I called it int. Yeah, int um, 32 or 31. Uh, U64. Okay. Um. Hmm. Unless it's the tab. Let's just make some. Let's put some mooses in here. Okay. So that's not doing it. Um. Well, we've put moose pretty much everywhere. <laughs> um, fuck. Is it because it doesn't have like a stack? Do I need to allocate a stack for it or some shit? Because it's succeeding. Context p initial tab. Initial tab. Initial tab. Stack base. There's a bunch of shit in there. Hmm. 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 Putting in the flags. Hmm. All right, here we go. Ready? Chat? Chat? Open your eyes. Open your eyes, chat. Open your eyes. Okay. We good? All right. Let's go. Da 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 da
Gonna make a thread and we're gonna create thread and we're gonna create the red and we're gonna make a stack size and we can say zero because it doesn't matter. Then we'll say we want to execute this and then we'll say this is a parameter and then we'll creation flags is zero and the thread ID is null and then the da 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 Oh, oh, those are just warnings. Those are fine. They're casting things. You can just cast whatever you want and see. Who cares? Damn it! Mm, hello, world.exe. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's pretty good. That looks pretty good. Um, okay. Int astif, printf, astif. Let's just make sure astif works. Because if astif works, then, then we know we're working just fine. Okay, that's okay. Okay, so we're just, okay, we're just not. Uh, void star param. Is it void star void star? I think it is. Uh, unsigned long. I think that's the word then. Security Live, thank you so much for the four months of support. There we go. Okay, so that's not working. Um, we might have to fill in a couple things here. Uh, stack size and bytes. If it's zero, it uses default. Security attribute shouldn't matter. Asked if is that. Parameter is the parameter to pass to the thread. LP thread, I don't understand. Oh, oh, it's because I need to do this. It's just not getting time to execute. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's go to a more reasonable state. I think fur would make sense. Uh, let's say OU64. That's fine. Okay, we haven't gotten moosed yet, unfortunately. Uh, so we, we're probably not doing it right yet. I, I think we probably need to make a stack or something. I don't know. Like, sometimes people say stacks are important. I'm not super convinced about stacks being important. Uh, CDB. NTSD. Okay, cool. Um, <gasps> Fuck yeah. Okay, um, IR. Okay, so this is the register state. So, uh, registers, uh, this is the handle. Handle, that should be an address. A, yep, that looks like an address to a thing. Uh, two. The second parameter is, uh, I don't know. It's some dumb shit. Probably don't care about it. Access mask. Yeah, that's the mask. Okay. Uh, 1FO3FF. 1FO3FF. Okay, that's not it. Uh, 1FO. Yeah, 1F03FF. So that's the access mask. First one's a pointer to a handle. That's probably zeroed out. So DWA0. Uh, A0. Uh, 
How the fuck do I... Uh, is that A0? No. Um, 1, 2, FC, 1, 4. Fuck it. Um, okay, that's just probably some uninitialized shit, so that's fine. A2 is 0. Yep. This is negative 1. Yep, that matches. Okay, and then the next arguments are going to start being on the stack Aronian cheese. So let's take a look at the stack Aronian cheese. DW, uh, SP plus 10. So we want to take a look-see at SP, 1, 2, F, B, C, 8, plus 10. Uh, and I want, I want DD, I guess, here. Okay, uh, regs. 1, 2, F, C, 18. Okay, that's an address of some shit. Uh, an address of some shit, an address of some shit, and then a 1. What's the 1 for? What's the, what's the 1 do? Uh, create suspended. Oh, I don't want to create suspended. No, no, that ain't that ain't for me. That's not my cup of tea. Um, okay, so that means that we have a uh, context first, a client ID. So the client ID is probably some just uninitialized shit on the heap. Uh, DD one two FC eighteen. Yeah, that doesn't look like anything relevant. DD one two FC forty. So this should be a context structure. Woo, and that's a lot of zero. That's a lot of zeros. That's a lot of zeros. You asked if? DB asked if? Hmm. DD asked if? Okay, sick. Okay, that's just fucking useless. Um, DDL, uh, how many words was this thing? Uh, was it like 268 or something like that? 268 divided by 4? Or 268 divided by 4 or something like that? Something like that? 67. A, 1017, uh, 401, that's uh, Astif right there. Okay, um, yes, yeah, so this looks good. Um, 77EA, um, it's 568. It was 568 bytes. So it's 142. Is that? Are you sure? Five sixty-eight sounds big. Hmm. Ah, uh, p -p 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 size of uh syscall context. I swear to God, if this is five sixty-eight, I'm gonna be pissed. Ah, it's fucking. Uh, 568 divided by 4. That's 142. That's a lot. Okay, um, alright. So, let's go find what we have here. I, I, I like, I like the ones that I had at the start, because those look good. Because that looks like, uh, th these look like real things. Um, okay, so we know that there's, uh, 10 hex at the start, right? We know that there's 10 hex that we want to skip. Um, the 10 hex that we want to skip is the, uh, alignment shit. So that's gone. So we skip past this 10, 10 hex bytes. Then we're in context 32, maybe. So, uh, let's get past, uh, 4 times 32. Uh, 32 is 20. Okay. And then let's go, uh, L20. Okay, L30. Ooh, okay. So that's, hmm. You know what? These look like 64-bit. Uh, maybe not. Wouldn't make sense for a 64-bit thing to be up there. So let's take a look at, let's go 34. Um, that plus 10 plus uh, ON 34 times 4 plus ON, uh, plus ON 32 times 4. Okay. Okay, so we are now here. So we have an FSR that is zero. We have a fur that is that 77EA8810. Okay, I can I can do that. Seven seven EA eighty eight ten. So, sounds like a fantastic fur for me. Um okay, so we got a fur. Then we have a zero. 
uh, PSR. And then flags is 1017. Hmm. 1017. Okay. Maybe this is the address that it's executing. I just don't think it's be up that high. I feel like I want that for for uh Yeah, I mean those look like real things. Those look like real things. Um I just don't think that's code. 77EA8810. Add IU or I Oh, that's base thread start. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's, yep, that's, oh, yeah. Holy shit, we had it right. Uh, we guessed that one, right? Holy shit, we're brilliant. Wow. Kind of no surprise there. Okay, then moose, um, loop. Actually, hmm. What if I do, can I do an exit process? Um... Because I don't think exit, I don't think exit requires uh, a stack. Mm, it might. Um, shit. If that doesn't require a stack, is that true? Um... Spawn, uh, moose. Let's go find moose. Oh my god. Um. Hmm. Unsafe. Uh, let's just do an asm break. Uh, and then, uh, options, no return. Moose, break. Where's Moose? Uh, debug strip. Rip. And debug equals true. One's reactive is from MIPS. I don't know. Mm. Might be time to change your camera resolution. What do you mean? What what do you what do you mean? What's what's wrong with my camera resolution? Oh, the focus? Was the focus fucked? Is the microphone floating towards me? Oh, is it oh, oh, I see. I see. It's out of sync. Holy shit, that's bad. Fucking what the shit? Okay, test. What the fuck? How is that drifting? Ah. Uh, sick. Okay, so this is now a thing. And then I have moose. Is that moose? No. Where's moose? Uh, oh, it's getting DC'd. Moose, break. Okay, nice. Okay. Um, all right, let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's do this, chat. Trash. Fuck. I don't need to give it a stack, do I? Um... DD SP plus 10. Wait. Is that actually the stack? Yeah, that is. What the fuck? Uh, can I poi? SP plus 10? Oh, fuck yeah, I can poi. Um, okay, so this is the first thing. Doesn't look important. This is the context. Then this is the, um... This is the... 
Stack? Ooh, and that looks maybe stacky. That looks like it's maybe stacky. P initial tab. P initial tab. Uh, stack base, stack limit, stack commit, stack commit max. Mm, that doesn't make sense. Commit max, reserve. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know. Let's just slam some of these in the tab. Uh, let's slam some of these in the tab and see if that crashes. Nope. Okay. Um, hmm. 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 We can play SP10. That one doesn't matter. This one is good. Uh, SP14. Then if we say for the size of that, it's 32 plus 34 plus like 4 or something like that times 4 is 280. Uh, 280 bytes plus... Uh, uh, that's 118 hex. Um, something like 118 hex and then uh, 16 more at the front. So like one, 128 hex. Hmm. Unless break isn't hard enough. Maybe I need to like load, uh, load immediate A0 OX four one four one four one four one uh load word a zero from zero a zero right okay uh uh access come on give me a pseudo instruction Unexpected token. Unexpected token. Oh, these fucking things. Whoops. All right, there we go. And bam, and it's running. Okay, that's not good. Um, because if I ran this here, this should crash, right? Uh, if I put this in an unsafe, this will this will crash in a visible way, right? Yeah. Exception alignment fault. Okay, fantastic. So we would expect that something like that would occur if we ended up getting execution in that thread. So it seems we're not doing it right yet. Um, is it the stack? Do we have to give it an existing stack? In which case, what is the t type of that stack? Hmm. I'm trying to think what could be stacky here. Um, so this, honestly, it, it doesn't, actually, that's too much. Um, oh, I, yeah, this is a number of, not bytes, but words. So this is, how many words do we have? 32 plus 34. If we, if we look at the structure, so I want to look at the entire context structure. Make sure there's nothing we're missing. So the entire context structure is, that's 4D words. So we have 4D words. Then we have 32 D words here, plus 32. And then we have an additional, uh, that should be 34 D words there. Then we have one, two, three, four more D words. So we have 74. So O-N, 74. This is the entire structure for the context. And that makes sense. Yeah, the last thing in there is the flags, the 1017. Uh, we got the fur. Um, which is this. So two before that is the fur. Yep. So that is the fur. That's where we want to execute. Everything else is zero. So we have 100% set that up exactly as they're doing. Okay. So then the next thing is the tab, uh, this initial tab structure. So this initial tab is, we don't know how big. Um, but honestly, this looks like a top of stack and this looks like a bottom of stack. That looks like a 32K stack or a 4K stack. Right? Was that not? 
Does that not look like a 4K stack to you? Because that's what it looks like to me. Top of stack, bottom of stack sort of thing. Mm. Stack base limit commit. Limit max, stack reserved. Okay, so let's just let's just let's try it. Let's try it. We're gonna we're gonna say this structure is like 16. I'm gonna say OU32. Then we're gonna say teb zero is equal to zero. Teb one is zero. I know those are redundant. Uh two and three, and then we're gonna give it some stacks. So five one. So we got a high and then a low. So we're gonna give it a high. This is gonna be a vec uh uh let stack is vec OU8 um 4096 dot leak um stack as U32 um leak. I think leak gives you a pointer. It also might need to nope, that's good. Okay, so stack um as mute U8 as that. Uh, okay, this is as pointer. And we'll say mute, not that it really should matter here. And then that's the high one. We got a high one there. And then it's the low one. So we'll take tab two minus 4096. Okay, so uh, then we have a 410. And what's this? Is this a thing? Use 77EC, 7A8C. Get startup info. Uh, what is that? Is that real? I don't know if that's a real thing, chat. How much should I expect to earn as an experienced reverse engineer? <laughs> Anywhere from zero dollars to probably two mil a year. <laughs> I think you should swap your tab two and three. Oh, this should actually be this plus 4096. And this should be uh, stack dot as mute pointer as you 32. Um, Cause this should be the higher address and it should be pointing to the end of the stack. Um, unfortunately that didn't do it for us. What's 410? U, oops. Uh, U410123. Uh, minus one. Minus four. Okay, so that's that's a real thing. So that's like, I think that's the end of the program or some shit. This is like, you can grow until this point. And we'll just say 410. Fuck it. Um, okay, and then what's this other thing then? 77EC, 78C? Okay. Teb 5. 77EC, 778C? Is that it? EC, 8C? Mm. Uh, 77EC, 7A, 8C. But I, I don't think that's gonna do it. Um, the fuck else could it be? Could it be that client ID? Uh... NT create thread. Teb. Hmm. I don't get it. I mean, we're we're clearly looking at the whole context here, right? There is nothing in here that's filled in. Everything is zero. Right? Everything is zero there, and then this, the fuck? That does look like a top end and like maximal expansion region. Like basically your stack can expand down to this 410, but this is the current range of the stack. Ah. Mm. Why wouldn't this just fail? <laughs> Good night, see you around, dude. L-I that. Moose. Okay. Give it the address of moose. And the fur. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
U eight oh six four C C E E eight. Yeah, that's just garbage. Okay, so that's nothing. Um What the fuck, dude? Although I didn't understand. I have a lot of fun, yeah. Get some get some good sleeps. Uh I've um, what else are we possibly doing wrong? Client ID. Process handle. Yeah, that's the current process. Thread all access. We're getting a handle out. We're passing null as that. And maybe threads just don't crash in the same way or some shit? I don't, I don't fucking know. Uh, print. Asked if. Uh. Mm. Are you going off CPU? Like when you called sleep? I mean, I loop forever. Um, shit. Stack, weak, top of stack, bottom of stack, super bottom of stack. Here I could probably just say like stack as mute pointer as U32, just like that's, that's the true bottom of the stack. Fuck. Context, tab. Context, tab, false. Client ID. I don't know. It's shit. Uh, let's try it. Let's try this. Let's put a one. Okay. Okay, one didn't help. Because that's, supp that's supposed to mean create suspended. I don't have to like resume that thread, do I? Do I have to start that thread? I mean, if I don't give it create suspended, I would imagine it would just run. Um. Hmm. 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 Um, I'm trying, I'm trying, trying to find another reference. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, let's see what GitHub has for NT create thread. Exploit DB. Mm, exploit DB. Okay. Uh, see if I can search for. Can I do def colon? Just call def. Uh, NT create thread. NT create thread. Um. React OS does resume after creation. Really? Do they pass it a zero here as well? Where are you seeing that code? Can you link that quick? Thanks. Cheers. Um. Create thread. This creates it suspended. And that's why I'm kind of interested about that. So object attribute, h process, client ID, context, and initial tab. 
but it creates it suspended. Um, and that's kind of interesting to me. Um, create base stack, base initialize context. Hmm. Client ID. Unique process is H. What? Client ID. Write the PID H process. Uh, so that would be toy 10. So we did see stuff in here, but I just thought this was uninitialized shit. U208036. U12FA10. Uh, DD. Uh, 12FA10. Okay. That's interesting. Um... And then that's ASCII. Um, 3,000, 3,000. It's hard to say if that's just uninitialized shit. <laughs> really hard to say. Um, yeah, if it, if creation flags is not create suspended, so it defaults to suspended. I, I would imagine that that suspension flag actually matters. Um, I would hope. Uh, okay. Um, Check if it was from user mode. If it is, then probe this shit. Yep. PSP create thread. Mm, basically, everything's passed through as is. So let's see. Start routine, blah, blah, blah. Start routine. Create object. Uh, zero the e thread. Okay, let's see what sort of things we pass in. Let's see if uh, initial tab. Let's take a look at that. Uh, create user mode tab. Okay, so you give it an initial tab, and that's interesting. Um, let me just git clone this quick. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Jesus, this is big. Holy shit. Uh, mm create tab. System thread. So, yep, not a system thread. So create tab. That's where that syncs. We have a thread context, um, and that syncs. Kernel initialize the context. Get the PC and the return register. So the Win32 start address is the return register. PC. Okay. Um, okay, so that's like getting some of that shit. Uh, okay. Uh, we might be in a different function as well. No, we're not. Okay, um, create suspended. That literally determines, I'm guessing, if it creates it suspended. Out client ID. Okay, so this is the first place where we see the client ID should be an out. Um, and I think that lines up with a couple other things that we've seen. Yeah, we shouldn't have to initialize the client thread. So, basically, the question is, like, what the fuck is the initial tab then? Uh, base limit, commit, and commit max. Base, limit, commit, commit, max, and reserved. And that kind of lines up with what we're seeing, roughly, structure-wise. 
we are seeing basically four things. Uh, base, limit, commit, commit max, stat. All fields of this should be null? Mm, I don't know. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, I can just try resume thread and just see what happens. Um... Obviously, I don't think we're going to have a context because uh, I don't think they have MIP support. Um, for Moose's U32, that's the exact same setup that we observed. That's the exact same setup. So if we go back once again, this, okay, 1017, 1017, flags. And uh, for that, I mean, unless this thing's like unaligned or fucked in some way. Uh, let's just say U128. Let's make sure this is, uh, let's make sure that this is actually aligned to that boundary. Because I know that they care about that 16 byte boundary, but yeah, it doesn't seem to do shit. Okay. Um... Hmm. Unless I'm crashing that thread and it just is silently crashing. Um, but I just, yeah, I mean, we could, we could do an exit process. Um, hmm. Because everything we give it is the same. Regs. Uh, 12 FC14. That's a pointer. Uh, 1FO3FF. That's the same. Zero. This is the same. Client ID. That, well, we don't really know what client ID is, to be honest. So, client ID, we still haven't figured out what the structure is. Sleep calling something to reschedule you. Um,. It should be able to have multiple threads running like that. I mean, we can we can maybe resume thread. This is kind of interesting to me. Um, DD two o eight o three six. That's nothing. So I think that's just uninitialized shit. Let's see a uh, KB. Uh, this is create remote thread. Let's go take a look at create remote thread. Um, create thread. And this is kernel 32. Okay. Pyramid thread. So let's see what it passes in to uh, create thread. Um, honestly, we can probably... Um, okay, let's just go to create remote thread plus C0. Okay, so we are here. Okay. And since we're there, let's go and see if we can get something better with HLIL. Yeah, sweet. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. So, oh, yeah, literally that's constant. So we have that. We've got a V0. Um, in our case, that is literally zero. Uh, is it? Um, we have an address, we have that, we have a zero, and then we have the current process. So this is get like current process probably. So that's all Fs. So all of those are the same. Var 318 is just declared right here. So that's uninitialized. 2FO is initialized. B8 is initialized. Uh, so 31C is not initialized and 318 are not initialized. So we do not have to worry about uh, this fifth arg. So whatever this fifth arg is. Client ID. Yeah, client ID does not have to be initialized. Okay, perfect. Um, and this picks it up as a... Um, doesn't really know what the type is, but who cares? Then we have 2FO. That gets initialized in here. And uh, that is our context. 
yeah, this is our context. So this is going to be initialized context. And so it mem sets it for, it zeroes it out for 238. Um, it sets 28 to 1. So 238 should be the total size of that structure. So if we do poi sp14 uh, l o uh, it was 248 hex uh, 238 hex uh, divided by four since we're printing um, d words. Oh, there is some more stuff down here. And there's the one, and there's the f okay. Interesting. So what are these? These are um hmm that's potentially a return address and then this is potentially sp 64 bit sp 64 bit return address but that would be weird there's nothing else that deep in the structure. I mean, I'll, I'll fucking set those, but wow, that's... That's really weird, but it is definitely explicitly setting those. Arg4, that's probably the stack. 220, it's setting to one as well. Is there another one in there? I'm not seeing anything else in here. I'm just seeing those two. So this would be... um. In a 64-bit context, this is MIPS high, MIPS low. This is RA. This is S8. This is SP. So I guess we'll try it. Um, let's just try context. Dot context. Dot bit 64. Dot int, and then 32, 31 is RA, and it set that to one, and then it set 29, which is two before, which is SP, and it set this to something. Let's just set it to stack as mute pointer as U32. Fuck it. Maybe that's how you signify that you want it to run as a as a 64-bit process, is by putting an RA like that? Well, that didn't do shit. Um... Oh, thank you so much, Pokemon fan, uh, fan for the two months. Dude, you're so smart. Holy crap. I mean, I have no idea what I'm fucking doing right now. I'm kind of just winging it. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have... That's basically the same now. Right? 208. Pokemon alt. Uh, 208 hex. 208. And if we divide 208 divided by... Uh, 4, that... Uh, Two eight divided by four. That's one hundred thirty. Zooms into there. That's writing uh two eight two ten. Oh, is this two mm, twenty two eight two ten? Arg four minus forty. Okay, that's really interesting because that's that C zero. That's minus forty. Oh fuck. Um. Uh. Plus. 4096 minus OX40. Maybe it needs 40 bytes at the start of the start of the stack. <gasps> yeah, we're pretty fucking smart, chat. Woo! Easy. Fucking easy. All right, Teb, does that matter? Nope. Is this going to execute this as 64-bit? Like, what is that? So an array of one, apparently? So that's the, that's the end of the stack, 100%. So this is the stack. You set up SP, and I guess you have to give it a 64-bit stack. Okay? Fair. So we give it the stack address plus 4K, the top, and then we subtract off 40. Even if we don't subtract off 40, this fails. No, that works. That works. Um, okay. So maybe I don't need the minus 40. So I should come into here, um, and this pointer, 
Uh, yeah, okay. So yeah, we just start there with our stack. And if we had, if we add four to this, this should crash. This should just not execute. Um, it hangs. Okay. So, um, that's good. That's good. Okay, so that definitely seems to be giving it that stack. All right, so now that makes sense. So, um, okay, close, close, and close. Okay, now everything's closed. And we have our flags. We have our function that we want to execute. We have our stack that we created. And then we have a teb, which I think only needs to be five for the initial. Let's try four. This should just fail. Uh, okay, that succeeds. If I were to, if I page heap allocate this, so if I take this, this is now allocated a page. Um, I don't, I don't know, whatever. Um, I think that's five. I'm pretty sure this is five fields. Uh, this initial tab. Initial tab. Okay. Um, initial tab. Maybe some stack stuff in here. Okay. And then what if I don't give it a stack here? Um, if I just give it a zero, what happens? Will it just allocate a default stack for me? No. Okay, so I need to explicitly give it the stack. Um, probably have one hanging. Yep, I do. Let's minimize that. So we're at a clean desktop. Uh, allocate and leak a stack for the thread. Uh, create a new context. Uh, place holder for returned client ID. This is holder for returned uh, client handle. Okay, then down here we do this. We create the thread. Uh, we don't need to print the handle. Okay. It should still be working. Um, failing to build, that's okay. Let's just clean these things up a little bit. Expected blah, okay. Um, yeah, that's fair. Let's do, let status is equal to this. Um, if status success, uh, we have this code in a million places, so let's just do this. If it was a success, uh, uh, convert error to Rust error. Uh, then we can do this. Okay, blah, 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 blah. This will return a result. Okay, and then we still are leaking that address. That's good. Okay, status. Uh, this is an NT status this as U32. Boom. Okay, so this is uh, create the thread. We don't really know what these flags are. Honestly, we don't necessarily care, do we? What if zero is fine? I think these are the permissions of the handle, so we don't really give a shit, to be honest. Okay, so um, NT create thread. Yeah, it's the thread execution block. It apparently has some shit in it. I don't know. Uh, this this is like a partial tab, so I don't really know what it is. I know what like a normal tab is, but this one not so much. Um, okay, so let's. These are reversed out, unfortunately, but that's okay. Desired access. This is basically oh god, this is basically the desired access of the thread, and uh, ultimately the desired access of the thread is I don't give a shit, um, or of the handle, so we don't care about that. Then we have the object attributes, which is optional. Uh, obviously, we take the optional route because it's less work. Then we have the process handle that we want to create the thread in, which is our own, so negative one. We have the P client ID. We have the context, which is the initial context of the thread. Then we have the initial tab here. And then we have a Boolean of whether or not we want to create it suspended. And then of course we have the actual syscall itself. <sighs> okay, so um, what we do is uh, set the 64 bit all right to one. Does, does this signify 32 bit? Um, 
set the 64-bit stack address to the end of the stack. Uh, and this can be stack.len as u64. I'm pretty sure we can just do that, right? Yep, because we know the size of the stack. Uh, this is the um, thread entry points. And this is the uh, thread uh, thread context execution. Uh, er, this is just the context uh, flags. Um, and we could probably just find context uh, control, which is one. Let's just see if context control is sufficient. And it is. Uh, what if we just have zero flags? I don't seem to matter. Um, yeah, I, I don't think they matter because it's thread creation and they just like have some default shit. So fuck them. Um, okay, uh, holder for returned client handle. Uh, placeholder for return client ID, create a new context. We got these, we're setting up the thread entry point, the 64 bits, RA, um, RA to that, okay. Then we're setting the 64 bit SP uh, to the end of the stack, um, thread entry points. Okay, nice, that looks good. Bit zero is the moose bit. Yeah, that's definitely the moose bit. Okay, so now, folder for the client handle, for the client ID. This is the new context. We know that our context structure is the correct size. Um, so this is 32-bit uh, uh, context, and this is 64-bit uh, context. Okay, this is uh, context update flags. Down here, context update flags for FSR uh, status register. I don't know what the fuck that is. Um, okay, that looks good. Let's see if we can make Clippy. Probably not. Okay, good, we definitely can't. Uh, print LN, yep, that's fine. Uh, print, print LN. Uh, we've got print LN, we've got a B tree map on use, we got an unreachable expression, we got an initial tab that doesn't need to be mutable, um, that's because we probably are not saying it's mute. And, uh, yeah, I guess maybe that doesn't have to be mute. Um, and we have a stack, make clippy, spawn, result unused, oh, everything's documented. Oh, except for moose. Well, that's fine, because moose doesn't need to be documented. And then the thread. Okay, now we want to do some Rust stuff. We're just going to steal what they do for spawn, because they probably have it right. Okay, so uh, we're going to have uh, a spawn f of t, uh, f function f, uh, where f is an fn once, which yields a t. Um and f implement send and static, and t implement send and static. And if all those things are true, then, uh, then we're happy. Okay, so now we should be able to do uh, uh, print asdf, print ln. Still not in the habit of doing that yet. This is called spawn. Print ln moose um, moose. Okay, so how do you get the address of a closure? Fn once. Uh, um, I probably can't directly execute that as well. Um, Yeah, what is that internally? An fn once it has args. You pass an args to it. Um, hmm. It's the only trait that that implements. So we have to key off of that trait. And that gives us a call once, which is a Rust call, an extern Rust call. And you pass an arg. Uh, I don't know how you do that. Hmm, how does this work internally? Type of the return type 
if the call operator is used. Yep, that's the output. Um, nothing wants that yields a T. This yields that. Um, so I probably can do this right now, um, but I wouldn't be able to do this if I have variables. So let's just try this. We have an F. We're going to say this function. We're going to get the call once as U32. Okay. Um, uh, whoa. Hmm. Required method call once gives self the return type after the call operator is used. Self output arn. Oh, shit. Got to find the method function. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. So. No parens on call one. Method, not a field. Uh, value of method. Call once on type F. Um, yeah, I might have like a thread dispatcher, like a thread entry. Um, let's just try this for now. Let's try entry as U32. Okay. Um, so obviously this should work. Um, and that will get stuck because we don't call exit. So in here, we're just going to call exit. This is just so we don't have things getting cluttered up, but that correctly, yep, that exited. So we're definitely getting execution here. Um, so what we could do is hopefully maybe marshal that in as an argument. Uh, so that would be, let's see if context, context bits 32 dot int, I think four is the first argument. Let's just see if 69 comes up. Uh, print arg. And arg is a u32. Okay, let's see if that's 69. No, that's zero. Okay, uh, is it not four? Um, MIPS registers. Come on. Load, 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 load faster. Uh, four. Yeah, it should be four. Hmm, fuck. Um, I mean, maybe this is because I'm not setting these flags anymore. Let's set the flags to whatever it was. Context.context.bits32.flags is equal to... What was it? What was it setting? Uh, is it this? 1017? Okay, that's not doing it. Uh, let's try 69. Or 64. Oh, shit on a brick. Okay, um, all right, F. How big is F? Like, what? what is F? I guess F is static, so what do I want to do? I want, um, 42069. Let's make sure that's not a fluke. Maybe I am running in 64-bit mode or some shit. Um... Shit, what would this be then? For. Do I need flags? Yeah, I do need flags. I do need flags. Um, So one maybe signifies that it's that. And, hmm. Maybe it's not fur. Maybe that's just coincidence that it lined up there. Um, What could that be then? Um, For FP. FP int FSR fur. That's context 32. So this would be um 
yeah, these fillers will line it up. So that's actually in the same location. That fur is actually the same. It's the exact same location. There we go. Now, okay, thread entry points. Um, oh, maybe we don't even need RA. Yeah, that's just, that's literally just RA. Okay, uh, set, um, uh, A0 argument. Okay. Okay, so now it makes sense. Uh, fur is entry is U32. Flags, um, flags to, I don't think I need this top shit, to be honest. And in that case, this is, uh, actually, I probably just need this. Yeah. Uh, if I do one, I'll get execution, but it'll be zero. If I do two, I probably won't get execution. Okay, I do get execution regardless. If I do four, I'll have the 42069. Okay, so seven. This is, um, to, uh, we'll just do this. Uh, context control u32 is one two four um this is context floating points and this is context integer and i think by all of this stuff uh okay uh context uh, floating point context and integer context. Okay, and then this is control con uh, context. Control context floating point and context integer. Okay. So set the flags for the registers we want to uh, control. And then this is probably just bit 64 flags as well. Yeah, that'll be in the same position. Okay. So bits 32 is no longer being used, which is good. So now bit 64 flags is control floating point and integer. Uh, one, two, and four. One, two, and four. Um, we set the entry points. We set the A0 arguments. We set the SP to be the end of the stack to the byte, literally out of bounds of the stack. So it has to sub to be in bounds. And everything else looks really good here. Um, so I don't know how I actually use F. So F has a static lifetime. And um, fuck. Hmm. Static means that the closure and its return value must have a lifetime for the whole program execution. Yep, that makes sense. Um, the closure itself, builder spawn F. Um, F may be a fat pointer. But the address of F should be constant, right? The address of F shouldn't change. Is that true? Um, okay, that's looks like an address. Uh, let's print that as hex. What did that 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 not work? Oh, I think that just didn't flush or something. Um, okay, so then what we can do is we can say that this is a uh, yeah, but we don't know what that type is. The fuck do you do that? Um. Hmm. I mean, unless you're supposed to do the dot call once. Still need dine FN once. Here, like ref dine FN ones.
Is that a thing? So, the problem is I need to be able to get args. That's not FFI safe. Yeah, um... How do I get args? Um, cause FN once has args and dude, I have no idea how this shit works actually. Um, FN once takes a buy value receiver. They can be called when I might not be callable multiple times because of this. If the only known thing about type is it implements FN1, it can only be called once. Uh, when you want to accept a parameter of function like type and only need to call it once. Um, so what are args? I guess that's a generic. Yeah, so args is a generic. So FN once has a generic args. Um... The easiest way is to box the fat pointer. Yeah, but how do I get the arguments? How do I get the args of this? Like, how do you invoke that? Or do you just do it with sugar? So, call once has arguments, but... Oh, I see. So, like... This, um, I'm not going to be able to do this, right? Um, I mean, do you have to box it? And then you're just, you just call arg at that point, right? Um, does that make sense? Because you have to move the context into somewhere. Um, uh, so then this is going to be, uh, uh, box new F. Leak as U32, as U64. Um, box leak. Box new F. Uh, as mute F. Okay, um, hmm. hard, what, what, args not hard, huh, hello, what, so, I mean, that's not FFI safe either, right? Um, I mean, what if we just say this is a fucking Rust function? I mean, it could be a much more complex thing. Um... Do I as pointer the box? Um, box it twice. Uh, I can do this into raw. I think I want into raw is what I want. I don't actually want to uh leak the box. Leaking the box is wrong. This is I, I'm doing it wrong. 
Um, we want to do box new. Uh, box into raw of that, which is then the raw pointer. And then I want to reconstruct it from a raw pointer. So now I have a uh, mute T. Well, I have no idea what the fuck T is. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Like, how the... What? Um, mute T. Um, how do I know what fucking type this is? So that box is an F. You don't? Yeah, I know, but how how do I know what to what to in uh box from raw? How do I know what to box from raw? Cuz box from raw requires typing. I guess that's uh what is that? A dyne uh Can you do generics on extern FNs? Like, can I do this where I know that this is a this is a mutable pointer to an F? You can't. Well, it's not a box dine T. All right. So then how do I know what T is? I just never know what T is. Hey, Bitcoin, how are you doing? Thank you so much for that 19 months. Ah, uh, what the fuck, man? I, like, don't see how this is possible. Like, I don't, I don't understand how there's any way to do this. I like, how do I ever get F back? But I don't know what F is. Am I dumb? Can I do this? Because, um, okay, you, yeah, okay, you can't do that. Um, hmm. Um, in your spawn, decompose the fat pointer into a mute V table using to raw parts. In entry, combine the pointer from raw parts mute. But I... But I can't, I can't. Do 
double box doesn't work, I don't think. Because I still have to know the T of the internal type. At the end of the day, I have to know what what this F is. And if I don't know what that F is, like, like, see, here's the thing. If I have a, like, how do I declare that function, right? If I have a FN foo, and I have a, I have an arg, right? If it's a box of a box, I still don't know what this is, right? Um, at the end of the day, to, to create that type again, I have to know what F is. I have to. Um, I mean, is this any type territory? Like, ugh. or is it this? Can you do some weird generic -y shit like this where this is a box F? Um, entry. Um, actually, let's try this. Let's try this. Um, entry F T. Hmm. How the fuck do I do this? Um. Up, 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 up. Oh, I guess this is turbo fish on that. Yeah, so that works. And then, um, yeah, so then can I just glory to the turbo fish? Yeah, everyone glory to the turbo fish. And then if I do this, does this just work? Uh, arg, let's just say arg is F. Fuck it. Yeah, that works. And it's not complaining about anything related to generics. I think you can have generics on externs. Okay, now obviously I don't want it to exit. Um, well, we'll keep the exit for now. Um, funk. So this is the uh, external thread entry point. Okay, that wasn't nearly as hard as it it, it seemed. Uh, funk. And result must be used. That's fine. Uh, okay, unreachable in 27. That's okay. Uh, B tree map unused. That's fine. Let's just clean up some of these things. Get this to shut up a bit. Um, okay, so there we go. So that looks fine. Um, send it static. F wants T. Extern FN. And then, yeah, it's just, we're basically creating an instance of this function that has this, this typing, right? Um, and then we pass in, oh, wait, what the fuck? Uh, I guess we don't need an argument anymore. Wait, am I, de wait, wait, how the fuck did that work? Yeah, I don't think you need to pass in an argument anymore because that is n not... I, wh why do I think that's the case? I don't know, but I don't think you actually pass an argument. How do you not need arguments? What does it call? I don't know. I don't know, okay? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I think this is, <laughs> like, let asked if is five, and then can I print five in here? Because if I can, ooh, okay, okay. So then what the f <laughs> Let me try, let me try and do another one. Hey, 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 okay. Yeah, that's not, that's not great. Okay, let's just close some of these. Um. Um, that might be working. Your V table for the callback is pointing to nowhere. <laughs> well, we can put this back in here and just see if that does anything. Uh, mm.
Um... I think it's stuck. Mute F should work. So just, uh, uh, I guess just the F itself, the address of F itself. Um, Zano Blano, fuck off. <laughs> what do you mean that's not equal to five? Um, F, obviously that's not gonna work. So this is, uh, let's try adder of mutes f um okay so then let's try mute uh let's just say this is mute who cares fuck it and then this obviously is a problem uh we'll just say uh whoa vim chillax Chillax, Vim. Uh, extern. I think unsafe comes first. Oh, no, it, it, it does. Mmm. Mmm. Extern does default to CAB. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. let's just, let's just be really naughty right now. Let's be really fucking naughty. Okay. We're going to be really naughty. Um, uh, Cannot move out of that, which is behind a mutable reference. Oh, shit. Yeah, I think... Hmm. Hmm. I think you have to own F. Yeah, I kind of agree. Which then means this this could be a box. There it is. It takes... I mean... Yeah, that's not a fat pointer anymore. That's not a fat pointer anymore, right? So we box up F, thereby moving everything into the heap. And then we make that raw. And then we as U64 it. Uh, uh, technically, yeah. And then we actually recreate the box here very unsafely. Um, <laughs> uh, here we could say that this is... Uh, uh, fuck, uh, syscall, I think it's more correct to do, I think you have to box it, I think you have to, I don't see how you otherwise couldn't, because where, let's, Im let's imagine you don't have box, thus you don't have alec, where are you possibly going to move these things to? Like, it, there's no place, there's no place to put a closure, it has to go onto the heap by nature because where are you going to put a captured variable you can't you can't use this stack because that stack is temporary you can't use a global because you would run out of space if you have a loop right you have to you have to box it in which case this is then a mute f or more specifically this is a mute f and then we create the funk which is going to be box from raw of funk. And now we can call funk. And now this is correctly doing that, right? This is now correct. This is um, uh, rebox the effified uh, type. 
right? Uh, call the closure, right? So this takes a mutable F. This is specifically going to box that up. When we into raw that, that will turn that into the T that box contains. So if you verify this, this sh we shouldn't be able to cast that to a U8 right away or whatever. Uh, the, the typing of this, um, let um, C box, closure box. I'm going to strongly type this as a box F, which is equal to box into uh, box new F, right? Or more specifically, I'm going to say that this is a mutable reference to F. Box into raw. Because now, this is very strong, strongly typed. This means that we're not we're not automatically casting something by using as. We know for sure this is truly after the into raw. It is actually a mute f pointer, right? And then at that point, we can invoke and do whatever the fuck we want, right? So now, if we go down here, we should be able to call this again um so this should uh i guess that actually succeeds because um so i don't actually know oh uh because we have exit um yeah there it is okay and then obviously uh plus five Holy shit, we've got real fucking threads! <laughs> we've got real fucking threads! <laughs> Fuck yeah. And then we'll strongly type this, even though we don't have to. We're just gonna strongly type it. So that way we fully round trip that, and then we call the closure. And that's it. And then that's an extern FN, so all of the typing works out. <sighs> we could box from raw and entry? That's what we do, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and everything here is very, very strongly typed. There's nothing here that we're really doing that is... We're not really casting anything in here, which is nice. Um, <laughs> so obviously these will spin forever. So now what we need to do is we need to implement um, um, desired access. So we need to have the ability to wait. And I think uh, NT wait one, NT, NT wait, wait, wait for, wait, NT wait, NT wait for single object. Okay. And this one's really easy actually. Um, and this is also documented, so let's go find, uh, wait for single object is C4. C4. Okay. Um, NT wait for single object. Sleep? No, we're not doing sleep. We're not doing fucking sleep. Um, okay. Uh, pub fn, wait for, uh, let's just call it wait for now. Um, handle, handle. And then this is actually going to return that handle now. Um, handle. Okay, and then this needs to be a handle. Now, obviously, we're going to make this into a Rust type in two seconds, but we're first going to do some experimentation here. Um, handle. Um, so we'll do uh, syscall3. Unsafe syscall3. Um, what? Status is equal to nt status. This as u32 syscall3 uh the handle is the handle 
Um. Okay, then we have an alertable. Specifies whether the wait is alertable. I don't know what that means, so we're going to say no. Uh, and then a timeout, which is optional, and it's a pointer. So that's zero. And then we'll say syscall uh, wait for single object. And I think it's just that fucking easy. Um, uh, bink. 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 Okay, um, so what you should be able to do now is uh, unwrap and then let thing is equal to, and then we can do syscall wait thing. Um, thing two, uh, let thing two is equal to this, unwrap. Uh, okay. Um, so I think this is probably not working. Um, I would expect I could get the printouts though. Um, is it crashing? Um, um, wait, uh, optional pointer to a timeout value that specifies the absolute or relative time which the wait is to be completed. A negative value is uh, relative to current time, positive is absolute. Um, Okay, the alertable specifies whether or not the thread can be alerted and its wait state consequently aborted. Um, if the value is false, then the thread cannot be alerted. Okay, let's do that. Um, that's really interesting. Um, oh, these are failing. Those are failing. 100% they're failing. I don't have perms on the handle. That's what it is. I don't have perms on the handle. Uh, so this is uh, results, right? And then this is the same thing. Convert error to Rust error. Boom. If it's successful, then okay. It's 100% what it is. These are just literally failing, and then that's causing it to exit. Uh, yeah, unwrap on error, empty status this, and it's probably eperm or some shit. And now we have to just go up to here. And then the desired access mask for the thread, um, we can use the desired access that they actually used up in here, um, which was what? Um, this is the desired access, right? This is the desired access. I don't know what the fuck it is, but it's probably good. And there it is. And now we are uh, actually waiting for those things to complete. Okay, so uh, we'll go figure out that access mask. Someone remind me to do that when we have to. And then wait is going to go away. That's no longer pub. What else is pub in here? Result, empty status, handle, IO status block, mmap is okay. This is unsafe pub, so that's okay. Uh, write is fine. Spawn is fine. Exit is fine. This one's no longer pub. So this is wait for uh, handle uh, block on a handle forever, right? So that's gonna block on a handle forever. Um, this is called wait. Um, wait is a private function, that's fine. So now this is gonna give a join handle. <laughs> and that's a join handle, I think of a T actually, is what I'm gonna want, isn't it? Yeah, that's a join handle T, let's fucking go. Struct join handle T. Um, and then join handle, the restrictions on that are none, apparently. Okay, so we have a join handle, and, uh, this is the handle. 
Uh, so this is the uh, thread to wait on. Um, uh, okay. So I don't necessarily know yet what a uh, join handle is. Um, so let's just say a join handle here and then impl um, uh, join handle. Uh, fn join. Uh, for now, it's just going to be this. This is going to call... Fuck it. This doesn't need to be a function. Okay. Eh. Yeah, I can... I, I could see us using wait a lot, actually. Um, and then here, we'll do uh, self dot, uh, wait self.handle. Mute. Yeah, just self's fine, actually. And then uh, this is a result. Okay. Uh, Thing.join. Do you really want to get values from a thread? Um, Yeah, I kind of do. Um, Kind of fucking do. <laughs> pubfn, pubfn. So this is the join handle. Okay, then at the end here, instead of a handle, this is going to be a join handle. And that's going to be sufficient, actually. Uh, okay, 269. Uh, handle. Yep. Yeah, that's still a U size. So, bam. Now... That looks pretty good. <laughs> okay, how the fuck would I get a result out of that? Um, does this return a T? No. The the um. <sighs> Do I make a box that can hold a T? I make a box that holds a T and I have func return it. This returns box T, or this takes in a, a box and I keep that box around. And then only once the, once it's exited, do I grab that, right? Right, mute T. Uh, Rebox the FFI'd, uh, return value, right? Something like this. And then I can, here I can say, ret is equal to this, right? Um. Uh, is this mute? Right. Now it does on in it. Well, obviously this is wrong. Um, so, um, yeah, I dropped the box. I know, I know, I dropped the box, and that's a problem. And it's also on in it. So I want to do box new on in it, right? So this is actually going to be um, this is. Um, okay, so we're going to create storage for the return, right? So uh, create return storage. Right, so the return storage that we're going to create um, is going to be a box new uninit. And this is going to be uh, uh, our box, return box, is a box that contains a T, which is the return type. So now we've done that. So now this is going to be our box. 
as U64. Now, obviously, that's a problem. So we're going to do box... Um... Uh, uh, box, 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 into raw. Yeah, we can just do that. Box into raw from box new that is going to be uh, mute T, right? Uh, actually, this is a maybe uninit T. Uh, new uninit. Okay, that's. Oh, we got some experimental shit. Fuck yeah. Add it to the list. <laughs> Add it to the fucking list. Uh, um, use... Is that core pointer? Uh, use core mem maybe on an it. This is going to be fucking awesome, dude. Uh, 207. How do you remember all of these variables and functions? I, I don't know, dude. <laughs> Don't fucking ask me. Okay. Uh, Rebox the FFI'd... Uh, actually, I don't care. This is a maybe uninit T. And I can leave it like that. And then this is going to be... Uh, uh, bup, 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 right? Ret dot right? This? Is that okay? Is that okay? Is that correct? Can I do this DREF? Because that's giving me a maybe uninit, and is a maybe uninit a pointer in itself? Um. Unended is owning. Okay. So then. Um. Okay. So we'll just do unsafe. Um. St standard pointer right. Um. Well, I'm derefing the box there. Oh, you getting hungry, dude? Okay, I, I could probably leave in like 20 minutes. Um. Fuck. X dot right. So the thing is, this is a box. I'm actually derefing the box. I think this is okay, actually, because of the this mutable pointer is for the box. So I'm I'm derefing the box. Um, because otherwise I would do box from raw. Like, I could do box from raw and leak, and then it would be, like, really fucking explicit what's going on. Right? Uh, from raw rat. Uh, this is a box. Maybe on an it T, right? Um, that's the rat. And then I can just do this. Uh, ret dot right is that. I think that's unsafe. No, that's safe. Um... Right, so mutable ret. Right, so this is uh, unbox or rebox the, yeah, ret right funk. Yeah, that's what I had. Um, I don't know if I feel better about reboxing it. Just because it's a little bit more explicit what all the typing is on everything. You don't need to rebox it. Yeah, that's what I thought, right? Right, that's just the same thing. I'm initialized, yeah. 
And then I don't have to worry about freeing it because it's no longer freeing it because that's a raw pointer. Um, and that's been into rod. And then all I have to do is that this R box has to be saved in the um, here. There has to be an R box. That's going to free. If you rebox it, you need to leak. Uh, yeah. And this isn't going to free. Um, okay. So then I need to say, uh, let our box is equal to this. And then at the very end, we'll just say our box. All right. So our box is a mute, maybe on an T. Then this is the return value. Um, uh, so handle to a thread and a pointer, t a pointer to the uh, return value. Um. Okay, one sixty nine. Uh, T. Uh, yeah, T. Yep. Simple T T. And then we have a join handle T, and that's the same T. And now we're getting really good at this. Uh, this should return a T. And then I guess we want to unbox that here. Uh, so we do box. So, uh... Um... Wait for thread to exit. Um... Um, then, uh, we got a semi, where, 244, our box here, yeah. Okay, uh, 172, yep. So this then, wait for the thread to exit, and this still isn't right, and, uh, uh so we'll rebox it now, and this will be, let's, uh, ret is equal to box, from raw of self dot one, right? Um, get the return box, and then we have to do a um, um So, okay, I, I need to just wrap this up and then I, and then I think about the, the concern I have in my head. Um, okay, so this is a box and then we can do a box dot, um, assuming it. All right, so now we have a box T and then we can just uh, deref that, I guess. Um, is there an unwrap on box? I guess I just deref it, right? And this is okay. Um, box from raw, assuming it, and then I should be able to deref that safely. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, we're starting to have a couple of these. I think the system is struggling right now. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's just not very happy with these, the number of processes we have running right now, especially since they're all, I think, spinning, basically. Okay. Um... All right. Um I feel like the join handle should contain the box so the return value is freed even if we don't call join. 
Um, yeah, that's fine. As long as it's a box, maybe on it. You're right. In which case, uh, this will be a uh, deref of self dot one dot assume in it. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, Edson, how are you doing today? Um, okay, 283. So, well, I, hmm. Uh. So what I do just as pointer of it then? Is there a way to do as pointer? There's into raw. Hmm. Hmm. Um, okay, so we can do a box new on init, which is a maybe on init T, right? So I'm making room for that. This is a box maybe on init T. And then here I guess I can do just uh uh ref R box as const I guess that's a ref D ref R box as const maybe on init T. Um, mm, um, should this consume self? Yeah, it should. Um, but also, um, this is not, um, this is not correct. Um, Um, I don't think I actually want to store the box here. Yeah, I don't. I was right. I want this. This return variable, this box, cannot go away. If someone drops join handle, we can't remove the storage for the threads return value. Yeah. Um. Um. How the fuck does join handle even work for that? That's really interesting. Um. Because if you drop this, then it doesn't get freed anywhere. So who should free it? Should this be a once? Should this be... This should be atomically protected such that it's not read until it's initialized and it shouldn't be dropped until it's read? And when join handle drops, I should decrement the ref count. Should it be an arc? Yeah, should it just be an arc mutex, basically, where the join handle, basically when you drop the join handle, that would decrease the ref count, which then if the thread also exited, it would decrease the ref count and they would both agree to free it, right? So it's an it, it definitely an arc. Um, we don't have a mutex, but I, I'm pretty sure just an arc is actually correct here, right? Um... I think this is supposed to be an arc, maybe an it T. So that's going to be a heap allocated variable that's kept around until both of them no longer need it. Arc will add a sync bound on my T. Is that not the case already? I already have a, well, I have a send bound. Um... Um, I don't think arc does, does it? 
I don't think... Yeah, Ark doesn't have a sync bound. Yeah, Ark doesn't have a sync bound. Ark, maybe, uninit T. And we'll just, uh, panic for now. Okay. So now we can do an arc. Um, fuck yeah. Arc new uninit. And this gives an arc. Maybe uninit T. Right? So you have an arc, maybe uninit T. Then, that, our box, we're going to do our box dot clone as pointer. Um, provides a raw pointer to the data. Uh, I don't necessarily want to do that because I want to move this into there. Um, into, is there an into raw? Yeah, there is. Okay. Okay, here we go. Arc into raw. Bam. So now we have two. We have the original one, and then we cloned that, and then we into raw that, and that gets moved by ownership into there. Right? Um, use alloc sync arc. Okay. Um all right. Perfect. Arc is only send if T is sync and send, but I think that's okay. Because you shouldn't be uh I don't know. F hmm. Um, uh, sending it to another thread. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, I mean, wouldn't this, wouldn't this compile time fail right now? Uh, okay, let's just do this. Um, uh, dot, um, Um, unsafe, uh, self dot one dot assume in it arc try, uh, dot try unwrap dot unwrap. Okay. Um, be called due to trait bounds uh yeah mm, that's yep that's uh bup, 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 bup. map error this is this is wrong we're just we're just hacking right now uh that Okay, so let's see. Uh, RC new five. Um, Alec RC RC new five. Yeah. Right. RC can't be sent between threads safely. Um. Uh, um 
Because if the thing is, if T doesn't implement send, then I wouldn't be able to make um I wouldn't be able to make this, right? I couldn't make an arc maybe uninit, because a new uninit is safe. This is a safe function. So Rust wouldn't allow me to make a safe function. Uh or Rust wouldn't allow me to make an arc maybe uninit T, right? It wouldn't allow me to safely make this type if this is not a valid arc, right? Right? You see what I'm saying? Like, this, this is, like, the type system allows for things like this. You can make an arc without a T send. It has no, how, um. And then you can into raw that, okay. Hmm. The bounds are only applied when you send, when you require send on the arc. And I'm erasing that. I see what you're saying. How do you lay out your Rust projects? I keep wanting to do some dumb projects. Um, I kind of lay them out relatively normally, although I've gotten a lot better at kind of setting these up. Uh, uh, one second. Uh, I'll get back to that in a minute. I I need to I need to wrap this up. Um, I need to. Okay, so this is maybe on an T. Uh. Rebox the um, uh, return type, and this is let ret arc maybe uninit t is equal to unsafe uh, arc from raw ret. Okay, so we're making that. Okay, that can't be moral is mutable. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, that makes sense because uh. Now what we need to do is we need to make a syncable type. Um, and this is kind of what I was expecting and where we would start to have some of the failures. Uh, 219, that's not required. Okay. So obviously making those again is unsafe. And this cannot happen because, um, uh, let's see, this arc should be fine. Um, uh, so what I need to do is now I need to make, um, I basically need to make a mutex, right? I need to make uh, a mutex here because I need to have the ability to convert this into a safe between threads thing. Right, and that's that's why I'm not super worried about the sync because I'm going to end up taking this whole thing, uh, and I have to wrap this in a like a mutex, right? An arc mutex maybe on an it, right? And at that point, I now have send and sync on that, um, right? Because right now I can't like right now this doesn't make sense anyways because I can't I don't have mutable access like th it's. I think it is currently, I guess it isn't fine that I'm sending this. Uh, is it? Is this currently okay? Um, so ar for arc to be send, T has to be sync. Yeah, and sync allows for references. Um, So, um, hmm. So, what I need to do is a mutex would basically add sync to something, right? Um, yeah, as long as T is send, then a mutex makes it sync. Right. So right now this is wrong because I need a mutex type and we knew that kind of ahead of time. In standard thread they don't use a mutex? What do they do? Memory is shared through the arc within and there's no need for a mutex here because the synchronization happens with join. 
Yeah, so that's kind of what I was thinking, right? Is we can piggyback off of the fact that that join is that mutex in this case. Because we kind of don't want to unnecessarily complicate uh, this. So what I can do um, is I can arc... Uh, let's see... Um, so, um, I'm guessing they just unsafely use this, right? Yeah, this, this totally makes sense to me, right? This is exactly what I would kind of expect. Um, so what we can do... Since the sync bound is this, um, uh, we should simply, I don't even think we need an unsafe cell here. We can just be, I mean, I guess, do we need an unsafe cell? Yeah, let's just do an unsafe cell. Um, unsafe cell and, uh, so should this be an unsafe cell, maybe on an it T? So an arc unsafe cell. Um, use core cell unsafe cell. All right. 220. Can't find this on unsafe cell. And then we'll do a get mute. Uh, Um, oh, uh, that's, uh, raw get. Get to mutable pointer. No, that's new. Okay, uh, dot get. Oh, dot get. There we go. Yeah, dot get. Deref that, and then I can do that right. Um, obviously that's where the unsafety occurs, so... I do dot get, that gives me a pointer, and then I deref that, and then that gives me a uh, mutable reference, and now I have a mutable reference to that. Something like that, something in that ballpark. Um, fuck it, let's just put this in the unsafe. Um, boom. Okay, so that is going to call the closure uh, and save the return. Um, and then, that's an unsafe cell, and then down here, this needs to be unsafe cell. That, okay. Uh, unsafe, uh, arc new uninit. Ooh, arc new. Ooh, um, hmm. Uh, unsafe cell new. And then I need to say maybe uninit on the inside. It's getting a little bit fun here. Uh, this is a maybe uninit new. Okay. Okay. Basically, anywhere that we have an arc, 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 unsafe cell, arc, unsafe cell. Um, that's gonna be wrong now. Arc, unsafe cell. Arc from raw. Arc, unsafe cell. Into raw. Okay. Supplied zero arguments. Uh, maybe uninit, unit, uninit. Okay, now 179. Obviously, assume init doesn't exist. Uh, we need to do this on, um, uh, so this is going to be, um, so now, now what we have to do is we have self.1 which is the arc, 
And then we want to, from that arc, we want to do a get, which is going to give us a mutable reference. And then a mutable reference to that. Or actually, we just want to... Um, ooh. It's just an into inner. Um... Uh, arc. I need to assume in it. No, unsafe cell, and then that. Assume it. Into inner on an unsafe cell. Unwrap the value. Is that safe? Okay. Um. And then that is unsafe. Okay. Move occurs because value has type unsafe cell blah. Doesn't have the copy traits. Into inner. Um, yeah, I don't want to do that because that's on arc. Uh, I want to do this on, I guess. Uh, actually, I can just do this. Get mute. Unwrap, assuming it. Oh, fuck. Um, that? Wait. That gets me a mute T, a ref mute T, mute ref T, and. What? What? That's get mute on the arc. Or is that going all the way to the ref cell? Um. Arc get mute. Mutable reference to this arc. Uh, not found on mute on safe cell. And that's... Do I have this? Uh, into inner. <sighs> oh! God, this is so fucking weird. Uh, <laughs> into inner. And I mean, is that okay? Can I just go from that to the, I think I'm just fine. Cause I'm just at the maybe on an it and I think I can just assume an it. That borrow is mutable. Yeah, I okay. Here's here's what I need to do. First, I need to get rid of the arc. Uh, and to get rid of the arc, um, I need to uh on the arc. I can. I kind of want to try unwrap that, right? So I have self.1, and then we can arc, try unwrap, and this should give me um, dot map. Right, so this should now give me the unsafe cell. That's the unsafe cell. So now I have an unsafe cell, 
And now I want to get rid of the unsafe cell. Um, and to do that, I need to, I, I think I can just do into inner on that. Right? Okay. And then, now that I have that, uh, that's the inner unsafe cell, and then I should be able to just assume in it. So this should be okay, unsafe, inner dot assume in it. Right? Um, into inner, not found on this. Uh, map error. Yeah. There you go. Um, okay. And theoretically, this will allow me to do this. And I should be able to now return a, like, RC new 5. And this should be a, a alloc, or, yeah, alloc RC RC, right? Um, oh, that doesn't have send. I guess you can't send that. Uh, what's a good one? Ref cell? Um, yeah, there's a good example. So then this is uh, one, two, three, four. So a ref cell is definitely not sync, right? A ref cell is not sync, but it is send. Um, but we can't get the value unless join completes. And if join completes, then we actually have the results. So what I should be able to do is do this. And this should now print... Um, result is this. Maybe. Um, I think I might have a race on the print here, maybe? No? Ah, uh, what's going on? Why don't I get a final astiff? Am I still exiting? No. Why? Those are getting stuck on the joins. Um... The VM is about to be very unresponsive soon. Um, okay, so wait. Is wait not completing? Because these threads aren't exiting? Oh, yeah. These threads don't exit. Um... We need to explicitly say that this function doesn't return. And then we're in pretty good business. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so I need an exit, like NT exit thread. That probably exists. NT exit, uh, N, uh, ZW exit, exit process. Uh, Terminate thread. CW terminate thread. There we go. BB. The threads aren't exiting. <laughs> That's the problem. Um, okay. Wow. Um, Z, uh, NC terminate thread. And I don't know how terminate thread works, to be honest. Uh, but it's BB. Okay, so we'll just inside of here. Uh, what are they returning to? Nothing. Um, that's BB. And then we're going to do uh, unsafe sys call one. I don't actually know what uh, ZW terminate thread is. Looks like it's the same as exit. So we're just going to go to exit. Um, exit thread. 
Uh, terminate thread. Okay, exit thread zero. Okay, and then it's hard to say if this system is even doing anything anymore. Um, so we might have to kill it just because we have so many of these things open. And we look like we're good. Okay, uh, now the question is, will this work? No. That's still open. Hmm. Terminate thread. Terminate thread. B, 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 B. B, B, B. Um, there's terminate process. Uh, B, A, and B, B. Fuck. Code that. Do I have to have the thread handle? I might need to have the thread handle to actually exit the thread. Fuck. Um, get current thread. Get current thread. Pseudo handle, is it not? Is current thread not actually um, negative one? Is it negative two? Does anyone know what get current thread is? Um, <sighs> it just doesn't end. It doesn't let up. Um, printf percent d uh, get current thread. Because we know that get current process should be negative one. And I think get current thread might be something else, actually. And that might be the issue here. <sighs> please, please be something other than negative one. Thank fuck it's negative two. Oh yeah, okay. Um... Mm. There it is. Uh, that's failing because that's not dropped. Oh, um, yeah. Hmm. Try unwrap. So that if that unwrap is failing, this is at fifty-eight. Oh, this unwrap. Yeah, try unwrap should succeed for an arc if there's only one wrap. Um, if there's exactly one strong reference, and uh, there should be only one strong reference, unless for some reason this isn't getting dropped, maybe it's not due to the exit thread. Um, um, or a uh, drop ret. Interesting. Does calling in a function that doesn't have an exit not drop? Drop the uh, closure and the uh, return value. It doesn't drop, really? Okay, so I'm just going to do this then. Okay, I think that's I think that's the best way to express it, right? Um 
Okay. Exit thread zero. All right. So now ASDF, and now we should be able to actually do this. Uh, let's just debug this. And yeah, there we go. We have a ref cell value one, two, three, four. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so it is technically, I think, still... Uh, I don't know what happens if that thread... I guess that thread... I, I don't know what happens if that thread... Um, let, let's try this. Uh, unsafe. Does this, uh, does wait expire here? Um, so what we're gonna do is unsafe core pointer right volatile uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, zero uh, as mute U8, right? We want to basically cause a crash and we wanna make sure that that doesn't continue. And it looks like it doesn't. It looks like when that crashes, wait just hangs. And that's what we want. We need to make sure that wait hangs because if wait doesn't hang, then, um, uh, if wait doesn't hang, uh, come on, control C, um, okay, basically, we need to make sure that, um, wait never finishes unless, uh, unless, so basically, at this point, this try unwrap actually is asserting that the value has been updated. Because if the value has not been updated, the only way, the only way that this try unwrap succeeds is that if there's only one arc reference. And the only way that there's only one arc reference is that if it, we made it to the end of this scope and it caused the arc to drop. If we crashed or anything happened between those points, that arc wouldn't have actually dropped since we're panic abort. And thus, this first of all, this weight would never succeed. And second of all, if somehow this weight did succeed, this would unwrap and it would fail because there's not exclusive access to the arc. Um, that's, that's my logic there. I don't even think we need the unsafe cell because of that. Like, literally because of that. Um... Like, I guess we need the unsafe cell such that in here we can write to it. And that's it. That's the only thing, is that we can be able to write inside of an arc. And that's that's the only reason why we need that. So then if we run this, we'll run these programs. And I think this is actually correct. Because the arc, we are relying on the arc completing for this to... Uh, we're relying on there only being one arc. And if there's only one arc, then we know that it has been initialized. It is impossible for that arc to be dropped without being initialized, if that makes sense. So that is kind of our safety there. And then these obviously all require send. Everything here has to be send. Uh, we're inheriting sync because we know that we only have one user of it. We're not using it between multiple threads. We're only using it in one thread at a time. Uh, because this thread can't use it until there's only one access, um, and that means this thread, which is the only other one that has access, is also fine. What if you drop handle immediately after spawn? Um, oh, that I mean, that's totally fine. Like, I, I would just drop the handle, and I, I wouldn't be able to get the result of that thing. But, like, I can just, just ignore those, and I just won't see the, I won't see the output. Like, right, if I just drop both of those. If I drop thing and I drop thing two, um, this program is just going to exit, right? So if I put a loop in here that allows those threads to exit or run, they should still print, right? Those threads are still running. Um, basically, by dropping this, we lose the ability to be able to get the return value and to determine whether or not the threads have completed, but we don't actually lose access. Uh, the threads don't stop. That doesn't kill the threads. Won't it deallocate memory for arc before reconstructing it from raw? So we move ownership entirely of the function into the thread, and then we move ownership of one side of the arc. Now this will drop one side of the arc, and then this will drop the other side of the arc. So it will It'll initialize the arc, and then it will drop it, and then it's gone. Um, so I think this also has no leaks. 
right? And we could kind of verify that by just putting threads in a loop and we could just say like uh, drop, uh, or we could do thing.join.unwrap, right? In a loop. Um, and I'm gonna kill this process because we did zombie one of these and then, and then I think we're good. Um, right, okay. Yeah, so we're creating threads, we're creating a shit ton of threads. And we shouldn't be seeing, like, anything really leaking here. Um, we should be able to hopefully have a view for this. View. Come on. Alt-V. Oh, okay. I can't send Alt-V, apparently. But I can do that. Ha-ha. Uh, let's go to handle counts and thread counts. Um, there we go. Okay, so we are having, uh, we're leaking handles, so we need to close that handle, and that's the last thing we have to do, and then we're done. That's it. We have to NT, NT close handle, which literally takes one arg, and we were kind of expecting this. So this is the, basically any place that we create a handle, uh, process handle, that's an input, so that one's fine. That was an input, but any place that we have an output handle, which is really just here, uh, we have to actually close that handle as well when uh, when we're done with it. Um, that should be the only handle that's leaking. It might also be putting handles in this client ID. This might have handles as well that we have to drop. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. Uh, NT close handle. Uh, or NT close, I guess is what it's called. Um, NT close. NT close there uh f okay and he closed it takes a single thing it's a handle um bup, 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 bup. and he close close f that okay now uh, i didn't want to run that whoops uh, that and that okay and then yeah there might be some other handles in there let's just quickly um this, uh, we'll just say fn, close, uh, close, a handle, 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 this is just called one, then we have the handle dot zero, uh, and then this is uh, close, okay? And we technically want to return the status, but I just want to make sure that this works before we do anything. So in the drop handler, um, the right in the drop handler here, we want to do a, a close on handle. So we wait for that and then we can close that handle. Okay, so if we're still leaking, um, and it doesn't look like we are, Okay, so that was the only handle. So there's client, right? Uh, and the memory usage is not going up, the thread usage is not going up, the handle usage is not going up, uh, but it is indeed running threads, it is indeed spawning them over and over and over again, right? So we're spawning threads, we're creating them, we're waiting for them to complete, and then once they complete, we close the handle, we close the handle even if, even if, um, even if we're just dropping, I guess that's unjoined, we don't, actually don't want that unjoined. We want it, um, fuck. Um, then we're, and then I think we're pretty much done. Um, I didn't mean to run clients again. Okay, close those. Now, we actually want the drop on this. Uh, impl t drop for join handle t and f and drop mute self. Um, and then here, we want to do close self.0. This is close the handle, right? Because this way, if we don't do join, we'll still end up dropping that, which is what we want. Move out of here occurs. Doesn't implement copy. Is that because we implemented drop now? Um, what? Is it this? Do we have to do this? Nah, we shouldn't have to. We shouldn't have to do that. Can I also do this? Can I swap this? 
No. Hmm. Just having drop fucks that up. Why? Cannot move out of join handle. Um. Oh, because. Uh. Hmm. <sighs> Could test again without the join. Um, yeah, well, obviously, that's not going to work. So, I mean, I can do close self.0 here. And then um, I can just leak self, I guess. Um, fuck. That's really fucking annoying. I need to revisit that. I I need to move that out of self, but I don't have a good way of doing that, unfortunately. Um, I mean, I can. Want that impl drop on the handle instead? Well, I can, but I kind of was using handle for other things. But I can do that, right? But now I have to stop using handle in like a, a trillion places, right? So basically anywhere that I use handle uh, no longer needs to be handle because we don't want to drop those handles. Um, like this right, for example. That's not a handle that we want to drop. Um, I mean, that could be a ref handle and then it's not a problem, I guess. Um, but we create those handles in a couple places. But yeah, that is the way that we should do it. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put close here, and then I'm gonna say, uh, add drop for that as a to-do, and then, uh, I'm happy with this, because it kind of works and, and whatever, and we can close clients, and then I can close this, and then blah, 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 this, 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 uh, debug this, okay, um, okay, that looks great. So that created a thread, waited for it to complete, and printed out the result. So that looks pretty good. Get status, get commit am, uh, get add source, get commit am, added threading support, get status, uh, get push, and then um, here we'll just do this xxx to do fix leak of a handle. Okay, there we go. Now we know to do that. Get, uh, get commit. And uh, handle has leak. Um, and we'll put this uh, here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then up here, and then this. Uh, if dropped without join. There we go. There we go. And now it's Windows code. Um, get push. All right. There we go. That looks good. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I'm going to go eat. See you some other time. Bye-bye.